sorry, Matt. I'm so sorry. I'm putting into your music time. <laughs> Egg salad, huh? Five Canadians other than Carly Rae Jepsen and Drake, please. <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I know some Canadians I don't know. Because I live here, but... Hello! Hello. Hello, hello. Starting in a second here. <laughs> she really is the only one. For a second I didn't recognize you, but then I started. I can now I remember. <laughs> trial about Mr. Pirate. Yes, Mr. Pirate. <laughs> We're back. We're gonna continue with our surface trial. We're back. We're back in the game with a super early stream. Mega early. Crazy early, probably the earliest stream I've ever done in my life. And it's gonna be a long one. Long stream. We're here for the long haul. Let's see how far we can get. And also if see if I can rem remember any of these voices, because I always forget as soon as as soon as the stream goes down, I forget all the voices I do. Um please state your name and occupation for the record. In which case is this Turnabout Big Top from the second game. Episode 3 from Justice for All. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I see. Yes. I only had to see the witness. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just, just gotta pan over to the witness. You're like, ah. Okay. <laughs> My name is Trello Quist. I am employed as an operatic tenor. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> The witness called to the stand was one, uh, Mr. Benjamin Woodman, ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. I do not like this case at all. It's honestly so boring and annoying. <laughs> yeah, that's so valid. <laughs> Ahem. Me, 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 me. <laughs> the world of the law, exciting and daring guilt or innocence decided by a judge okay well what do you think <laughs> a 
had a good rhythm. It's just the lyrics. They leave something to be desired, so to speak. Trillo, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up, just look at your nose. You, you would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the face. In the face on the off chance swelling would help. Trillo for, Trillo for me is like... Uh, the annoying first year sports kid who thinks he's better than everyone. <laughs> you know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. Celebrities must really enjoy saying everything that flashes into their minds. What's going on here? Order! Order! I demand to know who the witness is! D don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. He looks like a toy monkey. <laughs> I'm not worried about- oh. You won't get anywhere trying to figure out this witness. Now, let's proceed. What you witnessed. Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stooge, I mean clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went back to the plaza's entrance. That smug look, too. <laughs> Dance when I saw Max, heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Okay. Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. You saw Maximilian Galactica heading towards the scene. You sure of that? Without a doubt, he had on his silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get-up and his nose stuck up so high? Th that's enough. I think we all get the picture. <laughs> uh, just one thing. You said you ditched the clown? That's right, dress boy. Okay. <laughs> well, since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Mm, he's got a point. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the culprit. Why's that? Here's absolute proof. A silk hat? This was found at the scene of the crime. It belongs to the defendant. Yeah. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecu prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. I love her little bow. It's so cute. <laughs> Thank you for stating the obvious. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? Will you compliment me as well? <laughs> Uh, okay. I guess she's the boss again today. What you witnessed? Uh, he was. Uh, yeah, he was the only one heading that way. That's a weird thing to say. You saw Max and only Max, right, Trillo? That's right, and that makes him the killer. There was only one person headed that way that night. Hmm, that makes quite a bit of sense and makes Max one suspicious character. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Is there something amiss in this? You only saw Max? Yeah, where, where didn't one of the ringmaster have gone too? That's a bit strange, don't you think? What's strange? That you only saw Max? Max is one suspicious character anyways, <laughs> yeah. Doesn't it seem like you should have seen someone else as well? What? Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Okay, Judge. Who else do you suppose this witness could have seen? I don't know. The victim? <laughs> That's the victim. That's correct. If Trillo was at the entrance to the plaza, he should have seen the ringmaster as well. Boom. Ah! <laughs> Obviously, the ringmaster arrived at the scene of the crime before the witness could have seen him. Anyone with sense could have figured that out. What are you talking about? I mean, how else would he have got there? Would he have teleported? <laughs> He's magic. Anything's possible. <laughs> the ringmaster and Max went together to the ringmaster's room. Is that according to the defendant? A likely story. If Maximilian Galactica was supposed to be in the ringmaster's room... Why was he, just as the witness stated, 
at the scene of the crime. Ugh. I see. <laughs> Magic boy. <laughs> It seems that at this stage, I have no reason to doubt this witness's testimony. Mm -mm. <laughs> and if there are clearly no conclusive contradictions... He's right. A brilliant judgment, your honor. Now, let's move along with the testimony. Hmm, Trilla wouldn't happen to have an ulterior motive for incriminating Max, would he? Well, Max is part of that bitter love triangle with Regina. Which is probably why Max conked him over the head. Um, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got knocked over on the head? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> oh, jeez. Um... Around what time did the police arrive at the scene? Well, I suppose that would have been around. Hey, what time was it? Huh? Um, uh, I think it was, um, around, I'd say, a bit after 10.30pm, I think. This boy got no shit. <laughs> Practice ended at 10pm, so you hung around the lodging house the entire time. But, like, built like tea string. <laughs> I, I guess this sounds about right. Wasn't it awfully cold? I can't believe you just stand outside in that weather. Oh, well, uh, the truth is... Will you shut up, you big nose dope? Why are you telling him anything extra? Why can't you believe that we just stand outside in that weather? Well, maybe you were waiting for someone? W -w -w what? Who said we were waiting for someone? Objection! Mr. Phoenix Wright, we can do we can all do without your offhand of theories. Objection! But th this witness, he's cracking under the pressure already. I'm onto something. Hmm. Mr. Wright? Who do you suppose this witness was waiting for out in the cold that night? Regina. Obviously. <laughs> well, if he was waiting inside in the cold, it was for one person. And one person only. He was waiting for the animal tamer, Regina. What? Oh. <laughs> you were waiting outside for Regina to come back to the lodging house. Am I mistaken? Is this true? Well, I, um, you can't really ask me that question. Who cares who I was waiting for that night? What's important is what I saw, don't you forget it. Well, well, well. The puppet may be a bit stiff, but he's right. Is he gonna have to go to court about his crush or not? <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. There is obviously a reason why this witness was there that night. He spent all that time waiting for Regina to arrive. Moreover, even if someone else would have walked right in front of him, I doubt he would have paid them a second thought. Ah! <laughs> but that makes perfect sense. What did you just say? The witness saw the defendant at the scene of the crime. However, he did not see the victim on the way to his eventual demise. If you accept that, then you must accept that there is a high likelihood that he could have missed someone else other than Max at the scene. Ow! <laughs> there is absolutely no proof that the witness was waiting for the animal tamer. Um, um, well, I guess you got me. All right, all right, I'll spill the beans for real this time. It's true, I was waiting for Regina. Pain. <laughs> he admitted it, though, yeah. Don't volunteer things. Mr. Quist, tell us the truth this time. And I mean the whole truth. I can't believe they're just like, yeah, I guess we're just... Uh... <laughs> Cross-examining a puppet. <laughs> were you or were you not waiting for Regina at the entrance to the lodging house? I was. I was waiting to propose to her. Okay. <laughs> you were what? Waiting to propose? Lock him up, your honor. Lock him up. What's the matter? You think that humans have a monopoly on marriage? The, the, the matter of puppet marriage is not under review in this case. You're the judge. I mean, look at your horrible outfit. More pain. <laughs> Thanks to your bumbling, my perfect plan is not so perfect anymore. There is another matter. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's actually quite a lot of issues with this. Now we have to waste time getting to the bottom of some silly proposal by a puppet. About the proposal. Don't be so surprised that I was going to propose to Regina. I even had something to give her. I kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. Of course, I had also had it in my pocket that night. I was, it was a present for her. In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I still got it in my pocket. You were going to propose? You, a puppet. Don't be so obtuse. Just because I'm a just because I'm a puppet doesn't mean I can't love. <laughs> I guess you're right. What? 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 What did he just say? <laughs> what? <laughs> just because I'm old doesn't mean I could have proposed to her too. What? What? <laughs> what? 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 No, not exactly. <laughs> oh my god, not exactly. <laughs> His honor is looking a little less than honorable right now. You think? <laughs> Judge is a bit cray cray. <laughs> Guys, he's drunk. He doesn't mean this. Okay, Mr. Wright, please continue with your cross-examination. Oh my gosh. What was with that sigh at the end? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> what the heck? Character assassination by Capcom. No. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what was it exactly that you planned on giving her? That was so not Ohio Rizzler. <laughs> you know exactly what I was gonna give a numbskull. This is not Skibbity. <laughs> the only thing I could find that could match Regina's beauty. Answer his question. What was it? You're gonna die when you hear this. It's an engagement ring. Engagement ring? Are you... Yeah, if he's gonna propose, that's not... That's not the surprising thing. Wow, those two nearly fell out of their chairs. He literally said he was going to propose. Mr. Phoenix Wright's joke has gone too far. Time for this to end right here. Francisca's whip looks like it's about to lash out at almost anything. One hit from that thing will probably shut someone up for a long time. <laughs> Pain equals bad. How could he afford it? Oh. <laughs> it may be something of a joke, but this is a historic moment. The first time that a pub. <laughs> I advise you to cut this argument short. I'm gonna have to agree with the defense here. Will the witness please revise their testimony? Specifically about the engagement ring, I'd like to stick to facts, not sociology. You sure do enjoy sweating the details, especially. Okay. A man in a black bathrobe. <laughs> Planned on giving an engagement ring to Regina. Kept it in my pocket, waiting for the chance to propose and give it to her. You mean this ring? Bam! Trilla, do you mind if I show you something? What is it? What, what is it? Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, looks like they're gonna double team me now. <laughs> do you recognize this ring? Ah, that's. That's- that's mine! Give it back! Thief! Thief! Didn't you just testify- testify about this very object? I believe he said, In the end, I wasn't able to give it to her, so I've still got it in my pocket. Why then, do I have it right here? Ah! <laughs> what is going on here? That's- that's- Ben, say something! Don't put me on the spot like that, Trillo. I found this in Money's room. M -m -m Money's room? You mean a room they put money like a bank vault? Ha! Huh, that filthy monkey's gonna get what's coming to him. 
Mr. Quist, I would prefer if you avoided slandering innocent fiats of my court. Well, your honor, money really is a monkey, in every sense of the word. Ah, I see. Well then, money likes to go after the shiniest things that he can find and gather them up. Shiny things? Trillo, when was this ring stolen from you? Well, I suppose it was that time, you know, that night, the night of the crime. What did you just say? Details, I need more details. <laughs> well, it was stolen right after Max showed up in the plaza. Right, right about when you saw the defendant walk past, correct? Well, um, I guess you might, um, be able to say that. The ring might have, well, it could have been taken around that time. <laughs> ah! Oh. Oh. Look at Trillo's face, I know. <laughs> His little face in the background. <laughs> ben, what's with ya? Oh, whatever. It has nothing to do with anything. Especially not who committed the murder. It's not for you to decide what has to do with what. Cobb smacked. Now, Trillo, back to the topic at hand. I haven't admitted a thing. Not I, Mr. Trilloquist. What did you do when the ring was taken, Trillo? You know exactly what I did. I chased after that ring snatching monkey money. But you weren't able to catch up with him, were you? It's all this slow, loafy fool called Ben's fault. While he was fumbling his way through the snow, that dumb monkey was able to get away. That is indeed an incredible shame. <laughs> well, this does indeed prove one very important point. Prove an important point? What point could that possibly be? Ben doesn't exercise enough. <laughs> testimony has a flaw. There is a huge contradiction in this witness's testimony. Okay. The contradiction? The witness just testified to the following effect. I'm gonna go revise, but I'll be lurking. Go revise! Go revise! Up until the police arrived, he didn't move from the entrance to the plaza. However, the witness just stated that he chased after Money the Monkey. If you need incredible humor, then message me or something. <laughs> when the witness was off chasing Money, there was no one watching the plaza. What is the meaning of all this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Where are you going with this little theory of yours? I'm saying that there is no possible way that this witness saw the plaza the entire time. That's where I'm going with this little theory. Which leads me to my next point. It is entirely possible that someone other than the defendant was at the scene. Interesting, Mr. Wright. Well then, tell me this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Do you have any proof that something slipped past this vigilant, uh, vigilant ventriloquist? Well, he obviously didn't see the victim, the ringmaster, arrive on the scene. However, that doesn't change the fact that he saw the defendant arrive. The witness is lying. He's blinded by his rivalry with Max. Well, the defense's argument does hold up water. This witness does have a history of animosity towards the defendant. What? How dare you? I wouldn't lie just to get that dwarf face in trouble. He's not even worth it. I saw him, no doubt about it. I saw that worthless liar. Well, just for clarity's sake. Let's flesh out exactly who you saw on that night. Huh, I've told you so many times, you think you know my story's not changing. You've already changed your story, stick boy, <laughs> and I'm sure it'll change some more. <laughs> Where there is one, one lie, there are usually many more behind it. Exactly, Maya. That's why we have to keep after him. Yeah! <coughs> Witnessing Max. I'll give you that I was waiting that night for Regina, but that doesn't change the fact that I saw Max in the plaza, plaza that night. He showed up after I'd been waiting there for about five minutes. I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. I'm absolutely sure it was him. I saw Maximilian Galactica at the scene. There's no way I can mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. It's weird how Maya and Phoenix always respond to each other's thoughts. <laughs> They're just on a telepathic link. Hmm. So that means that money didn't show up until after you saw Max? That's right. 
Money ran up less than a minute after I saw Max. Then Money snatched the ring and you went chasing after him? How long was it until you came back to where you were waiting? I mean, she is a psychic. <laughs> well, let's see. I'd say about, I suppose, five minutes, I think. So the victim could have arrived on the scene in that five-minute stretch. Mr. Wright, please proceed with your cross-examination. Okay. I said... I, I said good evening to him, but he didn't even acknowledge my presence. Why would you be so nice to him after he hit you with a bottle? Take that! <laughs> Trillo, is it not true that you had a fight with Max on the day of the murder? A fight? A fight over Regina, to be exact. It wasn't that big of a deal. It was just an argument. A disagreement at most. A disagreement usually doesn't end with someone getting clonked over the head. Oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That morning, Ben got clobbered over the head by Max, didn't he? What? Is that an omission of assault and battery? <laughs> yeah, right? Ouch! Before we handle that, we should wrap up the defendant's murder charge first. The truth is that on the day of the crime, the defendant and witness had a huge fight. There is absolutely no way they would have been they would have suddenly become cordial that evening. Why is Trillo so goofy? <laughs> Moreover, just consider the personality of the witness on stand. There is no way a puppet this lewd would just up and say good evening to his rival. Squawk! Squawk! Are you saying this witness is lying? That he is trying to frame the defendant by claiming to have seen him at the crime scene? I, I, I didn't tell a single lie. Honestly, I just... He's like a toddler. <laughs> That's enough from you, Mr. Quist. Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor. Let's clarify this testimony for the court. Could you explain your theory about who the witness actually saw that night? He saw... He didn't see anyone. He saw the defendant. He saw a different person. Probably. It is my belief that the witness did indeed someone that see someone that night. It was just someone else. That's who he said good evening to. What kind of theory is that? The correct one? Pooh! Got her! <laughs> Furthermore, I don't believe the person the witness saw was Max at all. What? If he had truly met Max that night, there would have been no greeting at all. Which means there's only one proper answer. The pertness, the per, the per, the per, the, per, the person the witness saw that night was not Maximilian Galactica. That is why Trillo made the effort to greet whoever it was that he saw that evening. Or, good evening, as he put it. Uh... What in the world, you? Would the defense kindly explain who it was Trillo saw that evening, then? Maya Faye, my assistant. Um, probably the victim, because he was the only one on the scene. Considering the ill temper of the witness, there is only one person he would greet. It must be Regina. It's Regina, right? She's so cute. Okay, Judge. Okay. <laughs> N no, Your Honor. It is not Regina. If it was Regina, Trilla would have given her the engagement ring as a present. Oh, yeah. I suppose you've got a point there. <laughs> it was Russell Berry, the victim himself, was it not? You are correct. It was indeed Russell Berry. <laughs> judge, shut. This judge needs to shut your child's mouth. This judge just needs to not have any input for the rest of this case. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> the person you saw that evening was the victim, the ringmaster, Russell Berry. That's why you greeted him, Trillo. Isn't that correct? Oh. Answer the question, Mr. Quist. <laughs> order! Order! How do you respond to this? Wait a second. Well, at first I thought it was the old man, but, but once I got a better look at him, it was obviously Maximilian Galactica. Hmm. I think it is high time that we clear the air about this question. Mr. Quist obviously witnessed a single person in the area of the plaza that evening. The problem is identifying exactly who that person was. 
Was it Maximilian Galactica, or was it the ringmaster, one Mr. Russell Berry? The prosecution argues that it was the defendant that the witness saw that night. The witness has clearly stated that he saw the defendant's three symbols. Three symbols? Alright, this is getting old. Come on, man, you gotta remember them by now. Here we go again, everyone. All together now. Ow! <laughs> yes, yes, we know. The silk hat, cloak, and white roses. A silk hat and a cloak. Anyone could wear them. You, they'd even look good on me. Uh, sure, Phoenix, sure. What was that? They'd look awful like you. Well, the witness has endlessly repeated that he saw Max's three symbols. However, how do we really know it was Maximilian Galactica? It could have been someone else dressed up as him. Possibly even Russell Berry. What? Miss Von Karma? Ooh. Do you have clear evidence that the person the witness saw was the defendant? Well, I... If that's the case, then it is impossible for me to make a judgment at this point. Yes, I think we've finally won a point in this one. That is very unfortunate. Uh-huh. You're just a little too excited for your own good, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What do you mean by that? You merely established one thing from this witness. You established that this per one person that ugh, that this witness saw one person in the plaza that night. I applaud you on your effort, but but who that person was can only be answered by the next witness. Huh? <laughs> what? Your Honor, the prosecution will provide, beyond a shadow of a doubt, an answer to that question and evidence that clearly establishes one thing. That there is no one other than Maximilian Galactica responsible for this crime. Very well. The court will take a ten minute recess. During that time, I request the prosecution prepare their next witness. Court is now in recess. Here we go. December 29th, 11.54 a.m. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 5. So, sweetie, you have to believe me. I didn't go anywhere near that crime scene. So then, where were you when the murder took place? We talked about it yesterday, remember? I was in the ringmaster's room. And while you were there, it was the ringmaster who left the room, right? Exactly. He told me to wait in the room because he would be right back. That's when the ringmaster headed to the scene of the crime, right? That's what it seems like. But the ringmaster must have been wearing Max's costume, right? Oh, sweetie, I just remembered. I went straight to the ringmaster's room, still dressed in my stage clothes. But when I got there, I went ahead and took the costume off. Which means... It means that the ringmaster could have taken his costume and went out looking like Max. Fabulous! What a fabulously possible possibility! <laughs> well done, Nick. However, sweetie, why would the ringmaster want to dress up like me? Isn't that a bit strange? Hmm. If you think about it, all they found at the crime scene was my silk hat. That's such a flawed argument. <laughs> What about my cloak? Where did that go? Double, hmm. <laughs> wow, Max, I never thought of that. You should be a detective or something. Well, I was never quite sure what to be when I grew up, magician or president. You have no idea how hard it was to make a decision. That's really cool. Fabulous. This mystery just keeps getting deeper. December 29th, 12 6 p.m. Now that everyone is back, let's get started. The court is now back in session. Ms. Von Karma, please proceed with the prosecution's case. Very well. I will now call my next witness. 
a pitiful clown with the unfortunate distinction of having seen the entire thing. Will Mr. Lawrence Curls please take the stand? Why did she just call him a pitiful clown? <laughs> the witness will state his name and occupation for the court record. He's just dead. <laughs> I didn't see what he said. <laughs> Name and occupation. Will the witness please inform the court why he's speaking autobiographical gibberish? I didn't even see what he said. I was like trying to remember what voice I gave him to do the lie. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm just not used to being in court. I have never been in a courtroom in my life. I wasn't quite sure what joke was best suited for this sort of occasion. What in the world are you talking about? You're in a grand hall of justice, not some comedy club. Since it's easy to see your occupation, <laughs> please state your name for the court. Oh yeah, maybe this joke is okay. Mom, do I have to wear pants? The sign only says no shirt, no shoes, no service. <laughs> Okay, okay. What about this? Have you seen my proctologist, Dr. Seymour Buzz? Okay. How was that one? <laughs> but a couple of clowns were up to no- Okay. Your name? Lawrence Curls, professional funny man also known as Mo the Clown. You witnessed the scene of- At uh, around 10.15- uh, 10.15 p.m. the day of the murder. Correct. Yes, yes it is. Very well, Mr. Curls. Will you please testify to what you saw that evening? A rabbi, a priest, and a rust. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Without the humor, please. I didn't even get the... <laughs> okay. Oh, poor Mo can't be his normal stoogy self in court. No, I actually don't know what job he has. What are you assuming here, Judge? Just because he dresses this way doesn't mean anything. <laughs> I know I know. I'm not the greatest comedian in the world. I haven't been able to make people laugh for ten years. No matter what I say, all I get in return is a vacant stare and polite applause. Since no one ever laughs at my jokes, I've taken a laughing at them myself. It's a bad habit, but hey, at least I'm trying. Imagine my predicament. I'm a clown who can't make people laugh. I'm almost useless. But I keep trying. I even try to come up with jokes just for today. But this atmosphere is very nerve-wracking. I decided to try making everyone laugh. Seriously, everyone. What do you think of me? How am I doing? What did that have to do with the case? <laughs> um, aren't we the ones who's supposed to be asking the questions here? It could be a roller coaster tester for all we know. <laughs> Witness. Oh, so he didn't ask for your 2017 gotcha life plot? <laughs> huh? We will witness- we will listen to your call for help after the court proceedings are over. Thus, please stick to the facts of this case. Really? You'll hear me out? Well, I'll make sure that one of my staff will be your straight man later. Thank you, thank you, I can't wait! Poor gumshoe. Now that that's settled, shall we be one begin once again with the testimony? Of course we can. I'll talk for as long as you want. <laughs> the night of the murder, after practice was over, I went straight back to my room. You have no idea how tired I was that night. I was pooped. I thought I would I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. It was the ringmaster, and he was with Max, who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them, and all of a sudden, Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. That's very interesting. If this eyewitness account is to be believed, I have enough to pass judgment right now. Of course you can. There is no way that this account can be criticized. Uh, however, this witness is a bit, how, how do you say, off-kilter. 
Almost like he has some sort of atmosphere of guilt surrounding him. <laughs> that must be because of my insincere smile. Mr. Wright, please begin the quit defense's cross-examination. Yes, Your Honor. Dick, you've got to find some kind of contradiction in his testimony. I know that. Mr. Wright? Your Honor? I'm afraid that if you push this witness too far, it would bring disaster upon the court. Thus, I sincerely hope you are not going to engage in pointless saber-rattling. I, I understand, Your Honor. If you cause this clown to stray from the facts, I'll hold you responsible. Why am I responsible? I'm not the one with the corny jokes. <laughs> what you witnessed. Uh, the night of the murder, after practice is over, I went straight back to my room. I have no idea how tired of that I was that night. I thought I'd go straight to sleep, but before I did, I glanced out the window. Why? You just happened to glance out the window? You could say that. You could also say I peeked, stared, glimpsed, peeped, eyeballed. Mr. Curls? Oh, I guess synonyms aren't allowed either. What should I do? I wonder if I should press him further on this issue? Sure, why not? I kind of hope Moe is the killer because his jokes alone is reason enough to get him executed. <laughs> exactly, why did you look out of your window that night? Why? Why? Clowns don't need a reason to look out their windows, do they? That's not what I meant. I, I meant that, well, when we spoke yesterday... Once I had tucked myself into bed, I heard this amazing noise. It was incredibly loud. It sounded like a giant thump. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You forgot? Your Honor, the witness looked out of his window upon hearing a loud sound. He did not just simply glance out of his window that night. Oh yeah, that's right. I forgot to mention that thump, didn't I? Owie, owie, owie. <laughs> That's not something you just forget to mention. Um, uh, yeah, what she said. <laughs> I believe it would be best if Mo were to revise his testimony. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Curls. Please revise your testimony. This should start turning the tables in our favor. I heard a huge noise outside the window, and that's what made me look outside. take a look outside. What was the sound like? Well, I guess it kind of sounded like... I guess you could say... Mr. Curls, may the court remind you that humor is unnecessary. We do not laugh in this courtroom. It is very serious. Someone was murdered. Don't want you know I was going to make a joke. I guess that the sound sounded like a... I suppose it sounded like someone getting hit with something very hard. Yep, that's what it sounded like, honestly. Pfft, someone getting hit, huh? What then? You- what then? You went to look out the window and you saw... That's when I saw two silhouettes. They were a bit far away, though. Far away, you say? If you had to say exactly, how far away were they? Let me think about that for a second. If my room is here... And they looked about yay big. I'd say they were about 30 feet from my window. Just 30 feet? That's not far at all. It was snowing that night and it cut down on visibility. I see. Please continue with your testimony regarding the two shadows that you saw. Uh, it was the ringmaster and he was with Max who was wearing his cloak. I kept watching them and all of a sudden Max clonked the ringmaster over the head. You say you saw the ringmaster get clonked over the head? Yes, I did. It's the climax of my story. He really does enjoy the completely random non sequitur. <laughs> what would you say the victim was struck with? You mean the weapon? I have no idea. A weapon wasn't found at the murder scene, right? That's not what I meant. You did see you. You did say you did see everything, didn't you? Well, I um, uh, yeah, I suppose I did. Wait, no, I didn't. I didn't see a weapon. <laughs> Mo. Did you or did you not see the crime of murder committed that night? I will not permit you to harass my witness in this manner. You'd better have an excellent reason for attacking this poor, poor clown. Because if you don't, you know what is waiting for you. A nice penalty. Oh my god. <laughs> that's a, yeah, that's a big penalty. 
take half my health. Isn't this a bit melodramatic? So what will it be then, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Do you have any clear basis to what believe that my witness did not see the crime? Yeah, please don't take my health. <laughs> I've got a great reason to make my claim. And I suppose you will be telling us all that great reason. Of course I will. The reason is... The witness's very own testimony. What is the meaning of that, Mr. Wright? Mo said that he heard a sound like a thump of someone getting hit. Hmm, he did say that. However, Mo just stated the following under oath. I kept watching them and all of a sudden Max clunked the ringmaster over the head. If Mo was to be believed when he says he looked out the window upon hearing a sound, there is no way that he could have seen Max clonk anyone. In 1972, a crack clown- okay. <laughs> Mr. Curls, how do you respond to Mr. Wright's assessment? He didn't commit. His clowns properly escaped from a maximum security clown car. What? <laughs> oh, Mr. Curls, are you reciting the C team theme to anger this court? <laughs> no, no, no. I was just stalling for time while I jogged my memory. Great job, Nick. These types of witnesses always seem to have a selective memory. You just have to peel back the layers of the clown makeup to find the truth. Well, um... Ah, oh, you're back from your jog? Well, it's pretty much happened the way I said. Pretty much? When I looked out the, my window that night, the ringmaster was already face down in the snow. The prosecution helped me fill in the gaps of my statement. Von, von Karma. Tampering with witnesses again? What the heck? That's not- that's not very coolio. So di so now you are saying that you did not see the defendant clock the ringmaster? Yes. When I looked out my window, the ringmaster had already checked out. Checked out? Who? <laughs> yup, he was on permanent vacation, as they say. <laughs> but karma, that's not so sigma of you. <laughs> Mr. Curls, your honor, you did not witness the actual crime. However, you still say you saw the criminal, correct? Yes, exactly. The ringmaster was slumped over and I saw someone's silhouette next to him. Very well, then please testify to this silhouette you saw. I expect the truth. And even if I even catch a hint of a joke from you. I will put you in a holding cell until you learn court etiquette. Got it? Got it. The silhouette. It was a bit far away, but that shadow could have only belonged to Max. There's no doubting it, especially saw his, since I saw his uppity symbols. His silk couch, that black coat, they were all there. His face was silhouetted, but there was no doubt that it was him. The cloak was, flutter the cloak was fluttering in the wind, so I couldn't really see what he was carrying. Hmm, it does seem as if the defendant was at the scene of the crime. It took the clown long enough to get his facts straight. But whatever, this should finally be good enough, yes? It is decisive testimony. Was Max really at the crime scene that night? He said he wasn't there. We have to believe in that. All right, Mr. Wright. Commence your cross-examination. Okay. The silhouette. Um, I did have a bit of a problem with you saying that the silk hat and the black coke cloak, I keep calling it coke, what the heck. Um, doesn't he have three symbols? The white roses, where were they? Objection! You say you saw all of Max's uppity symbols? I suppose so, the silk hat and the cloak, right? Mo. Everyone knows that Maximilian Galactica has three uppity symbols. Three symbols. Yay, everyone, get ready. All together now. What? Silk hat, cloak, white roses. <laughs> <laughs> what the? Who cares if he knew what that there were three or not? He saw what he saw and he saw the symbols. He just forgot to mention one. Isn't that right, Mo? <laughs> Do you like pie? I love pie! 3.14152 <laughs> <Nine, two. laughs> 
silence, fool. You are to respond with the whole truth. No fractions. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that joke. <laughs> order, order. <laughs> that was a good joke she made. I liked it. Mo, you didn't see the roses, did you? To be honest, there weren't any roses on the person I saw. The crime scene was dark. It's obvious it was too dark to see that kind of detail. But the witness said he was able to see the silhouette of the criminal's face. Not to mention that the roses are white. There's no way he could have missed them. Then the roses must have fallen off when the defendant assaulted the victim. If that was the case, then the police would have found them near the crime scene. Mr. Wright, are these white roses truly material to the facts of this case? Clearly not. He's just toying with this court. Got her on the ropes now. These seemingly insignificant facts have never failed to lead me to the truth yet. Someone is toying with the court, but it's not me. Your Honor, do you recall Trillo's testimony? There's no way I can mistake someone wearing those three ridiculous symbols. How can you mistake someone with that crazy getup and his nose stuck up so high? How could you mistake someone wearing such a snobby three-piece getup? Trillo saw them all. Trillo saw all three of Max's symbols. However, this witness claims that there was no white white roses on the person he saw. <laughs> There is absolutely no doubt that this is a contradiction. Hmm, I know that. Now, what am I supposed to think? One is supposed to disregard the pointless, but this. Judge, forget the roses. Think about his other testimony. The witness has stated without a doubt that he saw Maximilian Galactica. Nothing else matters. Let's wrap this case up now. Your Honor, it may be trivial, but it does cast doubt on the prosecution's case. Frankly, I have my doubts about this witness. It seems that, unlike wine, the witness has not grown more mature with age. I'm not mature. I've come to a conclusion. I'm 99% certain that this witness saw the defendant. However, my remaining 1% of doubt is quite reasonable, which means that for my peace of mind, I'm going to request a bit more testimony. What? If there are no contradictions in his ne next statement, I am prepared to issue a ruling. A ruling? Nick, this is your last chance. The Silhouette, part two. No doubt in my mind, there was no white roses that night. However, all the other symbols were there. I'm equally sure of that. Especially the silk hat. There is no way I could forget seeing the decorations on it. He was wearing it the entire time he was on the scene. The entire time, huh? Mr. Wright, you've got one last chance at this. Just one chance? I will not allow even the slightest hint of badgering against this witness. If you're going to prove to me that there's a contradiction with Mr. Curl's statement, you'd better have at least a shred of evidence to back up your ac accusation. I've only got a single shot at this, so I've got to be careful. I understand, Your Honor. One chance is all I will need. Um, he wore his silk hat the entire time? Then why was it found on the ground? Idiot. This wouldn't happen to be the silk hat you saw that night, would it? Yep, that's it. That, that That's the hat he was wearing that night. No question in your mind. Exactly how would one mistake a thing like that? I see. Is there some sort of problem, Mr. Wright? Miss Von Karma, where exactly was the silk hat found? Must you always ask these questions? It was found at the crime scene. D the c crime scene? That means... The silk hat fell off at the crime scene. However, the witness clearly testified to the contrary. 
The witness stated that he was wearing it the entire time that he was on the scene. No, that's not true. They give her the hydrate. Order, 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 Mr. Curls. Yes, your honor. What is the meaning of all this? Why are you yelling in all caps, judge? You are old enough to know better than to behave like this in court. Hey, that's not just, that's just not right. That's so harsh. That, what's not right here is your eyesight and your memory amongst other things. I think this judge is about to commit murder himself with this clown. Wh why are you being so mean to me? What did I do? Let me guess, you didn't, you just didn't like my jokes or something, right? You didn't have to go and insult my eyesight or my memory. They're both great. Seriously, why? Just because you are sitting above me doesn't mean you belong. It doesn't matter all the gal. You always be younger than you. <laughs> Enough of these childish outbursts, Mr. Curls. Who do you think you are? I saw him. I swear I saw him. It was Max. Even if he didn't have his roses, he was still wearing his dumb silk hat. I'm telling the truth. He's turned into a bratty little kid. It's pitiful, isn't it? He left the scene wearing that dumb silk hat. He was there. He left the scene? What's the matter, Nick? There's something I've been mulling over for a while now. Mo? What do you want? You just s said that he left the scene. Exactly how did the murderer leave the scene of the crime? What? He, um, he went. What do you mean, how did he leave the scene? You can't ask me that. Mm. Mr. Phoenix Wright is badgering the witness, your honor. This witness's testimony is so full of holes, Miss Von Karma. Protest is useless. Ugh. You've got a point. Let's hear what the witness has to say on this matter. Is that all right with you, little guy? Don't talk to me like I'm a little baby. Besides, what kind of stupid question is how did he leave the crime scene? The answer's obvious. He just turned around and walked away. Okay, that's not true. Oh no, I'm so scared. The judge is angry. What's he gonna do? He chase after me? <laughs> or the old man would fall over and die. <laughs> that's what I expected you'd say. You're sure that's how it happened? Say what? Huh? I'm not sure I know exactly where you're going with this. Lawyers nowadays sure do love to harp on the smallest things. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any proof to counter his story as to how the criminal left the scene? Um, he had no footprints, homie. Look at this picture. The problem is the footprints in the snow. Footprints? In this photo, we can clearly see the footprints of the victim. However, where are the criminal's footprints? They aren't there. Ay, 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 ay. So, Mo, exactly how did the criminal escape the scene? Oh, um, he, uh... Your Honor, this witness has already proven that his testimony is completely unreliable. I move to strike all of this witness's testimony from the court record. I agree. This clown's testimony is as rickety as the clown car he came to court in. Wait a second! You guys just can't ignore everything I've said? Fine, fine, I'll tell you the truth this time. You wait a second. I think you've said more than enough for today. That didn't hurt. I'm sick of listening and tired of listening to you anyways. I'll give you the real deal this time, I swear. I don't know why, but I get the feeling things are going to get worse before they get better. Mr. Lawrence Curls? Yes. The testimony you provided up until now has been false. It hasn't been false. I haven't lied. It's just... It's just what? It's just I was a bit confused on the bit about the criminal leaving the scene. Especially since Von Karma and her whip told me not to talk about what I really saw. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Order! Order! I will have order! Franziska von Karma, how could you? <laughs> She's- Your Honor, if you had heard the truth from this witness, 
you would have e you would have exactly the same opinion as I have. What opinion is that? It's not funny. Ooh, that's enough out of you. I'm gonna listen to what he has to say. Now then, let's hear the truth about what you say you saw, Mr. Curls. Uh, you're not gonna believe this, but it's all true, I tell you. Try not to waste your time with this idiotic drivel. The truth. Now it's time for our next segment, Mo Knows. Everything that I've said up until now has been the truth. When I looked out the window, the ringmaster was down and Max was standing above him. He wasn't wearing his white roses, but he was wearing the silk hat. That's when I saw he... Oh, there he goes. <laughs> this is the truth now. Get ready for it. He flew, he jumped up and flew through the air. He flew right off and disappeared into the darkness. <laughs> That's why there were no footprints flying. People don't leave footprints. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I told you it wasn't funny. Do you believe me now? <laughs> he gone. Bye-bye. Well, that was, um... How do you put this into words? Maximilian Galactica is a world-class magician. But to leave the scene of a crime by flying, there's no way that actually happened. You... you're right. Why is she right? You believe the other witnesses? Why won't you believe me, especially since it's the best part of the story? Mm, to be honest, this is the first time I've heard of a flying criminal. What do you think about this witness's testimony, Mr. Wright? His eyes are playing tricks, he's telling the truth. <laughs> he's telling the truth. This is all a dream, right? Yeah, sure, he's probably telling the truth. I believe him, he's very confident. Or the foot footprints could have just been covered up by the snow. <laughs> what he just said was so strange, I don't think he would have made it up. Which means that he is telling the truth? That's what I think. Nick, wait! That means that Max actually used magic! Yikes, you're right. Ow! Only a foolish looking fool could be fooled by such a foolish fool's foolish tree. <laughs> don't be ridiculous. Magic does not exist. <laughs> Miss Von Karma, Miss Von Karma, Miss Von Karma. Let's take a step back to a few months ago. I think it was like six months ago. In the last case, <laughs> we just did, you and me. <laughs> Where you proved to this court that spirit mediums physically change their bodies into the spirit that they are channeling. You were so dead confident, you proved it to the judge that this was real. Now you're saying magic does not exist? <laughs> That's ridiculous. <laughs> I suppose I will let you all in, my, in on my thinking regarding this matter. The criminal disappeared into the sky, I'd love to believe that, but I just can't wrap my head around how that could actually happen. You imbecile. If you disregard a need for proof, Miss Von Karma's case is sound. However, I've got the feeling that this case is in dire need of more investiga investigation. Thus, I will conclude today's proceedings at this point. It's an undisputed fact that no criminal left that the criminal left no footprints at the scene. Tomorrow, I want us to find out the reason behind this mystery of mysteries. Um, uh, uh. I believe that's enough for today. Court is adjourned. Two thirty-three p.m. District Court Defender Lobby Number Five. Hey, sweeties, what in the world is going on? That's what I want to know. They say the criminal flew off into the air and disappeared. Max, I can't believe I'm asking you this, but you didn't actually fly that night, did you? I know you didn't mean to ask me such a fabulously stupid question. I can't fly whenever I please. It's not that easy. But it looks so effortless for you on the stage. It's not that simple. I'm not actually flying on stage. I use invisible wires and have them hoist me through the air. Wow. You just told me the secret to your magic. You just broke magician's code number one. They're gonna assassinate you now. <laughs> That's what happened. 
The Council of Magicians, if you reveal your secrets, they assassinate you. No, I only broke the first rule, the cardinal rule, the only rule. I'm sorry, Max. I made you break a magician's creed to never reveal the secret to their tricks. Nick, what do we do now? The magician's council, they're gonna kill him. <laughs> All we can do now is hope to find the flying criminal in court tomorrow. Great idea. Let's do our best and catch this sucker. Awesome. To be continued. December 29th, 3.03 p.m. Right in Kaula offices. Um, Nick? What is it? I got a confession to make. I'm terrible at figuring out magic tricks. Magic tricks? Yep. Magic tricks are by their very definition tricks, right? But I can never figure out the tricks when I see them. That's because the tricks are performed by pros. They do it so you can't guess the trick. But, but, the trick Pearly showed me was incredible. Pearls did a magic trick? What kind of trick was it? Let's see. It looked like she pulled the end of her own thumb off. <laughs> First she put her right thumb next to her left hand and then it just separated. She could move it up and down and everything. It was incredible. Really? Was it kind of like this? <gasps> what? Wow. How'd you do that? Nick, you're like a real magician. See? This is why I just can't figure out magic. Okay. I'm no good at it. Okay, spirit medium. Especially hard tricks like flying away from the scene of a murder. You'll take all the fun out of magic if you keep trying to figure it out. <laughs> Oops. I don't see any way out of this. We're stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> Maya, you're a spirit medium. How are you so easily tricked by the simplest of tricks? Even Pearl could figure it out. And she's like never left her town. There's no way we could solve this mystery of a, the mystery of a criminal flying by tomorrow. I was thinking, do you really think the criminal flew through the air? The only one who thinks that is Mo, right? He says that he saw it. That's true. Mo looked awfully serious when he said that. Do you think he might be trying to frame Max? If that was it, he would have simply said, I saw Max. That would have been enough. Her IQ is the opposite of high. <laughs> There's no reason why anyone would believe he flew. But what if the criminal really did fly? There's only one person who could do that. Max. You're really not helping my confidence here, Maya. Everyone seems to hate Max. Ben, Trillo, Mo, they all have nothing nice to say. That magician does seem rather full of himself, doesn't he? Especially when he says things like customers only go to the circus to see him. He even hit Ben over the head with a bottle. But... But what? That doesn't seem to f enough to frame another person for murder. And if it was proven that neither Ben nor Mo lied on the stand? Maybe Ben saw the ringmaster wearing Max's costume. But Mo clearly said that he saw Max himself. Oh, my sweeties. You mind hurrying up and getting me out of this place? We're doing our best, Max. Just hang in there. A little while ago, some people from a local TV station came by. And since I'm a fame magician, they said, let's make you your very own TV special. Really? What kind of TV special? Maximilian Galactica, The Great Prison Escape. It would be aired live. Okay. Pfft. Hey, that sounds like it would be an awesome special. But if I do this special before I'm acquitted, they'll never let me out of here for real. Well, it would surely be an unnecessary addition to your troubles with the law. That's what I was thinking, but the production staff is already working on the show. If you don't get me out of quick, I'll have no choice but to stage a real prison break.
You seem awfully calm about that possibility. I'm back, hello. I'd have no choice. It would be a contractual obligation. That's show business. Okay. Night of the murder. Um, the night of the crime. You didn't happen to fly off into the sky, did you? Here is how everything went down, sweetie. At the time of the murder, I was sitting in the ringmaster's room. Not to mention, flying off into the sky is not just something I can do at will. I don't care what that stoogy clown says, it wasn't me. Max, Max, do you mind teaching me the trick behind flying? He literally said it yesterday, bye. Hmm. Not even yesterday, I'm pretty sure it was a few- I know, he said it a few hours ago. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me, sweetie. The difference between me and cheap imitation magicians is that I keep my mouth shut. That's just not true. I don't teach people tricks, but I will say this much. It's much harder than you think. I'm just gonna forget that he said he has to- I was thinking about this in court today. I've got a favor to ask of you. Anything for you, sweetie. Be friends with the other performers in the circus. Fabulous, a great joke. Why would I be friends with a bunch of hacks like them? But... I've won on the world stage. I won the International Grand Prix. International Grand Prix? Performers who sh should always look to perform on the world stage, but the performers at this circus are completely and utterly devoid of ambition That is something that I can simply not tolerate Ambition, huh? Something about what Max just said rings true to my ears Grand Prix Oh my my sweeties want to hear all about the Grand Prix, don't they? To be honest, though, I've already told this story out like a hundred times already. It's so boring. Sorry to make you tell it again. You must not have heard me. I'm really sick of telling this story. But what can you do? I'm Maximilian Galactica. I suppose I can tell it again. Voila! Here, take a look at this. I just happen to have a picture from the Grand Prix with me. Just look at that fabulous stage. That is the first stage I ever flew on. I flew right over the audience. The crowd erupted into applause. At that time, I thought of myself that I could die a happy man and I could die right then and die a happy man. I'll never forget how I felt that night, the emotions, the acclaim. Wow. Um, <laughs> by the way, I think that everyone who is a performer should get to experience that feeling. I just wish I could explain that to the other performers in the circus. The people in the circus. That's incredible, Max. I want a trophy too. Hey Nick, how about you buy me a trophy? That's not how you earn a trophy, Maya. My sweeties, you can have this picture of my triumph. Just make sure you show it to the, all the other members of the circus. Look and learn. That's what you should tell them. Learn how to get thrown in jail. Grand Prix photo added to the court record. Awesome. Alright, bye Max. Gah. Oops. Not you, Maya. You hear that? It sounds like two people arguing. Alright, let's do it. Are you ready? Yes, uh, wait. Isn't it watch and learn? <laughs> Quit your one and let's just give this a shot already. All right, let's go. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. What are you doing? 
gently down the stream. Come on, you know that. I'm trying my best, but Trillo, this isn't just just isn't gonna work. Do you enjoy saying dumb things? You're gonna have to be on your own someday. If you can't handle something as simple as this, what are you gonna do then? Hello, Ben. Hello to you too, Trillo. What are you doing here? Can't you see we're on a secret crash training course? I'm sorry. Secret crash training? Whoa. Yes, Trillo wouldn't give up until I said we try out his idea for a new routine. So we're trying to sing an, in a round for our new ventriloquism act. In a round? You can really do that? That's incredible. See? See? Even they are surprised by the idea. I told you. They're not the only ones. You even surprised me with your idea. Once we got a grip on the basics, then it's just a matter of practice. Y you to think so? Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to give this back to you. Gang, are all the weirdos in jail yet? <laughs> I'm taking a minute break. <laughs> um, they are not. I am so sorry. That no one's in jail yet. Just Max still. <laughs> ah, there it is. Now that I've got this ring back, it's time to take one more shot at Regina. <laughs> um, I know that you already testified in court today. You want to talk about what we saw, right? Yes. Well, at first we thought it was the old man. This game sucks. <laughs> Take one more shot at what? Back to your <laughs> See, I can't. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Matt. Just looking at this walk and how he acted, right, Ben? Huh? Oh, oh yeah, that's right. But then we said hello and didn't even get a reply. Not to mention he was draped in those gaudy symbols. What would have you have thought if he wasn't wearing those symbols? I'm, I'm praying those weirdos go to where they deserve. <laughs> hmm, what do you think, Ben? What? Oh, um, I would have thought it was the ringmaster. Something just isn't adding up here. I wonder who they really saw. I was hoping I could ask you about Regina. I'm completely serious about her. That's why I'm waiting for her even now. Really? That's so sweet. But if you really wanted to see Regina, shouldn't you check out the tent? Ha! You don't got a clue about things, do you, sweetheart? Huh? Waiting like this is part of being in love. How so? If you had a clue, you would know that waiting is such a sweet, wonderful torture.
when, when your body aches for your partner's love, that's one of the best parts. Um, yeah, I knew that. Poor Maya. She's so red, she looks like a vine-ripe vine ripe tomato. So this is new routine working out. Will you two just take a chill pill already? Our routine's a secret. Okay, guys, I'm gonna take a quick break. It'll probably be like three minutes. I'll be back soon. Hello, I'm big. We were going to take the ventriloquism world by storm. It'll be a real revolution. That sounds incredible. But let me make one thing clear. We're not going to take on the world just because that jerk said we should. What, that jerk? Max Galactica. Performer should aim for the world. Who does he think he is? Trillo, you seem to be really fired up about all this. He needs to realize that he isn't the only one who can conquer the world stage. You're right, you're right. Mark my words, I, Triloquist, will win the Grand Prix. You're the man now, doll. Row, row, row your boat will be the key to a glorious victory. Um, not doing on your parade, but wouldn't a more mature song be best? Hey, you've got to start somewhere, right? Don't screw this up, you got to be a part of this too. 
Okay. Bye. -bye. Uh... Huh? Where's Regina? I don't know. But if she's with that tiger, I don't want to find out. Let's hurry up and get out of here. Hehe, <laughs> Nick, you're kind of a chicken, aren't you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just, um, allergic to wild tigers. Oh my gosh, same. Oh my gosh. Me and Phoenix Wright, twinning? They still haven't cleaned this place up yet. If Pearly got one look at the state of this place, she'd slap whoever was in charge across the face. Remind me to never invite her to my office. Max and the ringmaster had their talk in this room. That could have been when the ringmaster put on Max's costume and went outside. Why did he do that anyway? Was it really that cold or something? Interesting. Oh, it's you two. You look like you just got hit by a truck. Shouldn't you get some rest? <sighs> I'm taking a rest not right now, pal. I've never- I've been listening to some crazy clown's life story. Miss Von Karma told me to come down here and do this for her. Yeah, I figured as much. Let me tell you something, pal. Listen to all that- to that cl old clown sucks out all your energy. Every time he's done talking, he looks at you like you should be doing something. Um, I think he's waiting for you to laugh at his jokes. I know that, pal. Do you have any idea how much your face hurts if you fake laughing that much? Francisca really set you up bad this time, didn't she? If you ask me, she should be listening to Mo herself. No way, pal. You're not gonna get me to backbite a woman with a whip. No way. Why are you defending her? Prosecutor Von Kamm has always got her eyes on us. And every time you definitely don't want her to show up, poof, there she is. Don't show up, don't show up, don't show up, don't show up, don't show up. Looks like she's wound him up pretty tight. She's directly above us as we speak. Huh? How's that possible? According to the clown, the culprit jumped from here and disappeared into the sky. That's what happened. It means the killer passed right by this window, pal. Oh, I see. Who lives in that room behind the window up there? The acrobat's got his room up on the third floor, it seems. Pretty soon, Miss Von Karma's gonna start her investigation up there. So don't get any ideas about going up to the acrobat's room. Got it, pal? Oh. <sighs> Francisca Von Karma. When she's done with her investigation, I think I'll go up there and check it out. Okay. Mo's not here. If he was here, you would have been able to tell even before you stepped in the room. I'm sure you would have heard him laughing away. Aha, 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 aha. What do you think he's laughing at when he's all by himself? I always thought he was just thinking of new jokes. Mm, he must really love his work. Okay. Oh, right. Welcome to the wonderful, the fabulous, the cafeteria. Yikes, he's in an awfully good mood. All right, you know what time it is. A riddle time. Why does everyone cry when they eat Mexican pizza? Um, come on, you can answer this. It's easy. Because cafeteria Mexican pizza is a possibly a weapon of bowel destruction? Bzzz, wrong. Try again. Okay, what do you think, girly? Um, oh, I got it. Okay, what is your answer? Because they are in the cafe cafeteria. Exactly. It's an incredibly sad place, that cafe. <laughs> okay. I did it! What is going on? He's being too nice. 
Today's been a really crazy day, hasn't it? You're telling me? I didn't think it was gonna be so tough. Tough? Yeah, it was a tough crowd. For instance, it was such a tough crowd this morning, I had to smash watermelons. Mm. I told them all a great story and even greater jokes, but no one busted out laughing. And use the fame, no shoes, no shirt, no service joke. Exactly, how can you not laugh at stunning comedy like that? Okay. Are you 100% sure about your testimony today? I saw what I saw, I swear, that creep just... Flew through the air? It wasn't exactly flying, per se, it was more like floating. The silhouette of his face made me positive it was Max. I don't see his psyche lock, he must be telling the truth. Dreams. Uh, I think Max wanted me to show this to people. Ah, oh, not this picture, he showed it to you guys too. Huh? You seen it as well? Well, you know what they say about Maximilian Galactica. He really gets around. <laughs> okay. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh yeah, he didn't just show me the picture. What do you mean? He showed me his bust too. Let me tell you, that thing is enormous. <laughs> Did he now? Did he show you? It's in the picture, I think. Yep, right there. <laughs> he make us worship it every day. He made us bow to his greatness. He's got a big butt. <laughs> Max's bus should be on that small table over there. There's nothing over there. Really? Oh yeah. Mm, what was it I'd say about five days ago all of a sudden? Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Matt, for your incredible input. Sorry, I said some homosexuality. <laughs> you were right. It was like your gaydar. It was like, boop, boop, boop. The bus disappeared. It disappeared? If you want to see it, there's a photo on the bulletin board over there. Let's just had to put the picture up. <laughs> hey, this thing is really cool. Nick, Nick, I want someone to make a bust of me. Sure, as long as I'm not paying for it. Aww. <laughs> Bronze statue taken from the cafeteria before the crime. Is there anything else that's changed about this place? Nope, nothing changed that I can see. I wonder if he's actually thinking about this or if he's setting up a bad joke. Nope, nope, I'm drawing a blank here. Quiet Mo is a good Mo in my book. I guess there really aren't any other things that have changed, huh? Well, there is one teensy tiny thing that does seem different. Tell us, tell us. What changed? Well, on the morning of the crime over in that bulletin bard, this piece of paper was posted front and center. Piece of paper? It's torn, so I don't know what it said, but I can see its title. <gasps> Yikes! It says, To the Murderer. Ooh. Murder! Mur mur Maya, you're telling me there's been a m -m -m murder? <laughs> yup, that's what it says, but the rest of it has been ripped off. And I don't know who posted it. Um, when did you find this? The morning before the murder. Before the murder? Yes, the ringmaster was killed the night after this paper was discovered. Who in the world posted this thing? Nope, added to the court record. Posted in the cafeteria on the day of the crime, then torn. States to the murderer. Nick, I think we'd better follow up on this important lead. Yeah. Let's go show it to Max. Maybe he has an idea. Do you know anything about this note? The morning of- oh. I do know about that note. When I read it, my heart certainly skipped a beat. 
Your heart skipped a beat? While I was enjoying my morning tea, the ringmaster and company entered the room. And company? I guess it really wasn't, it wasn't really a company. It was just the ringmaster and my sweetie pie. When the ringmaster read the note, he turned an incredible bright red. All of a sudden, he tore it off the wall and shoved it into the pocket of his tailcoat. Really? Out of curiosity, what in the world was written on that thing? Let's see. Uh-huh. Oh, I don't want to steal the fun from my sweeties. Go and find out on your own. Great, thanks. I'm sure you could find it somewhere. You might also want to ask my sweetie pie princess. Ooh, okay. In his tailcoat, huh? Like right there, this piece of paper. Hey, do you see that? There's a scrap of paper shoved into the pocket of the tailcoat. You know, I've got a feeling I know what this is. I bet that's the other half of the note Mo gave us. Then let's hurry up and check this thing out, Nick. I knew it! It fits perfectly with the other piece! What does it say? What does it say? To the murderer? I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Meet me at 10pm tonight at the Lodging House Plaza. Tonight at 10 p.m.? That's when the murder took place. Now we need to find out who called out the ringmaster. Note updated in the court record. Interesting. Can I read it? To the murder, you haven't forgotten what happened six months ago, have you? I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Maybe the Okay. Interesting, interesting. Um. Maybe Von Karma's done her investigation? Oh, yes. Hey, Detective Gumshoe. I'm sure you did a good job as usual. Well, I am done with the investigation of the acrobat, finally. But with Miss Von Karma... Oh. Nick, what is that sound? That beeping sound? Hmm. It's Miss Von Karma. Huh? Every time I hear that sound, she's usually not very far behind. Some sort of pager or something? If you don't mind, pal, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here quick. See ya, pal. I didn't know that Kumshu could run that fast. So much for being a flatfoot. Never seen a grown man so, so afraid of a girl still in her teens. Well, let's go inside. It's freezing out here. The wind is biting us. Ow! Oh! <laughs> it's biting his lashes from a whip. So the murderer killed the murderer. <laughs> it's crazy. Von, Von, Von Karma! She really did appear! It was a real battle today in court, wasn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Did you have to jump out and scare us like that? What can I do for you? Tomorrow will be the day. The day my dream finally comes true. You mean the story of my defeat at your hands making the national news? <laughs> national news? You possess such a small sense of scale. The global news, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Your miserable plight will be known internationally. I think, I think she might be overestimating the importance of a win by just a smidge. Hey, I was like, why Von Karma's front profile? <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> why do you keep giving Nick the evil eye? Doesn't matter if you prove the defendant guilty tomorrow. Nothing will be able to bring your dad back. My dad? You must mean the esteemed Manfred von Karma. Of course, your dad. I know you miss him. Enough out of you. One more word and you'll get a mouthful of whip. Now, when did I ever bring up my papa's name in this or any other conversation? Ooh. Then, then what's this revenge thing you're talking about? You wouldn't understand, Mr. Phoenix Wright. I have to see him again. One more time. Him? I'm sure you know to whom I refer. Miles Edgeworth. Oh! What? Edgeworth? Mr. Edgeworth? M M M Miles e Edgeworth? Ooh. Miles Edgeworth? Why would you even bring him up? You haven't forgotten, have you? 
Do you know who it was that trained the gifted prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? Manfred von Karma. Exactly right. It was my papa. That means that Edgeworth was... Right again. Miles was like a little brother to me. Huh? Little brother? But Edgeworth and Nick are the same age. Edgeworth. No. Oh, oh, there he is. He's alive again. <laughs> the man who inspired me to become an attorney. I fought against him in a few cases. But a little after that case was over, he vanished. It's your fault he is gone. Huh? It's the truth, isn't it, Mr. Phoenix Wright? I... I... Nick, what does she mean? Ooh. Uh, before we get to that, uh, how's tomorrow? what do you think about tomorrow's trial? Miss Von Karma, it appears you got your hands onto something big, huh? Huh. I'm amazed you pick up on that much. Anyone could. You couldn't hide that look of victory with ten paper bags on your head. <laughs> I've got conclusive evidence and a conclusive witness. Need any more hints? A conclusive witness? You must mean the acrobat, right? I'm putting in a summons for him to be called as a witness as we speak. It's the final nail in your coffin, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Yeah, 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 I get it already. You want to beat and destroy me. Can't worry about her. I've got to try and find out more information myself. Alright, let's talk about Edward's death. <laughs> Edward was never quite the same after that case. And then with the case after that one. He never set foot in the court again. And then one day, he just vanished. All he left was a simple note at the prosecutor's office. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death. And that was one year ago. It was a few months after you left to go back home. Mr. Edgeworth, he's dead? I don't believe it. He's still alive, I'm sure of it. Somewhere in this world, he's still alive. Prosecutor Miles Edgeworth chooses death? Of course he did! You ruined his reputation as a prosecutor. You, eff you effectively killed the prosecutor in him. Just like your victory muddied the honorable name Von Karma. I'm going to find him. And then I'm going to teach him his rightful place with my own two hands. Nick, um, about Mr. Edgeworth. Maya, I already told you this once. Don't make me do it again. Don't bring up his name in front of me again. Okay, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Nick? Miss Von Karma? What? I don't know if you are God's gift to prosecutors or not, but I've had about enough of you. Him too, oh my god. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> what? What in the world happened? <laughs> this dog is all bark and no bite. He's already been defeated. Regardless, I have nothing to inform you two of today. Tomorrow will be the greatest courtroom battle this country has ever seen. Nick? Let's go. We need to talk with the performer on the third floor. I'm sorry I brought it up, Nick. Ooh. Yikes. Oh, hello! <laughs> Hi! Hello! <laughs> You must be Phoenix Wright. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. I'm Ken <laughs> 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 I'm Ken Dingling. <laughs> but here at the circus everyone just calls me Acro. Please, let's call you Acro, please. Mr. Acro? Um, how do you know my name? The detective told me. He said you'd definitely show up here. Acro, you're a member of the circus as well? That's right. I mainly performed on the tightrope or the flying trape uh, trapeze. But nowadays, all I perform in is my wheelchair. Oh. Hey, I like your birds. Acro, why did you join the circus? When I was a kid, my parents failed miserably at business. 
Then one night, they decided to run away from it all. The only person who was willing to take my parents' place was the ringmaster. The ringmaster took such incredible care of me, he was truly a lifesaver. Seems like the ringmaster was truly a saint. He was. That's why I decided to do something very important. I decided that I would devote my entire life to finding a way to repay him. And now, look how someone repaid him for all the good in his life. Such a shame. Sometimes I think that he was almost too kind. Perhaps he was too kind to his performers. Perhaps he was too kind to his daughter. Hmm, I wonder if he spoiled Regina. Regina is so cute. She's truly a princess. Truly a princess? Are you sure that's a good thing? Um. Hmm, do I detect a hint of a grudge against Regina? Interesting. Um, I'm sorry to ask, but why are you in a wheelchair? <laughs> Maya. The nerves in my legs were badly damaged. And you can't walk now? I can't even stand now. And since I live on the third floor, I can't even leave this building by myself. Oh my god, move him downstairs, what the heck? That's awful! The accident happened during an acrobatic session, right? Um... Oh! I guess not! I guess it did not happen during an acrobatic session. Psyche locks. Doesn't seem like Akira's injuries were acrobatic in nature. What's on your mind, Mr. Wright? Well, exactly when were you injured? It's been almost six months since I was hurt. I injured my legs during practice. He's a dirty lie. <laughs> six months ago? What in the world went on in the circus then? I stopped by yesterday and noticed that you weren't in your room. I was at the hospital all day yesterday. Ah, uh, you went there for a rehabilitation? What about the murder? Of course I knew about it. I spoke with the police before they allowed me to go to the hospital. Before I got the call from the prosecutor, I was convinced that it was all a dream. Huh? I just couldn't believe it when I saw what I saw. What you saw? Jeez, that sounded really ominous. <laughs> what did you see? What did you see, Acro? That night, I was in bed sleeping when I heard a huge sound coming from below my window. I see. The scene of your crime was right below your window. That's when I looked out the window. <laughs> what did you see? He was flying straight up into the air. H he? Maximilian Galactica. <laughs> what? That's what I thought he'd say. You're absolutely positive that it was Max you saw flying. I'm absolutely sure. There's no doubt in my mind. Nick. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Yo, OMG, you can really fly. <laughs> I've got a bad feeling about this. Ooh. Yo, Nick! Wonderful. Today's special must be Phileo Phoenix. I can't believe he's gonna get eaten again. Stay, stay, heal. Oh, Maya, Nick, it's you guys. I'm sorry, I guess I made a mistake. A mistake? Yeah, little one. I was thinking of teaching whatever primate was out there a lesson. But I was expecting more of a monkey than a human. A monkey? Uh... It's a pity about what happened to the ringmaster. Dad? Everyone loved him, didn't they? He must have been quite a man. Bro's getting mauled again. He was. I love my dad so much. I hate to say it, but she doesn't seem all that broken up about her father. That's why I feel so lonely. Now that I won't be able to see him for a while. For a while? Yeah. 
When Leon died, I talked with my dad and he told me that when someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. A star? That means that my dad is looking down on me from the sky. That's why I love the night so much. I can see everyone who's gone. When someone dies, they just become a star in the heavens. It's kind of sweet. But I bet you there's no way that Maya believes that. What do you mean there's no way I believe that? Ah, she read my thoughts again. <laughs> do you think that one day I'll be a star too? Of course. You really think so? Yeah, you will, I think. I've got a feeling that everyone is doing great up there in the sky. I wonder if everything's alright with Regina. Yeah. Just to ba go back and clear something up. You, why do you want to teach money a lesson? Because he's a meanie. He's got something that means a lot to me. Something that means a lot to you? It must be something shiny, right? Um, actually it's a stage costume. It's got lots of spangles. It's really beautiful. You should see it. We should. When the costume gets hit by the spotlight, it dazzles. Hey, Mr. Attorney. Huh? If you saw that monkey, you'd get my costume back for me, wouldn't you? It's really important to me. <laughs> <laughs> Gladly. But of course, I'll get it for you. <laughs> Leave it up to us. Guess there's no turning down that request. gonna do it? Yeah, but, uh, Regina, I wanted to ask you about this note. Max said to show it to you. Regina, have you ever seen this before? Uh, I know what this is. Really? Well, it was in my pocket for a while. It was in your pocket? This piece of paper was in your pocket. Mm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time? Breakfast time? Yeah, I always take Akro his breakfast in the morning. That's when I also take out the trash in his room. Then I'd go to the cafeteria and eat my own breakfast. That's when you realized this piece of paper was in your pocket? Yep, but since I'm not a murderer, I just figured it belonged to someone else's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and then what? I wondered if the person who lost it was in trouble, so... You didn't put it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria, did you? I did! I stuck it up there, how'd you know? Mm, this was Regina who put it up there. When did this happen? Um, the morning of the murder, I think? That explains a lot. I wonder who wrote this? Note updated in the court record. Interesting, interesting. To Weston. Hmm, Mo's not here. What's that? I hear something. Oh god. Stop it, Nick. You're scaring me. Oh, monkey. Nick, it's money. That monkey's holding something. That's it. That's the thing that means a lot to Regina, remember? All right, time to take on this monkey attorney style. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Yikes! I tried to have a monkey to monkey talk with him. I really did. Nick, you, you. I swiped it while money was distracted. Wow, you re you're really on the ball today, Nick. Let me see it, let me see it. Huh? You can see it fine from where you are. You know what I mean. I really want to try on Regina's costume. Maybe then they'll take you in at the circus and I can get some peace of quiet. Oh my god. <laughs> hmm. What's the matter now? It doesn't fit me at all. Oh well, guess it's time for you to lay off the burgers. Oh my god, Phoenix! What the hell? <laughs> Not to mention, it doesn't look like something any girl I know would actually wear. That was so mean. <laughs> it's not Maya's size at all. Oh my god. What is wrong with you? You're such a jerk. 
Poor Maya. It's like a stage costume. Here you go, Regina. Yay! Thank you! You really got it back for me! Don't mention it. I love you, Mr. Attorney. Okay. <laughs> it's nothing. No wonder guys melt a mush in front of this girl. Jesus. Hey, Regina. That costume was yours, right? I tried it on, but it didn't fit me. Huh? This costume? This isn't mine. It was Leon's. Leon's? You know, the lion she told us about. Oh, the one that someone killed. Ooh. A BRB, five seconds. Boop. Oh my god, I was muted! <laughs> I'm just gonna redo it. Don't worry, don't worry, we can redo it. I was mute- I didn't even realize I was muted! I am back. We'll redo that, because I was muted. Leon, he was killed, wasn't he? That's right, my dad killed him. Why? Well, Leon did something really bad during practice. During practice? Leon was sitting down, and then he opened his mouth, you know? Gah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Usually when he did that, I would put my head into his mouth. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Wait, you put your head into a lion's mouth? I sure did. The people in the crowd always love seeing me do that. They'd always start screaming. You sure they were screaming because they love seeing you do that? Anyways. What was the bad thing? Oh, yeah. Leon bit someone during that practice. R R Regina! Everything was alright, though, right? No, it wasn't alright. That was the problem. My dad was incredibly angry. And that's when Leon... Yeah, that's when he became a star in the sky. Poor thing. Mm -hmm. Something smells fantastic. So we know it can't be Mo. <laughs> Wait, I know what it is. It's burgers. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Bistro du Cirque. A.K.A. the cafeteria. Mmm, smells so good in here. And those burgers look great. She's drooling like she's some sort of crazed burger monster. My burgers are the best. 
Some juicy meat, toasted buns, a special stall. They are absolutely irresistible to anyone with a hankering for a burger. One bite will send you into hamburger heaven. I bet. I can tell by the smell. Well, I'm getting kind of hungry, too. Those burgers must have some kind of special power. Now that the ringmaster is gone, what are you gonna do? And that's all I've thought about the past two days. Everyone loved Russell. You've heard Akro's story, haven't you? Like how he was adopted when he was younger? He's calmed down a bit now, but he was livid when he heard about the murder. Akro was so upset that he said he couldn't go on. He was that upset? Yes, he was. Anyways, I gave it some thought. Maybe I should give up on trying to be a half-baked clown. I've been thinking of trying on the ringmaster shoes. What? Really? Max would still be an issue, though. Max? He may be a bit mean and hard to work with, but it's hard to argue his importance. He's probably the reason the circus is still around. A lot of what he says is right. No. All that's left is to see if everyone can get over the tragedy. You know? The tragedy? You know? What is he talking about? Get over what tragedy, Mo? Huh? Don't worry about it. It's nothing. Nothing at all. It must be the tragic death of the ringmaster, right? Yes, yes, that's it. You're right, girly. Dang, dang, dang. Correctamundo. Doesn't he mean ding? Mo, I mean no disrespect here, but are you lying to us? Huh? No, not at all. What makes you think that? Just the way you said if everyone can, o can get over the tragedy seemed a bit strange. Sounds like you were talking about something from a long time ago. <laughs> Mo, I'm right, aren't I? Ooh. Everyone's got secrets. Bow. Alright, let's see if we can break his. Now we're getting closer to the truth. It was about six months ago. It was just a little accident. Give me a break, us old men have accidents. I wear big pants for a reason. Six months ago, eh? Let's break him. Let's break him down. Find out his secrets. Mo, please tell us what happened six months ago. What in the world went on at the circus? Okay, okay, well, there's no need to look so scary when you ask me. Hey, look over there, some juicy burgers. Let's eat instead. And unfortunately, I'm more of a grilled chicken sandwich man myself. Uh, actually, I've kind of got an idea of what happened back then. Mo, you said something about an accident? This wouldn't happen to be the cause of that accident, would you? Maya Faye. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Le uh, yeah, because he shot by the ringmaster six months ago for biting him for performing. Yeah. I heard a little about it from Regina. Maya Fey is really good at preparing accidents. Leon made a mistake during a practice, right? How did you? I told him so many times you shouldn't be doing such dangerous acts. Like putting her head inside of Leon's mouth, right? Yeah, but Regina believed in Leon. She believed so strongly that the ringmaster went along, he could never say no to her. Out of curiosity, who was bitten? Come on, Mo, Don't clam up on me now. Who did Leon bite on the head? <laughs> well, um, I promised I wouldn't say anything. You promised? He's involved in this, too. He's involved, huh? Mo must be talking about... Mo, is this the person that you promised you wouldn't say anything? It's gotta be Akro, right? Because he seriously injured both legs while training six months ago, yeah. <laughs> it must have been Acro, right? Duh, how, how'd you- Don't worry about that, Mo. Getting to the bottom of this accident may help solve what happened to the ringmaster. No, no way! I need to know the truth about what happened to Russell. Please tell me what you know. I'm sorry, Akro. Mm. 
It's just like you said, you know the accident. Did someone die? No, but it would have been probably been. No, but it would have been probably been. No, but it would have probably been better if he had. What? How would that have been better? He's still alive, but when he got bit, he suffered massive brain damage. He can never. He'll never recover from that coma he's in. Coma. All he does now is lie in his bed at the hospital, and that's all he's ever gonna be able to do. I see. How is he related to Aqua? He's his brother. Ooh. Huh? The person who got bit was Aqua's brother. B brother? They were an acrobat team of brothers. Acro and Bat. Cute nicknames, I thought. Cranky, this is sad, yeah. Anyways, they were an incredible team, cut down together in their prime. Aww. Um, who is Acro's younger brother? Sean Dingley. But everyone always called him Bat. He fell in love with Regina. Of course he did. Trying to win her love was his downfall. Everyone seems to fall in love with Regina. Is he, has he been added? Can we get an H check? Okay. <laughs> okay. He's 22. Again, how old? <laughs> Ugh. So far, Max has been the closest one to her age. <laughs> Six months ago, while we were practicing, I sensed the wrong hit. <laughs> All of a sudden, Bat blurts out, Let me perform with Leon. Why'd he do that? I don't know, but that's what caused the accident. I'll never forget that moment. It was so strange. Leon had the weirdest look on his face. He was smiling. He? You mean Leon? Yes, Leon. When he bit down, he was smiling. Ugh. Ugh. Some sick grin. No way, that's impossible. A smirking lion, a flying murderer? Why does it seem that it's always Mo who catches all these incredible events? Nick, can lions smile? Um... We never told the police about the incident. The circus would have been shut down if we had. The next day, the ringmaster took Leon out and shot him with a rifle. So that's what really happened. Well, you guys were so serious. What was I supposed to do? I had to tell you. Well, this truthfulness has put me in a mood for a burger. Here, you two have some pepper. <laughs> there he goes again, acting like his normal crazy self. Ah, ah, ah. Achoo! Achoo! Nice, what a wonderful sneeze. Huh, you think so? You sneeze with pepper and slip on a banana peel. That's basic clownmanship. Girly, I know that y I know you gotta understand that. Nick, I think I'd make a good clown. Yeah, you would. Other than Regina, I've never seen a cuter sneezer. <laughs> does Regina sneeze with Pepper too? She does! But Bat would always tease her with Pepper. The Bat? From my point of view, those two always look so perfect together. They look perfect together, huh? Oof. Alright. I think we can finally break Gakko's, like, heart. <laughs> Let's go break his heart. Mo put his brother into a coma and blamed it on a lion. Akra some got, somehow got out of his chair and killed the ringmaster. So both the villain and all this and no, none of that sounds impossible. Oh, I'm sure. Ah, oh, Mr. Wright, back again, I see. Well, he did say I'll be back. Wait, or was that someone else? We're back because Akra's hiding while his legs were injured. He was hurt in that accident six months ago. It would seem that he knows that we know. Well, well, it seems you've got things you want to talk about, so fire away. Hey, boy. Bow. About the wheelchair. I have to ask you, 
How were you injured? I'm sorry, I thought we talked about this. It was an accident that happened during practice. An accident during practice. Yes, unfortunately, acrobats are prone to all sorts of injuries. He's lying. If that were the real cause, he'd have no reason to keep it a secret. Acro, are you really telling me that a practice accident was the cause of your injury? I think it was this lion. Bam. Leon. Six months ago, you were attacked by the lion. That's when you were injured. I know I'm on the right track. I just need to keep going. You're saying that I was attacked by a lion? That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'm an acrobat. I'm no animal tamer. If a lion was coming at me, I'd be running for the exit. Okay, maybe attacked is not the best word to be using. So, let me rephrase that as battled the lion. You seem to enjoy telling jokes. Why would I decide to battle a lion? Because you had to fight it. You had to fight it to save someone. Bat. Bat. It was a shame what happened to your brother six months ago. You tried to save him, didn't you? And that's how you got that terrible injury. Yeah, we got him. Mo, he must have told you. Yes, we learned about Bat from Mo. But he didn't mention anything about you in regards to the accident. I suppose it was just a slip of the tongue on his part. That's how I figured it out. A slip of the tongue? Anyways, they were an incredible team cut down together in their prime. Cut down together. That was where he slipped, and that's how I figured it out. You two ended up at the center of the same accident together, like always. I see. But an accident is an accident. It wasn't anyone's fault. Still haven't broken Acro's last psyche lock. This must be one incredibly deep-seated secret. It wasn't anyone's fault. Do you care to explain more? Acro, I know you're still hiding something from me. Maybe someone you don't seem to like much is the reason you're being evasive? It's gotta be Regina. It's gotta be. He doesn't like Regina. 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 You always seem calm and collected until you start talking about her. Saying things like, she is cruel. Well done, Mr. Attorney. You've got quite the set of eagle eyes. You know, her tiger tried to attack me. Regent tried to attack you? Twice. <laughs> he wasn't serious, I'm sure. You're not trying to insinuate that I believe she spurred on Leon to attack bad, are you? Leon was never taught an attack to a command to attack people. Regina isn't capable of doing anything like that. Besides, Regina had no reason to want to hurt my little brother. Regina and Bat were such good friends back then. But you still hate Regina. I've got proof of it. What? What are you talking about? Duh, maybe I ever did it. But if I can hand something over to Acro, maybe it'll... Here's proof that you had it out for Regina all along. Oh my gosh. That does so much damage. Oh, found in Regina's pocket. Yeah, the, to the murderer thing. The this. Where did you get it? Regina posted it on the bulletin board in the cafeteria. Before that, it was in her pocket. Mm, I guess I noticed it was in there around breakfast time. I always take after his breakfast in the morning. You wrote this, and then you put it in her pocket. That's right, isn't it? That's right. Well done, Mr. Wright. Got him. Bam. Broke his heart. Alright. My legs were injured by Leon. Six months ago. My younger brother, Bat, had a dare with Regina. A dare? You love breaking these characters' hearts, don't you? A li absolutely. Absolutely, I do. An absurd dare. If I can put my head inside of Leon's mouth like you do, you have to go to the movies with me on a date. That's insane! Didn't he know how dangerous that is? We all thought he was being stupid, too. But that lion was very old to begin with. 
and age brought with it countless experience in doing that very trick. Unfortunately, this particular time, I guess Leon wasn't ready or willing. And that's when the accident happened? I just wanted to take her out to the movies. Poor Bat. When Leon chomped down, I jumped towards him. Then Leon attacked me, and that's how I ended up. What about Bat? He's still in a coma. I went to the hospital yesterday to visit him. I see. I'm still waiting for him to open his eyes again. And that's the reason why I keep going. Oh. Bat and Regina. They were such great friends. Oh yeah, I wanted you to take a look at this. This bloody piece of cloth. What is it? This is the scarf my brother was wearing when Leon attacked him. Gross, it's covered in blood. The scarf. It was a present from Regina to my brother on the day of the accident. Hmm. When he did it, he looked like he was smiling. Ooh. He? Leon, obviously. Oh! When he bit down on Bat's head, the expression on Leon's face looked like a grin. Nick! I know, Mo said the same thing. What do you think it all means? I'll be taking that scarf if you don't mind. Oh, it's Francisca. <laughs> I was like, huh? Who said that? Miss Von Karma? I've already heard everything, so hand over the scarf. The scarf is evidence in the trial. That is for me to decide. I think we should begin our preparations now, Acro. Preparations? I've served, a, I've served a summons to Acro to appear in court tomorrow as a witness. Acro, we'll talk more at the prosecutor's office. Acro, a witness? Come, Acro. Let's go to the office. Yes, ma'am. What do we do, Nick? How are we gonna handle tomorrow? Don't worry about it. I'll figure something out. Look at you, all full of confidence. You must have found something you can use. This is all beginning to come together now. Mm. We got this. We got this. We're gonna solve this murder. Good morning, Max! Oh, yeah, good morning, sweeties. You don't seem like your usual sparky, sparkling self today. I'm always like this before I go in front of an audience. I'm working up to it. Teehee! Don't get nervous, Maxie. Here, have a glass of milk. Regina! How fabulous! My sweetie pie princess. Oh, God. You came to watch my performance today. That's not a glass, Regina. <laughs> of course I did. Mo told me that I should come and watch this. Mo said that? So, what kind of performance will you put on today? Let me guess. You'll fly at the end. Uh. Hello. Hello, Pixel. It's not that kind of show, isn't that right, my sweeties? Huh? I think my sweetie pie princess doesn't- Yeah, she doesn't seem to realize what's going on, or even where she is. Hmm. Well, Max, it looks like it's time to raise the curtain. I'll see you later. Today I'm just a member of the audience. F fabulous, enjoy yourself out there. Good luck, Max. You're the best. Regina's different, don't you think, Nick? Top of the morning to ya! Everybody, let's get ready to get stuck in legal limbo! How low can you go? M Mo, top of the morning to ya, governor! Uh, top of the morning. That's the ticket! Attacking the day starts with energy in the morning. The early bird gets the worm, but then again, worms lack higher brain function. Oh, uh, what? <laughs> Here, Max, I brought you a present. Have some milk. 
Oh, oh my! Uh, th thanks. So, how are things today, right? Well, I've got a feeling that today I'm gonna face off against the real culprit. You mean Acro? Huh? You think he did it? Be careful. He's used to putting his life on the line, uh, literally. He's got guts to spare. If all I've got to worry about is how thin the tightrope is, I'm used to it already. This means that I won't be able to press him like I can other witnesses. What are you gonna do then, Nick? I guess today we'll just have to do without our usual, usual psychological warfare. <laughs> today we rely on evidence, and it's the only way we'll get past Acro into the truth. You're right, but it's gonna be tough. Anyways, I want you to make sure that Regina sees it all today. It's very important. Then she'll finally have to deal with the reality of what happened to her father. You want us to make sure Regina watches? Yes, that's why I brought her to here to court today. What's that supposed to mean? She needs to know that when people die, they don't just become stars. I may be an old-fashioned clown, but I don't believe in people becoming stars. Ugh. Court is now in session for the trial of Maximilian Galactica. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Very well. Miss Von Karma, you may proceed with your case. The prosecution would like to revise its previous theory of events. What's the meaning of this? We have discovered a new witness, or shall I say, a new eyewitness. Not gonna lie, that's actually the first thing most said that I actually agree with. It's cruel but necessary. Yeah. One that, one that saw Maximilian Galactica fly off from the scene of the crime. Order! Order! I had a feeling something like this would come up. Due to this revision, we are now prepared to explain how the defendant flew that night. An explanation the prosecution will present if the need so arises. In fact, my detective stayed up all night creating a mock-up of the scene on my orders. Poor Gumshoe. Very well. Please call your witness to the stand. Time to get to work, or shall I say, time to walk the courtroom tightrope. What do you think about the game so far? Oh my gosh. I love it. Love the game. <laughs> Name and occupation? Ken Dingling, but everyone calls me Acro. I'm employed as an acrobat at the Very Big Circus. Where were you on the night of the crime? I was in my room that night. If you look at the map, you will see the witness's room is near the crime scene. My room is on the third floor. The crime scene is below my window. Hmm. The night of the crime, the witness saw something quite shocking. Would you tell us what you witnessed? Okay. It was just after 10 p.m. and I was resting in my bed. Around that time, I heard a large thump noise from outside the window. Then, a few moments later, I saw someone flying right by my window. It was Max Galactica. I only saw him from behind, but that's who it looked like. Ew. To be honest, when I saw that, I thought I was dreaming. Hmm. This witness's testimony matches up exactly with that of the clown. If that's the case, there is very little the prosecution needs add. All that's left is to explain how the defendant disappeared into the sky that night. Before we get that far, I'd like to cross-examine the witness. A foolish choice by a foolish fool who wishes to feel the foolish sadness of a sad fool. A man must know the proper timing for things, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Just like your old friend, Mr. Miles Edgeworth, did. Yeah. 
Mr. Wright? Mr. Wright, do you have a problem with the witness's testimony? In the words of Miss Von Karma, may I quote yesterday's proceedings? There's no way that actually happened. <laughs> Very well. You may proceed with your cross-examination. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's do this. What I witnessed. Uh. Uh. Ba -ba 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 The light in your room was turned off then, right? That's true. I was going to bed after all. So, with the lights off, you were still able to clearly see a human fly by your window? The safety lights lit things up enough for me to see. But honestly, there was only enough light for me to see the silhouette outside my window. It was the person's back, so I couldn't see the white roses on the front. Did you see any of the other symbols? I clearly saw the silk hat, as well as the cloak, wrapped around his body. Well, see, there's the problem. Erm, um, he shouldn't have been wearing the silk hat. I'm convinced that the person I saw was Max Galactica. Hmm. The more I press him, the less results I seem to get. Maybe there was something fishy with his last bit of testimony? Yeah, there was. I already got it. So, cat. There's a huge contradiction with the testimony that was just given. If there's a contradiction, then prove it with evidence. Hmm, she's right. Let's see some evidence. Do you have any evidence to support your claim of a contradiction? Bow. You claim to have seen the exact same thing Mo saw that night. Do you stand by that? What do you mean? The silk hat. What about the silk hat? I saw it on Max's head as he flew by my window. Well, you should have tried looking down out of your window that night. That would have been quite difficult considering the state that I'm in. Just looking outside of the window was a tough enough challenge for me. That's a shame, because you would have noticed the silk hat found at the scene. That... that's the ringmaster's hat, right? Afraid not. No matter how you look at it, this is Max's silk hat. Where are you going with this, Mr. Wright? Are you saying that Max has two silk hats? Pfft. Oh my god. No, this is a handmade, one-of-a-kind model made only for Maximilian Galactica. Which means, Acro... That you've been fibbing on the stand! Order, order! As always, it looks like someone just had to open their mouth before thinking. Are you okay, Nick? Well, I opened my big mouth and now I have to back it up. How about it, Mr. Wright? What would cause this witness to commit perjury in this court today? He has a grudge against Max. Acro is dreaming. Acro is the real culprit. Oh my gosh, he's the murderer. Your Honor, on this occasion, the defense accuses Acro himself. On this occasion? Uh, accuses Acro? What in the world are you accusing him of? What do you think, Judge? <laughs> Obviously, we accuse him of the murder of Mr. Russell Berry. Oh, Mr. Wright, are you serious? <laughs> you can't be serious. <laughs> Deadly serious, Your Honor. <laughs> I think your trips up to the circus have served you well. You seem to have learned to try and grab in an audience's hearts and minds. Your Honor, don't allow yourself to be swayed by theatrics. Trying to wow the crowd with smoke and mirrors is the oldest bluff in the book. Uh, really? It is? If you don't believe me, just look at the witness. 
Look at him with his pretty little birdies. He's calm enough for it to almost be scary. Hmm. <laughs> the little bird is so cute. He is staying rather calm and collected. Mr. Dingley, <laughs> do you have any response to the defense's accusation? I don't really need to say a thing, do I? What do you mean? Everyone, take a good look at me. I can't even stand up by myself, let alone leave the lodging house. Th that's true. I understand that Mr. Wright is just trying to help his client. But to do this by accusing me of murder, of all things? See, even a sliver of common sense makes it clear the accusation is ludicrous. She is right! Way to pick on the disabled, you heartless, cruel man! Oh my god! <laughs> Phoenix- <laughs> See that, Mr. Phoenix Wright? If you're trying to drum up some poet from the peanut gallery, that's how you do it. Uh, I think that's enough of this little game. I've got a doctor's note to confirm that Acro is unable to stand under his own power. Maybe the defense is planning on making a claim to this counter to counter this as well. I can hear the defense now. Acro had an accomplice. What do you say about this, Mr. Wright? Did Acro have an accomplice? I don't think so. Now then, this must be when we get to hear the name of the mystery accomplice. Not this time, Von Karma. Wh what You're not gonna sucker me into this one. What are you blabbering about, Mr. Wright? There was no accomplice. Acro Planet committed this murder all by himself. <laughs> That's so crazy and far-fetched of him to say. <laughs> but order, order. What the, what are you getting at? Way to keep them on their toes, Nick. Now I'm gonna have to prove how it all fits together. I have to show how Acro murdered Russell Berry. Can you do it, Nick? Can you really do that? I know what I can do. I can't stop now. If I stop attacking, I'm doomed. Alright, then let's do it. Mr. Phoenix Wright. If this witness is the killer, then his eyewitness account is all lies, right? Hmm. Mr. Wright, I'd, li I'd like you to clear something up for me. When the crime was committed, exactly where was Mr. Dingling? Um, in his room. You can't really leave it. <laughs> He's obviously here the entire time. That's Acro's room. Pretty simple, eh? Acro wasn't able to leave the lodging house by himself. In that case, there can only be one correct answer. Acro didn't leave his room to kill the ringmaster. What? Are you nuts? What are you? What, what say you, Mr. Dingling? <laughs> She's the beardies. It's an interesting theory. Um, that's it? Considering that what you propose is impossible, yes, that's it. Hmm, Mr. Wright? Yes, Your Honor? As the witness has stated, your assertion is impossible. As he is in a wheelchair, there is no way he could go to the scene or be the killer. Uh, you got a point. It seems you've forgotten once again, Mr. Phoenix Wright. The defense defendant was clearly spotted at the scene of the crime. That's true. Mo said that he saw Max, didn't he? But Maya, it's still impossible for humans to fly. Do you mind if I ask a question, Mr. Wright? What is it? I understand some of your logic. However, how do you think that I killed him? I can't leave my room. I obviously couldn't wear Max's costume. Hmm, how did he do it? That's the next course of this legal buffet. Be careful, Nick. If you mess up here... She's right, I can't mess up here. Gotta give this one some serious thought. Be sure that Akko killed the ringmaster. And he did it while he was in his room, no doubt about it. Time to enlighten us as to how Mr. Dingling committed the crime, Mr. Wright. I'm gonna present some evidence. So, what did Mr. Dingling use to commit the crime of murder against Russell Berry? Um, blunt force trauma, right? Mm 
and the monkey. What's that? A picture? It is indeed. The problem is with the picture- with the item that's shown in the picture. The bust? It's quite a large bust. And because it is life-size, it is also very, very heavy. Mm, monkey. <laughs> heavy? Heavy enough to guarantee a certain death. Especially if it was dropped from a third-story window. Ah! See, this is how Acro- Acro- This is how Acro was able to kill the Ringmaster. <laughs> With the force of gravity and Maximilian Galactica's ample bust. <laughs> order, order. So you're saying the bust fell onto the Ringmaster? A rather simple crime. Even if you were stuck in a wheelchair, it'd be easy, e incredibly easy to commit. How could you possibly wheel a wheelchair with something so heavy? It's impossible. Objection. Well, Acro's an acrobat. He should have more than enough upper body strength to carry something like a bust. Mr. Dingling, how do you respond to these charges? Well, Acro's at a loss for words. He should be. He knows that I'm getting close to the truth. Well, 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 Acro. You can't run away from things- Ow! I'd watch what I say if I were you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? Your Honor, the physical health of the, of the witness is material to this case. I demand that we get proper testimony from the witness himself. Hmm. Testimony, you say? Fawn karma. She's just using this testimony as a ruse to stall for time. There's absolutely no need for such testimony. The defense has its version of the murder. The prosecution has the right to respond. The defense's objection is overruled. Why can't he say things my way once in a while? <laughs> Mr. Dingling, I'm sorry, but we needed you to testify about your phys physical condition. If you have any doubts about your ability to testify, we can request expert testimony. The witness will have no problems. However, let's all be respectful towards him. Thank you. Ugh, that woman will sink to any low to win a case. I suppose I could have lifted something the size of that bust. I have a strong upper body from working as an acrobat and only my legs were injured. However, lifting the bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. That makes it impossible for me to have known the location of the ringmaster's head. Thus, it would be unrealistic for me to drop the bust on him, don't you think? Hmm, I don't know about that one. Hmm. I have no doubts in regards to this witness's testimony. It was impossible for him to lift the bust and stick himself out far enough to look. Not to mention that he could not have known the location of the ringmaster's head. A single false step would have led to even more severe injuries. That's what I was thinking. What is your opinion on the matter, Mr. Wright? I'd still like to proceed with my cross-examination. He's simply stalling. It's shameful, really. Ugh. Can't let her get to me. I've got to focus. Bow. I have some questions about, um, this one. Why do you say it would be impossible? Allow me to explain. You accept that if I was carrying the bust, I couldn't see out, I couldn't see out below the window. Thus, there's no way that I would know the location of the ringmaster's head. Well, I suppose you've got a point. Hey, Nick. Huh? What if you turn things around? Maybe you could think of it sort of like this. If he knew the location of the ringmaster's head, then he could drop the bus. That does make sense. If only I could prove somehow. That Akro knew the location of the ringmaster's head without looking down. I think I've already explained things sufficiently. 
Hmm. How would you know the location of the ringmaster's head? The box! The box was a marker! The box was a marker! <laughs> Acro, you didn't really need to lean out the window, do, did you? What are you driving at, Mr. Wright? You already knew ahead of time where the ringmaster's head was gonna be. Quite precisely, I might add. Objection! Your silly hinting at things is pointless, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Enough stalling! How about you show some evidence? But, but I did such a good job at hinting. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Hurry up and explain things, Mr. Wright. Maybe you should take a look at this. The key point here is the wooden box. The same wooden box that the victim was found hunched over? The same. The question is, who placed the wooden box here? Who? When Ben and company saw the ringmaster, they didn't see him holding a box. Which means that this wooden box was already placed at the scene of the crime. I have to admit that your theory makes a lot of sense. The moment that the bus came falling down was exactly the same moment that the ringmaster lifted up this wooden box. Which means that the answer to all these questions is now crystal clear. You... you mean... If the bus were to fall upon the point marked out by the wooden box, there would be no way that it could miss the head of the victim. No! Got him. Order, order, order. This is unbelievable. Finally, some of those these loose ends are starting to tie themselves up. Now I just gotta keep going. There's only one way to go from here. Forward. So the next question I have is, who placed the wooden box at the scene? It was Mr. Dingling, of course. He connected it to a rope and then all he had to do was lower it down. Ow! Allow me to whip some sense into you. Oh, not again. Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ow. 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 The ringmaster's head could have been anywhere when he lifted the box. That's why the box was so, 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 so specifically made. I mean, specially made. Specially made? Indeed. It had the most peculiar fi fi feature. Um... The weight of it? The box has a remarkable weight. It's like 20 pounds, right? Weight? According to the court record, it weighs 20 pounds. Yeah. Just to lift up this wooden box would have required- Oh, I see. One would have to squat down and lift it with their body, wouldn't you say? That's exactly what I was trying to point out. The box is also very large. The box also has carrying handles on either side, doesn't it? That is correct. To lift up the box, you'd have to squat down. Which means- then no matter who you are, your head will be in approximately the same place. Fool! Hey, little birdies. <laughs> Don't even bother to listen to me anymore. I've heard what you've had to say. You can read my thoughts too? I must admit, I'm shocked at your imaginative skills. Y you Did you do it? Did you place this wooden box in the plaza? Mr. Wright may have a vivid imagination, but I could never have done what he's proposing. What? This guy makes me feel anger. <laughs> Mr. Wright, do you recall the original location of Max's bust? Yeah. Of course I remember. It was on top of the table in the cafeteria. Hmm. Then what happened to it? I'd like you to remember one important fact, Mr. Wright. I cannot possibly leave the lodging house by myself. Uh, that means... You understand what I mean, don't you? I may very well have been able to drop the bus from my room. However, how would I have gotten the bus from the cafeteria to my room? I've already solved this question! It's shiny! It's shiny! Look at it, it's shiny! And you know who takes shiny things? Monkey. And he brings him to your room. It's written in his little blurb. You see, Mr. Phoenix Wright, explain that. Don't forget, he said, there was no accomplice. There was one accomplice. The monkey. Hey, Pixel Ape, thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you. 
Tell us exactly how the witness would have carried the bus from the cafeteria. Yep, we definitely have a problem here. This is no place to get perplexed. How to get my wits about me and prove that things happen once and for all. Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's hear your explanation. How did the witness get the bust from the cafeteria back to his room? Bam! Monkey! <laughs> A monkey? Everyone knows money. He loves shiny objects of any size. Oh, like when he stole the ventriloquist, when ventriloquist wing. So... Are you saying the witness had a monkey steal the bust? Of course he didn't order the monkey to steal it. The monkey stole it on his own and then brought it back home. Home? Money lives in Acro's room. Acro's room? He has a room? But the bust was bronze, wasn't it? Bronze isn't all that shiny. Maybe you should put the whip down sometimes and read the court record. My, those are some very nice cards he's holding. Yes, and they are made of platinum, which is very shiny. <laughs> Acro. Money is a strong monkey, right? It'd be easy for him to bring the bus back to your room. If he wasn't able to handle that himself, I'd be on the market for a new roommate. So you admit. <laughs> order, order. I said order. Miss Von Karma, where is the bust in question at this moment? Um, 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 I, um, I don't know. We're searching for it as we speak. Hmm. This is a rather strange turn of events. But let's say that the monkey had not stolen the bust. What would have happened then? Well, in that event, something else would have been used as the murder weapon. Hmm, wait. Can you mean this bust... Was the murder weapon purely by accident? It's possible. Maybe Akra saw Money's mountain of stolen goods and thought to use one of them. Anyways, I think we've more than proven one critical fact. Namely, that it was entirely possible that Akra was the murderer. Moron! Mr. Wright's argument was so circular, I'm still a bit dizzy. <laughs> However, his argument does hold water. There's no denying that. Ow! Don't be so flamboozled, especially by this fraud of an attorney. Fraud? <laughs> attorney? <laughs> You've forgotten the absolute most important thing, Mr. Phoenix Wright. And what is that? You should know. You forgot that your fraud of a magical client was spotted at the scene of the crime. Ugh. There is no reason to doubt the clown's testimony. Th that's true. How do you respond to that, Mr. Wright? Nick, don't let her beat you down now. I won't. This is my chance to turn this trial around. When the murder occurred, there were two people at the scene of the crime. This fraudulent attorney has won how many trials? Five, six? Right? He's literally never lost the trial. <laughs> One was the victim, Russell Berry, and the other was the murderer himself. Answer this and only this, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Who was the murderer the clown saw? Um, the bust. It makes sense, because it's got the hat on it, and that's explained the hat. He saw Max's but Ow! I asked who was the other person most on the scene. That evidence has nothing to do with the question. Au contraire, mon frère. It does indeed have something to do with the question. Mo said that he saw Max's silhouette. But he did not actually see the man himself. It wasn't a human being he saw. How is this possible? It's simple, really. What Mo actually saw that night was Max's bust. What are you talking about? Have you tried using your brain at all in this case? That silhouette he saw was wearing a cloak. Why did he call her my brother for the rhyme? I guess. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> 
There's no reason why you couldn't attach a cloak to the bus. It would be easy to hang one off the uh, one off of the cards in the bus's hands. Idiot! Who in their right mind would put a cloak on a bus? It doesn't matter who put it on the bus. Uh, just wait a minute now, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? That question is of the utmost importance to this case, don't you agree? Die caught me. So let's have it, Mr. Wright. Who put the cloak on the bus? Maya Faye. Max, Ben, Gumshoe, Carla, Karma, Regina Berry, Russell Berry, Mo, Acrobat. Um. Probably Mo. Um, not Mo. Uh, Russell, right? Because he was wear I'm pretty sure he wore. He's uh, Max said he wore Max's. He wore Max's uh, outfit. Fool! Him? You are saying it was the victim himself, Russell Berry? Maya is an accomplice for each and one of these every- for each and every one of these murders. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He yeah, I mean, the victim himself. Place the cloak on the bus. Place the cloak isn't really the right way of putting it. Then what would be the right way of putting it, Mr. Wright? Explain yourself. Nick, do you really have a handle on all this? I'm fine, Maya. I'm finally putting all the pieces together. There's really only one picture I can paint anyways. Alright. So you want to know what really happened that night? Let's take a step back in time. Acro used the rope to lower the wooden box onto the scene. Then he attached that rope to the bust and dangled the bust out of his window, bedroom window directly above the wooden box. At the same time, the ringmaster told Max to wait in his room and went to the scene. Of course, at the time, the ringmaster was wearing Max's costume. Perhaps he didn't want anyone to recognize him that night. But just, that he's, but just as he feared, he was spotted at the entrance of the lodging house. By none other than a ventriloquist and his puppet, Ben and Trillo. When the, when the ringmaster arrived at the scene, he bent over to lift the wooden box. And that's when Acro took his chance and released the rope. Now this is when the magic happens. Oh. At the very instant that the bust hit the victim. Oh jeez. Oh wow. Look at that. <laughs> Such a stretch. You wait just the second there, Mr. Phoenix Wright. As much as you try, as much as you scheme, this just isn't true. It can't be. It's still a little early to be getting so upset, Miss Von Karma. The circus isn't over yet. What? Oh my gosh. The impact of the bust on the victim threw the cloak up, which snagged onto the bust. Oh, I'm sure it did. I'm sure. That impact also caused the sound a certain witness heard, prompting him to take a look. That witness was, of course, Lawrence Mo Curls, the clown. When Mo looked out his window, the cloak had already snagged onto the bus. Von Karma in the clown which is the entire circus. <laughs> now, having completed the crime, Akra naturally went about pulling up the murder weapon. Of course, he had no idea that Mo saw the bus being raised with the cloak dangling on it. Primarily because in his wheelchair he couldn't see out of his window, so he just kept pulling the bust up. To be honest, the little bow she does does feel like a gesture's bow. <laughs> I love her little bow. And that is how the magical murderer disappearing into the sky came to be. So you see, the only person who could have pulled this off is the one person who was able to drop the murder weapon from above the crime scene. Akro, it could have only been you. Akro's been playing mind games with all of us. Sure has. But he has come to the end of his rope now. So? What now? You've graced us with a rather long-winded tale. But do you have any evidence to prove that your fairy tale is true? I evidence? In this court, only two things matter. 
the power of evidence and the power of my whip. Don't forget the power of my gavel as well. Mr. Wright, the prosecution brings up a good point. Can we see some evidence? Nick, they say they want evidence. I heard them, Maya. I just explained how there could only be one possible murder method, but there's still something unusual about Moe's eyewitness account. Unusual? A contradiction, actually. Okay then, use that and get out of this jam. The hat? That's enough talking amongst yourselves. Proceed, Mr. Wright. Present some evidence that, to the court that backs up your claims. I want hard proof that you have unraveled the trick to this magic case. It explains why there was a hat found at the scene, and also one leaving the scene because there's a hat on his bust. Boom, got it. The problem is Max's three symbols. You know, the silk hat, the cloak, and the white roses. Those symbols were a problem numerous times during yesterday's proceedings. Yesterday, there were two contradictions in Moe's testimony. The silk hat was one, the white roses were the other. But the theory I just presented explains all of these contradictions. You fool! Do you ever shut up? Max's silk hat was found at the scene of the crime. However, remember what Moe said yesterday? He testified that the criminal he saw fleeing the scene was wearing a silk hat. There's only one explanation for that. The silk hat that Mo saw was actually the busts. Makes sense. If you look at it that way, then he did see the silk hat, well, sort of. Fine. You've got one, but what about the other contradiction? The other contradiction? Remember what the ventriloquist said in court? He said that he witnessed white roses on Max's chest that night. But the clown's testimony doesn't match. The clown said that there were no white roses. I'd like to see you try and explain that one away. Can you do it, Nick? Of course I can explain all of it. What was that? Please recall the instant when the cloak snagged onto the bus. If the cloak snagged onto the bus, what happened to the white roses? <laughs> so ridiculous. <laughs> Do you get it yet? If the cloak got snagged onto the front of the bus, it means that the white roses would end up on the back of the bus. Ah! Which explains why Mo didn't see them. The white roses were not visible because they were on the back side of the bus. Order! Order! This is quite the shocking state of affairs. Mr. Wright's theory still sounds a bit absurd to me. However, let's just keep going down this road for a while and see where it leads. Let's do this, Nick. Then maybe Von Carmel will finally throw in the towel. Well, so much for that theory. <laughs> Mr. Wright, do you mind? What is it? You took the time to research our circus, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did. Is there something making you think I didn't? If you did, then maybe you'll understand why I think you're off track. Um, why is that? Motive. This witness feels an incredible debt of gratitude towards the ringmaster. Anyone with a relation to the circus is well aware of this. Thus, there is absolutely no way someone like this would kill the ringmaster. Hmm. Your Honor, I'd like you to hear Acro's story. Learn about his relationship with the ringmaster and his life up until now. What do we do? There's no doubting that Acro deep deeply respected the ringmaster. Hakro's motive, hmm. It seems that this case isn't over yet. Very well, however, I feel like this is a good place to take a break. I will listen to the rest of Mr. Dingling's testimony after recess. But was it Regina the target? Hmm. This court will now take a ten minute recess. Thank you. 
I can't believe it. It's pretty shocking, isn't it? It definitely is. And to think he was always the most straightforward of the group. Jeebus, am I that hated? <clears throat> Echo tried to pin the murder on you on purpose. He... he did? Psst! Psst! <coughs> but... but I'm nothing but a little old nobody, you know? But you're not. Which is kind of the reason why... <coughs> hey! Hey, pale! Oh, pff, hey, pale. That dang it always happens. You're gonna ignore me after I went to all this trouble to bring you some evidence? Ah, Detective Gumshoe! Ah, forget it. I'm going home. This guy deserves to be guilty anyways. Now, now, Detective. I'm sorry. Look, why don't you relax a little? We've got some really tasty milk. How about a card trick, Detective? Ho ho ho! Well, if you insist. Now about that evidence you mentioned, what is it? Here you go. Huh? This was yesterday in Acro's room. Yup, and I've included the forensic results. Take a look at it later. Won't Ms. Von Karma be mad that you're doing this? That's why this is all a secret. Huh? Look, details are on a need-to-know basis, and we're not re really allies or anything. But everything that happened in court up until now has gone according to our plan. Gumshoe was legit the only decent character in the story. <laughs> I don't know, Miss Von Karma didn't seem in control of things in there just now. You'll figure it out eventually, pal. Yesterday our final plans were set in the motion. Final plans? Uh-huh. That reminds me. I got a message from the prosecutor for you. Nothing is ever truly decided until the very end. That's it. And that's it for me too, pal. I'm out of here. What did he mean by that? The very end part? I'm not sure. It's all pretty cryptic to me. Oh, one more thing. Ugh! Don't scare me like that! Looks like there's a large care package from the circus for the defendant. What? For me? It's milk. <laughs> <laughs> the reception area looks kind looks like some kind of dairy. So hurry up and drink it all before it spoils. An entire dairy's worth of milk? For me? Von Karma is well to be fair. She's just doing her job. <laughs> you were all hating on her last time. Court is now back in session. Ms. Von Karma, please continue from where you left off. I'd like to continue with Akro's testimony, starting with his relationship to the victim. I'd also like to get proof from the defense. Proof of what kind of motive Akro would have to commit this crime. Understood? Now, Mr. Dingling. Yes, Your Honor. Please proceed with your testimony. Finally, get to the motive. Wait, Nick, are you okay? Just do me a favor and don't ask questions you don't want the answer to. Ugh. About the Ringmaster. When we were little, we were abandoned by our parents. That's when the Ringmaster of the Barry Big Circus, Russell Barry, took us in. I became an acu acrobat. Uh, I became an acrobat around nine years old. I wanted to find a way to repay the Ringmaster. That was my sole purpose in life. Hmm. You're such a thoughtful young man. As you heard, the witness deeply respected the victim. I wonder how anyone could think that Acro would kill the man he held in such esteem. Repay the ringmaster by killing his daughter. You're absolutely right. How could anyone think that, Mr. Wright? Which is why there's no real need for cross-examination, is there? Actually, that's the question I'm trying to answer myself. Why would Acro kill the ringmaster? This might be my last chance to answer that question. Um, yeah. I don't think he wanted to kill the ringmaster. There's no need to cross-examine this witness. What's that? Why was the ringmaster murdered? There's no need to delve into that bit of testimony when I already know the answer. When I know the answer already. Mr. Wright, I'd like to ask you a question. Go ahead, your honor. I would just like to know. Can you provide an explanation as to why Acro would want the ringmaster dead? No. <laughs> no, he didn't want the ringmaster dead. Nick? 
Yeah, didn't even have to think about it. It was obvious from the start. Your Honor, the reason that Akro killed the Ringmaster is something that can't be proven. What? That's because Akro had no real reason to kill the Ringmaster at all. Ow! Your foolish attempts to fool us like foolish fools is so foolheartedly foolish. Did you forget? You made an accusation against this witness, did you not? I believe it was, this is the real killer of Russell Berry, Ringmaster. If you want to jump to the end of things, then yeah, sounds about right. The end of things? Acro? You didn't plan to kill the Ringmaster at all, did you? The Ringmaster wasn't your target that night. What did you just say? I'm saying that the target of this witness's murderous plot was not that Ringmaster. Because it was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. I wanna- do we get the- Oh yeah, I wanna look at the scarf. I just remembered it. Scarf- bat scarf stained with his blood and a small quantity of pepper. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. It was never his intention to kill Russell Berry to begin with. Gumshoe is vastly underrated in those cases. <laughs> so true. What? Order, order, bailiff. I don't care at who it is. Smack anyone who's loud in the face twice if you must. He's hungry, pal. <laughs> Mr. Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to my court? <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright, what in the world are you trying to do to his court? <laughs> are you attempting to imply that Acro is trying to kill someone else? Yeah, Regina, obviously. You wrote the note to her. Gina Barry? This young girl is the ringmaster's daughter, correct? Judge, no. <laughs> Acro? You were really aiming for her that night, weren't you? Objection! You don't need to answer that. It's a mean-spirited leading question. Objection! He could easily answer this question. If I'm wrong, all he has to say is, You're wrong, that's it. That's it, huh, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Enough. Mr. Wright, allow me to- Ow! The only thing allowed to interrupt me is death itself. Uh-huh. And that goes for you too, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Show me evidence. Now. I want to know why Acro would want to kill Regina Barry. Uh, yes, me, me too. I demand to see some proof. Present evidence that proves Acro is out to kill this young girl. Uh, why don't you let him answer for once? Mm. Acro, you remember this, don't you? That's the piece of paper that we found inside the ringmaster's tailcoat. Inside the victim's tailcoat? Acro wrote this note. It's ironically titled, To the Murderer. Its purpose was to call someone to the plaza at 10 p.m. Oh, crazy, the time of the murder. So you say he called Russell Berry with that note? Yes, but there's just one little problem problem. Acro did indeed place this note into someone's pocket. However, that someone was not the ringmaster. You mean, it wasn't for the... That's exactly what I mean. The person this note was intended for was none other than Regina Barry. Order, order, order. M Mr. Wright, this little theory of yours. It's the truth, Your Honor. It isn't a theory. It's a game theory. <laughs> Simply put, uh, Regina didn't think the note was meant for her. Which is why- oh. Is it something about, uh, putting a bulletin board, probably. That's why when her father, I mean, the ringmaster saw the note, that's when? That's correct. The ringmaster ended up in the pla in that plaza instead of Regina. And he was killed because of that mistake. Instead of Regina. That's... That's... That's incredible. Remember the testimony that Acro gave us earlier today? Lifting that bust and looking out of the window would have been impossible. There's no way I could have exerted that kind of force on my lower body. If I were to do that, I'd end up falling out the window myself. Akro had no idea who it was that arrived in the plaza. 
because he couldn't look down out of his window to see who it actually was. I've got it! I've got it! Acro thought it was Regina down in the plaza. And that's why he let the bust fly. Dang. Hey, Nick. Isn't Regina listening to all this from the audience? She is. Unfortunately, it's only going to get harsher from here. I hope Regina can handle it. And Acro wrote this note to Regina? Objection! Foolishly foolish fool with foolishly foolish fool ideas of foolish tomfoolery. You're so foolish you've even made me sound like a foolhardy fool. Very well, Mr. Phoenix Wright. If you're so sure, then tell us about this line. I have conclusive evidence of what took place. Yeah, what about that line? Well, if the note was meant for Regina Barry, it would mean that this note is declaring that Regina Barry is a murderer. You just don't get it, do you? What? What did you just say? The ringmaster knew what that m note meant, which is why he went to the plaza, in place of his lovely daughter. Hold it right there, Mr. Wright. What is this incident that is alluded to in the note? The incident six months ago. Yeah, we learned all about this. An incident occurred six months ago. And now I am more than ready to show this court what happened at that time. Moron. Wait, are you sure that it relates to the present case? It does indeed, Your Honor. Everything in this case had, has its start in what happened six months ago. It's called motive. Really, Nick? I am, um, I think so. Well then, if that's the case, hurry up, and, hurry up and tell us about it. What is this conclusive evidence mentioned in the note? I know, I'd certainly like to know what it is. I can't answer that question, the judge is gonna think I'm bluffing. The conclusive evidence about the incident six months ago is actually, um, it's probably what was found in the box, right? Because he, that would be the only conclusive evidence he left at the scene. And yeah, that was the pepper bottle. Hmm. Achoo! 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 <laughs> what kind of spicy joke is this, Mr. Phoenix Wright? It isn't a joke at all. It's the decisive evidence you asked for. W what do you mean? Recall that the victim was trying to take the wooden box away from him. He was doing so because this piece of decisive evidence was what was inside. Another unbelievable conclusion. Very well, Mr. Wright. So what exactly are you saying? Are you claiming Regina Berry killed someone with a small bottle of pepper? Taking the note into account, that's the only logical conclusion you can draw. Objection! Foolish fool who never tires of his own foolish ways. If you're so sure, Mr. Phoenix Wright, then answer this question. Who was Regina Berry's intended victim? A uh, bat. Take that. Who is this? That is Akro's younger brother. Yeah, the pepper. That explains the pepper and the lion's grin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a sneeze, poor lion, yeah. What does this prove? His younger brother isn't dead. Technically, that's true. However, Bat has been in a coma for six months now. It's not a stretch to see how Akro could feel that his brother is dead. Regina, she did that to him? You spend your entire life dreaming up new ways to be a fool. Naturally, the prosecution has looked into Acro's brother, Sean Dingling. Six months ago, he was bit by a lion and fell into his current comatose state. A l lion At the circus? Regina, I mean. Miss Regina Barry is an animal tamer by trade. However, no tamed animal in that position is ever trained to attack another human. They wouldn't understand the command. Moreover, Miss Regina could never do something like that. It's just not in her. Hmm. So then what happened to Acro's brother? He's not the victim of an attempted murder. He's the victim of an accident. I see. And what do we do? No one seems to be going along with your theory. Do you think what happened to Bat was actually an accident? Mm, a bit more than an accident, I think. Blind biting bat was no accident at all. What? You're such an amateur, Mr. Phoenix Wright. There's no way that Regina would ever incite her lion to attack another human being. 
She may not have incited the lion to attack another human being, but Regina is responsible for making the lion bite Akra's brother Bat. The scarf, right? There's pepper on his scarf. That's that's just the scarf. Acro. This scarf is something that Bat used to wear, correct? That's right. And who is the one that gave this scarf to Bat? R Regina. Regina gave it to him. Regina? There is something more than just blood on this scarf, Your Honor. And what that might that be? Pepper. Pepper? Pepper. <laughs> Pepper. Regina gave this scarf to Bat right before the accident. And she covered it with as much pepper as she could. <laughs> the bird! Once was a silent treatment. Um, excuse me, Mr. Wright. You've done a good- <laughs> You've done a good job of fingering a criminal. But out of curiosity, what was her crime? Um... Miss Barry gave a peppered scar covered scarf to bat as a president. A president? A present? Where's the crime in that? Still seems like the judge just doesn't get it. Oh, she got it. <laughs> Mr. Phoenix Wright, wasn't it said that the lion seemed to be smiling? Smiling? The lion was smiling? Right before bat was bit by the lion, for a moment, the lion's mouth changed and it looked like he was smiling. Lions smile? I've never heard of them smiling, however. Lions sneeze. Ooh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Leon wasn't trying to bite bad at all. In reality, all he actually did was make him sneeze. Oh. He sneezed because of all the pepper on the scarf. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? You fool! You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> What's the matter, Miss Von Karma? I, I... I object. For objection's sake. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you... This theory, you believe it? You really intend to say that this is how this joke of an accident ac actually happened? Of course I do, it's the truth. The lion sneezed due to the pepper, and that's when Bat lost consciousness. Akro nearly lost his brother due to this accident, or this joke as you put it. Which is why he tried to get his revenge against Regina. You foolish idiot. <laughs> Almost does seem like a terrible joke, doesn't it? Once again, I'm impressed by your imagination, Mr. Wright. To think that there's someone who treats this accident with the respect it deserves. Are you telling me that what I said was true? Akra, you don't mean, you can't mean witness. Uh, are you confirming the defense's claim? Mr. Wright. Unfortunately, your imagination is not enough to find me guilty of murder. What do you mean by that? The pepper, the scarf, the lion. I see where you're going, but it's all a bit hard to swallow. Not to mention the fact that there's an even bigger problem with your theory. What would that problem be? Same problem it's always been. Evidence. If I dropped Max's bust on top of the ringmaster, where is the evidence that proves that claim? Uh, hmm. You mean the conclusive evidence? The biggest problem is the murder weapon, or the lack thereof, to be more precise. The murder weapon? The bust that the defense claims was used. I hate this guy so much. If that were to be found in Acro's room, and if it was covered with the victim's blood, that would be awfully conclusive in my eyes. Yes, it would be. bust. 
Nick, you gotta do something. It's the last step. If I get this one right, the case is won. Uh, request to search Edgar's room. The defense requests to search the room of the witness, Ken Dingling. <laughs> what is it now? It looks like you still haven't figured things out, have you? By now, you must know the meaning of Von Karma Total Justice. You mean... A Von Karma never leaves anything to chance. We already searched Akro's room yesterday. What did you find? There's no reason to even say it. If we found what you think we found in that room, Akro would not be here as a witness. But to put a point on it, Max's bust was not in the room. The murder weapon is still unaccounted for. You see, Mr. Wright? The bust wasn't in my room. Furthermore, Detective Dick Gumshoe executed the search by complete surprise. And we took Akro directly to the prosecutor's office after that. End of story. Just wait a second. Something funny about all this. <laughs> Looks like you lack the fingernail to put into my coffin. But, but, what about the scarf? What about the note? What about them, Mr. Wright? No offense, but the only evidence that is relevant here is that which pertains to the death of the ringmaster. You should know that by now. Ugh. Do something, Nick. Don't let this case slip away. The bust, where is it now? Hmm, where's that bust right now? You're Phoenix Wright. You know where the bust is, I'm sure you do. There's not even a single clue. How am I supposed to know where the bust is? It seems this case is coming to a close. The defense's counter-arguments look to have fallen short. Thank you for your support. Ugh! I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Wright. I think that brings to an end the cross-examination of this witness. Max's bust. The defense needs time to prepare the pr to present its place. I mean, okay, sorry, I'm a bit nervous and I just bit my tongue. Huh? What? We need time to do what? Ow. Why are you the most surprised person here? She's your aide, isn't she? Do, do you really have a case to present, Mr. Wright? What? Why are you asking me? Rest is up to you, Nick. Good luck. <laughs> Thanks, Maya. Hey, wait, I can't be serious. Acrobats always have their lives on the lines, don't they? That's how Akro's has lived his life, uh, life up until now. Now it's time for us to walk across our own tightrope. If we don't, we're certain to lose. Very well. The defense may proceed. He doesn't have a clue, and I don't think he'll be finding one anytime soon. Walking the tightrope tight rope of lo logic, there's no room to, for a false step. Think or swim, the only way through is forward. The murder weapon. Where is Max's bus now? Somewhere in the lodging house, somewhere in the big tub. Oh, somewhere in this courtroom. I get it, I get it. I f I'm big brain, I figured it out. It's obvious, the bus is inside this very courtroom. It, it's obviously where? Allow me to pinpoint the location of the, bun uh, the bus once and for all. The judge's bends, the prosecutor's bends, the witness stand. It's the, he has it. He has it on him. Acro. Sorry to ask this, but do you mind if I take the blanket off your wheelchair? The judge has it. <laughs> Can't believe the judge has it. That's so crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't quite hear you, Mr. Wright. Well, you are a big guy, and you have a pretty big wheelchair because of it. I just wanted to make sure you weren't hiding anything under that blanket. Because it seems to me that it'd be really easy to say, hide a bust under there. <laughs> Once again, your penchant for humor hits me where it hurts, Mr. Wright. I think it's pretty amazing that you can laugh in your position. However, your lightheartedness doesn't change the fact that the bus is under there. 
We all know that you can't leave the lodging house by yourself in your condition. That proved inconvenient when Miss Von Karma happened to search your room yesterday. If she had found the murder weapon in your room, it would have been all over. Which is why you had to hide it. In the only place you could hide it. Under your wheelchair. Which is why, Acro, I have to ask you again. Would you please remove the blanket from your lap? Well done, Mr. Wright. Masterfully played. You! You fool! How could you? Got her. Got him. You've got me. I've been bagged by a real pro. <laughs> yeah, we got him. Actually, two of them. Two of them? Miss Franziska Von Karma and Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? There's just one thing I'd like to know. How did you know to launch the surprise search on my room last night? Ooh, there were two pieces of decisive evidence, the cloak and the bus. I burned the cloak in my room and threw the ashes away with the trash. Gina always took my trash out every morning, you know? But the bust... Obviously I couldn't throw that away. When you executed your search, all I could do was try and hide the bust. And the only place that I could hide it quickly was under this wheelchair. Miss Von Karma, you had things all figured out, didn't you? I was completely sucked in by your calculated strategy. And now to be caught in the middle of court hiding the murder weapon. There's no way I can escape that. So you've got me. Well done, Mr. Wright. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Hmm, it all makes sense now. I can't believe that Von Karma thought that far ahead. It's amazing. Uh-huh, you definitely couldn't tell by looking at her. I know I sure couldn't. I can't believe it. Me? Make a mistake? Why did I order a surprise search of your room? If only I hadn't done that! It seems we finally arrived at the truth. Acro? Yes, your honor. Did you kill the ringmaster of the very big circus, Mr. Russell Berry? Yes, your honor. I'm responsible for that crime. Acro... All my brother wanted was for Regina to like him. That's why he'd tease her. One day my brother sprinkled some pepper on Regina. She started sneezing so hard you couldn't help yourself from laughing. That's why Regina thought it'd be funny to get him back in the same way. And that's why she covered the scarf with pepper. I know she didn't mean for anything bad to happen. I know this. She just wanted to make my brother sneeze a few times too. But I just couldn't forgive her. No matter what, what am I truly guilty of? I'm guilty of never ever being able to understand her and murder. You also murdered someone. Your brother became a star. Regina believes in that so purely that she would laugh innocently when saying it. Too innocently. I just couldn't stand it, no matter how hard I tried. That's when you decided to do something about Regina. How dreadful. So are you saying that you are a victim in all of this as well? He's the murderer, Judge. No, that's not what I mean. Aw. I'm nothing but a murderer. That's who I am. At first I thought I'd kill myself. Then I pondered giving myself up. Jeez. Oof. But I couldn't just up and leave. I just couldn't. Not yet. That's why I tried to pin this on Max. Max, I'm so sorry. I just... I just... I just couldn't up and leave yet. This has been such a strange case, you think? It's almost a reflection of the circus itself. I'm an idiot. I can't believe it. You beat me again? I believe this case is now beyond any point of possible discussion. Thus, I'd like to declare my verdict. Not guilty. Yay! Yay! Not guilty! Huzzah! This court is adjourned. <laughs> she shook. <laughs>
f f f f fabulous But to be honest, I can't really be too happy about this. Afro, the ringmaster, Regina, and Bat? Not a single one of them was a bad person inside, huh? That's a good question and one I don't know the answer to. Many congrats, but only a max a million of them. Th thank you. Oh, what's with the vibe in this room? We're just thinking about Acro. No, 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 no. If you worry about people too much, then you'll be like this forever and never be happy. Huh? Oh. Well. <laughs> oh. She's been like this for a while now. <laughs> It's all my fault. <laughs> Just sweetie, sweetie pie. Pat and Agro, they're never coming back. No, no, everyone's gonna split up. Regina. Mr. Wright, tell me something. What do you want to know, Regina? Agro said something right at the end. I just couldn't up and leave yet. I mean that Akro. Is he gonna try and get his revenge on me? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not gonna do that to you, Regina. Are you sure? You're really sure I can believe that? Yep. Akro doesn't have any desire for revenge anymore. If that's true, then I want to see some evidence. Huh? I want to know you're not just making up of that stuff about Akro not wanting revenge. Oh. Um, 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 because that Akro didn't want to get caught for a reason. He wanted to see his brother open his eyes again. But that's right, Regina, he's still alive, you know. I never knew. But now that Akro's been caught, uh huh. I know. What? I'll do it. I'll stay next to Bat as long as it takes. Until he opens his eyes and, and then until he can meet Acro again. That's so sweet of you, Regina. I'm sorry, Acro. I'm sorry, Bat. Well, hopefully this is enough to give her a little peace of mind. Hey, Max? What is it, Mo? We really put you through a lot, didn't we, buddy? Sorry about what happened. So whenever you'd like to leave us, I'll pay your fee and rip up the contract. I understand. What a fabulous thing to do for me. I might even leave tomorrow. What's gonna happen to the circus now? Uh, that's the big question. Our ringmaster was really an amazing person, wasn't he? Even though he's not here anymore, everyone is sticking together. The staff, the performers. No one wants to leave the circus. Oh, no. That's why I've made him a decision. What is it? I've decided that I will take over as the new ringmaster. I'll turn this circus into the best circus this world has ever seen. The best circus the world has ever seen? D -d Don't laugh. The that's quite the goal. Yay, I can't wait. Then I guess that changes things. Huh? There's only one thing the best circus the world has ever seen needs. The world's best illusions. Which means the circus needs the best magician the world has ever seen. Max. Let's work together and make our circus super fabulous. What do you say, big guy? I don't know what to say. All I can say is thank you. Um, Regina, you're gonna help them out too, aren't you? Um, I don't know. Maybe the circus would be better off without me. What are you talking about, Regina? What do you think that I brought you to court today? Uh... We've gotta work together to make the very big circus bigger than it's ever been. M Mo... Mo's right, sweetie pie. It can't be the very big circus without Regina Barry. Nick! Seems like everything's gonna turn out alright here. I can't wait to go see the best circus the world has ever seen. We'll save you the most fabulous seats. 
It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm sure, uh, but I'm going to order. Ugh. It'll take us a while to get ready, but I'm going to order special whoopee cushion seats. <laughs> oh, geez. I see. What made the case? Who's talking? Yesterday's surprise raid really paid off just like you said it would, sir. Um, you had it all figured out, didn't you? It was just the theory. If Acro really was the killer, I thought this was the only way it could end. Especially if he was the defense attorney. Oh? You mean Mr. Wright? Of course. Well, detective, my plane is about to leave. As for Mr. Acro's case, you need not worry. I plan to personally stop by the chief prosecutor's office as soon as I get back. <gasps> Understood, sir. I'll be waiting for you, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh my god, he's not dead. <laughs> there he is! He's real! <laughs> he's not dead! <laughs> it's him! Hey! Hey, look who's in that thumbnail! <laughs> oh my god, it's him! It's the guy! Oh my god, he's alive! <laughs> Miles Edgeworth! Now, the moment you've all been waiting for! Who will be this year's Grand Prix Champion? Who will be our Hero of Heroes? I thought he was dead. They said he was dead! Will it be last year's runner-up, Jammin' Ninja? Or maybe Captain Saipan, all the way from the lovely tropical island Saipan. I see the students of a certain starry school are here, and Global Hero doesn't want to go home without the prize. We hope Lady Luck is with all our heroes tonight. And now, the winner of the third annual Hero of Heroes Grand Prix is me! Oh. The moon, no! Wow! The true hero of the night has appeared in our midst! It looks like this year's Grand Prix goes to this fantastic warrior! The Nickel Samurai! Too bad, Jammin' Ninja. Looks like the title eluded you again this year. Can't believe they just killed the moon. That's crazy. March 20th, 7.42pm, Gatewater Hotel, Viola Hall. All right, yes. Did you hear that, Nick? Did ya? The Nickel Samurai, he did it. Yeah, he sure did. <laughs> Getting too old for this. Oh, hey, look who's here. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God, I don't remember what voice I did for him. It's so long ago. Huh. I'm proud of the guy for doing the series justice. Um, so with the person everyone was cheering for, I guess he got the prize? Yup. You know who we're talking about, right, Pearly? The Nickel Samurai. No. Every Sunday, I only watch the Educational Channel's Kids Masterpiece Theater. Okay, that's it. From now on, it's the Nickel Samurai. All the kids watch it. Do you like the Nickel Samurai too, Mr. Nick? Nah, Nick's an old fart, so he's not allowed to watch it anymore. That's right, but I do like Kids Masterpiece Theater. Hey, I didn't know you were so young at heart, Nick. Mr. Nick, you're a grown-up. You're not allowed to watch it anymore. You're supposed to act your age and have interests that match. Well, screw you, Pearl. <laughs> I do what I want. It's very important. Aw, give it a rest, Pearly. Looks like I made the right choice in inviting everyone here. Glad you're all having a good time. Ah, it's like a dream. Too bad for the Jammin' Ninja, though. Last year he lost to the Pink Princess Warrior of Little Old Tokyo. I thought this might be his year. Yeah. Oh, hey! Did anyone else- I wanna- ugh. Did anyone else think that the Jammin' Ninja looked a bit different today? Different? What do you mean? Um, well, he wasn't carrying his bright red guitar. 
Hey, you're right. As soon as you walk around without a signature guitar. <sighs> I will never understand these people and their shows. Anyway, Mr. Powers, thank you very much for tonight. Oh, it's nothing. I owe you one. So it's just my way of saying thanks. Hey, Nick. Come on, it's time to get going to the lobby. There's a post-ceremony stage show that's supposed to start real soon. And then I heard there's going to be a press conference after that. A press conference? Is he going to make a speech about winning this year's prize? Oh, well, not exactly. Something about the Nickel Samurai confessing something? Confessing? Sounds pretty serious. Ah, oh, Nick, come on. You don't want us to be the last ones there, do you? Yeah, Mr. Nick, do you? Why me? The show doesn't even start for another 20 minutes. All right, let's look. We got Maya Fey, age 18, my assistant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pearl Fey, age, age, Maya's cousin, a channeling prodigy with immense spiritual power. It's interesting. Thank you very much for inviting us today. Oh, it was nothing, really. Guys like us don't get to come to a place like this often. I thought I'd invite you all. Hey, Mr. Powers, what have you been up to lately? Well, since the Pink Princess successfully wrapped up last month, I've been on kids' exercise shows. While wearing a rabbit mask over my face. Oh, I see. I'm still really sorry about all the headache it caused you at that time, Mr. Wright. Oh well, the sun is done, so let's forget about it. This is Will Powers. He's an action star. His popularity exploded when he was the Steel Samurai, and he was the first case Maya worked on with me. It's too bad you look scary, or people know you're a real softie who's good with kids. Um, thanks. <laughs> Alright, be back in a minute. I'm gonna take a, a quick little breather, but I will be right back. Ba -ba -ba. Back. The Nickel Samurai. Can't believe they're gonna make a movie based on the Nickel Samurai. I can't believe it either, but for a different reason. The Steel Samurai, an epic story of one hero in a desperate fight against his arch nemesis, the evil magistrate in the city of Neo Old Tokyo. And last year they started a new series, The Nickel Samurai. The new series seems to be a hit with the kids too. I'm really attached to The Steel Samurai as a show. So I was hoping that maybe I'd get the chance to do something in this new one. Yeah, it's too bad. It'd be, it'd be, uh, it'd have been awesome, awesome to see you with the new actor, Matt on guard. He's super popular right now. Mr. On guard? Looks like Pearls doesn't know who he is. This year it's gonna be the, it's gonna be the Nickel Samurai versus the Jammin' Ninja at the box office. 
Damn a ninja? Who's that again? So who is this jammin' ninja again? He's a hero, duh! His symbol is the bright red guitar he's always carrying. A ninja who's always carrying around a bright red guitar? How does that even work? With a scarf around his neck and a guitar in hand, he rises to stardom in an ancient time. Oh, look at all the little animals. A ninja who becomes a star. Yeah! A ninja becomes a star. There's a strong rivalry between the two of them. Global Studios' Nickel Samurai and Worldwide Studios' Jammin' Ninja. They even air at the same time. You know what I heard? I heard those two don't get along at all. The Nickel Samurai's on guard and the guy who plays the Jammin' Ninja, I mean. The Nickel Samurai speaks French? Oh, you mean... Matt on guard, the actor. I guess even the world of heroes is in a sparkling happy place. Yeah. Interesting. I'm a lawyer. <laughs> oh, I really owe you one. If it wasn't for you guys, I don't know what would have happened. What you did, it was a real tight spot I was in, and you fought so hard to get me out. I don't care what happens, I'll never forget everything you've done for me. The awards ceremony was just held on that stage. It was really fabulous. <laughs> you just reminded me of the circus for a second. Well, shows like that are guaranteed to be good, you know? What can I say? This is a really high-class hotel. I've never eaten this kind of salad before. Poor Pearls. Having eaten only vegetables all her life, she's been missing out. Don't worry. Any leftovers belong in my happily awaiting stomach anyway. Oh my god, Phoenix. You're such a glutton, Maya. That's so mean. Uh, I lose this one to Maya. You sure can eat. Oh my god. Well, a growing girl needs her nutrients. A growing girl? Exactly how big do you plan on getting? Jesus, Phoenix. Oh my god. <laughs> Stop it. Pearl is going to be so excited when she discovers chocolate. <laughs> This sure is one luxurious hotel, almost to the point of gaudy with how it blends together. Everything fancy imaginable. Where are burgers from my <laughs> Speaking of fancy, didn't that bellboy give me something like that last year? There's a grand set of doors over there. And behind those doors is an equally grand lobby. Shall we go and take a look, Mr. Nick? Hey, wait up! This grand dessert is calling to me. It's saying, eat me now. <laughs> the hamburger monster has to be satiated. <laughs> wow, what is with this place? Looks like I stumbled into Oz or something. Way in the back, there's a sign for the bathroom. Maybe I should visit it while I can before the show starts? There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Juan Carita's room. Juan Carita? His name sounds like a star name. I've heard it before, but I don't know anything about him at all. I can understand flowers in front of dressing rooms, but what are the stuffed bears doing here? Could it be that there's an action star with a soft spot for teddy bears? Nah, it can't be. <laughs> Compared to the flowers on the other side of the hall, these are much more gorgeous. <laughs> Let's see, record companies, fan clubs, company workers, family. Carrying all these flowers home would be hard, I think. I bet she has a hamburger costume for special occasions. <laughs> there are toilets in each room in this hotel, but since all sorts of events happen, uh, events are held here, there are bathrooms for people who aren't staying here to use as well. Perfect for people like me who can't afford to stay up here in this place, in the first place. Oh my gosh, I cannot speak today. To Mr. On Guard from the Global Studio staff. Ah. It'd be nice if Laura's got flowers too. Something like, To Mr. Wright from all your grateful clients. <laughs> There's a piece of paper taped to the door that says Matt On Guard's room. Matt On Guard. I've heard that name before. It's almost like we were just talking about him five seconds ago. Oh yeah. 
Maya's always yammering about him like the obsessed fan she is. Maya's a fan of everyone. It's just who she is. Um. Okay. Sounds like the post-ceremony show is about to start. Alright, I'm so pumped. I wonder if he's gonna show off his special move today. Nickerai Samurai S Nickerai? Nickel Samurai Smelting. I just combined Nickel and Samurai. Uh, actually, what I'm interested in most is the press conference. You mean the big confession the Nickel Samurai is gonna make after the show? So what is it? Don't you know what it's about, Mr. Powers? Oh, well, I'm not the Steel Samurai anymore, so I don't have any idea. Bah! Sorry. Ah, uh, so I guess you're all about to go- you all- you all- you are all going to the press conference then? Yeah, of course. If that's the case, then here, take these tickets so you can get in. Press conference ticket, I could add it to the court record. Seems like the Nickel Samurai is gonna confess something after the post-ceremony stage show. Thank you very much. Well, let's go into the lobby. It looks like it's over this way, Mr. Nick. Okay, for great justice! Go, hotel lobby. March 20th, Gatewater Hotel, hotel lobby. Hmm, only a really gaudy hotel would have such a large gaudy lobby to match. I think they're gonna have the post-ceremony show over there. Come she was Grimace and then Phoenix as Ronald <laughs> They're using a compact stage, I see. Ooh, I'm all ready to use my special samurai power. Maya looks like she's ready to start a fight. Your attention, please. Your attention, please. The Nickel Samurai's post-ceremony stage show will not be held tonight due to unforeseen circumstances. What? Why? Ow, you didn't have to pinch me. Pinch yourself if you don't believe it. We are asking for everyone's cooperation at this time. So please stay where you are. This is a special request from the police. <gasps> Uh-oh. Police? Did they just say the police? Do, do you want me to go check out what's going on? Um, wait, I'll come with you. Freeze! You two, didn't you hear the announcement just now? It just finished telling you not to move. But that voice. Uh-oh. I've heard that voice somewhere before. Oh. Honestly, youths these days can't be bothered to listen to other people when they talk. Just the other day, it was the same thing. There was a, It said, beware, bridge out, and along comes a punk kid to the bridge. I tried to tell the boy the bridge was out, and listen, no, of course not. He said he'd be careful, and bridge the out part where that was dangerous. I'm not kidding you here. The kid said that and really meant it. Well, I really let him have it, and knocked him clear off the bridge. Honestly, the kids these days don't know what right from wrong, I tell you. Miss Nonstop Chatter. It, it, it can't be. Miss Old Bag. <laughs> oh, God. What is it to you, young whippersnappers? Do I know you? Wait, you. Your powers, aren't you? Oh, my God. Not her. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> yeah, um, it's about what happened back then. You didn't expect to get nominated this year, did you? Well, that's right, you're doing that children's exercise program, trying to play nice. Oh yeah, that's me. Thankfully, I still have a job. I love that show, and you're a hoot. You're the big brother character, right? Yes, even with your face covered by a mask, I know you. are Giant rabbit, what a work of art, you know how it is. I mean, if you didn't wear the mask, who knows how many TVs you'd break. Really, it's a shame those kids exercising around you, they're getting what they deserve. This is what I thought you shouldn't be anywhere. <gasps> Not old bag. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> Not her. I can't take it. Um, what are you doing here? Look at my uniform and tell me you can't tell I'm a member of security. Oh jeez. But that outfit. Annoying nosy brats. Get the blaster. <laughs> Oh gosh, not her. <laughs> Wendy Old Bag. Miss Old Bag, what are you doing here? What happened to your position at Global Studios? Oh, that place. Well, since that incident, they're letting people go. When they cut the security team, I got the pink slip. What incident? What did you do? Murdered? I didn't do anything, you youngin. Don't you remember that incident a year ago? When this lady got on the witness stand and testified? Yeah. 
And you. Weren't you the one who was bullying me, this fragile girl at heart? Uh, my plead the fifth. Uh, you know, I think maybe I rubbed the upper management the wrong way by testifying. Yes, that has to be it. Everything is all your fault. Me? I thought about being a bodyguard at first after being handed old Pinky. You have a bodyguard? Or your friend? That fiery, good-looking guy with the red jacket and the ruffles. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Edgeworth? But... That sort of arrangement would be entirely too troublesome for me. That's what he said to me. What did I ever do to deserve that? <laughs> um, so did something happen? I don't have all the details, but it looks like another one of those incidents happened again. Uh, incident? Like a murder kind of incident? Maybe, you see, I'm a bit of a devilish woman. So wherever I go, showers of blood are sure to follow. But she didn't know that. Um, then shouldn't you quit being a security guard, at least for other people's sake? Silence, whippersnapper. Right. Hey, Nick. W what is it? I don't like that devilish smile playing on your lips. Let's make like we're gonna go to the bathroom and check things out. N no way. The police told us not to go anywhere, remember? Huh? How... Boring. You're such a boring guy. You got no motivation, no spirit. Huh, what? What's going on? Are you giving Mystic Maya trouble again, Mr. Nick? Not you two pearls. Please don't stick your little nose into this one. So listen to this, Pearly. This one time at lawyer camp, Nick. Okay, I get it. Let's go take a look. No, please. Please, I want her to finish the story. Uh, please. <laughs> I want to know. Yay! I knew you couldn't say no to me, Nick. That's right. You'd walk over miles of hot coals for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you, Mr. Nick? That would be every time we work on a case together. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go already. You can come along too, Pearly. Goody! I get to come, I get to come. <laughs> Alright. I... <laughs> There's nothing really out of the ordinary here. Are you looking for the incident that the old lady was talking about? Doesn't look like it happened here. Well, we better go look elsewhere. Alright then. Then let's try... Excuse me. Look! Oh. Hello? Oh my god. <laughs> Are you by chance Miss Maya Fey? Um, yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah, Pearl, you gotta see the brutal murder scene. Consider it like a visit to the amusement park. You have a phone call waiting for you at the front desk. A call? I wonder if it's someone from Karine Village. What's wrong, Mystic Maya? Oh, nothing. You guys go on ahead and I'll be right there, okay? Okay. Right this way, Miss Faye. Ooh. Let's go look somewhere else now, Mr. Nick. Yeah, okay. This is a little exciting and a little scary. Hmm. I told you, I get people the info they want, which means that I've got a right to know. Nope, don't care who you are. Oh, okay. Nope, don't care who you are, pal. We're still investigating, so you can't go in. Oh, okay. What's your problem? Just you wait. It'll be all over the morning paper. Okay, I figured out. Scruffy detective secret scandal revealed. You'll see. I'll get you back. Those two sound pretty serious. That southern accent can only mean... Hey, right. It's like a gathering of everyone in this. It's like, let's bring back all these old familiar faces. <laughs> yeah, they're bringing back everyone. <laughs> Hey, Lada. Come on, do a gal a favor and tell this cop I'm just doing my job and I've got rights. Ha! Huh, you! Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Hey, pal, help a guy out. Tell her that only the police are allowed here. This is the scene of a murder, so she should leave this to us pros. Um, a murder? Ah, shoot, me and my big mouth. 
See, I knew it. My gut instinct told me so. I always trust my gut. A murder, it said, and that's what it is. A genuine murder. Uh, hey, wait. Yeehaw! A murder. Of a big star, no less. Oh, man. I'm in trouble now. Lot of comes you at the same scene. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Alright, what happened? So, Detective Gumshoe. A murder? Ah, no. That's not it. I got my facts mixed up for a second there, pal. Um, Mr. Nick? Is the dead person the Nickel Samurai? <laughs> She's so casual about it. Huh? Why do you ask? No, Mystic Maya was rooting for him, so... It wasn't the Nickel Samurai that got bumped. Actually, the Nickel Samurai is the one under suspicion of doing the bumping off. You've gotten better at switching between them, though. It's hard. It's hard. It takes a lot of focus. What? The guy that died was this hero named the Jammin' Ninja, pal. The Jammin' Ninja? Who's that? Um, the woman with the big puffy hair that looks like cotton candy. You mean Lotta? That woman... She was there that time too, right? That time? When Mystic Maya did that channeling and murdered that guy? <laughs> oh, that time. Well, Lada's a journalist, so that's why she was there. Journal is? Looks like she was hanging around here before the murder happened. Hanging around? Yeah, hiding in wait in front of the Jammin' Ninja's door, pal. But why would she... She wouldn't tell me, pal. Just said something about getting my big scoop. Scoop? What sort of news could she be after? A murder? <laughs> Lada's the murderer. So the victim was the Jammin' Ninja. Mr. Jammin' Ninja? He was on a really popular rival TV show to the Nickel Samurai. Oh! The victim was the action star, Juan Carita. He's got a huge push and rode the express train to stardom. I mean, even I know who he was. Yeah, even I recognize his face. <laughs> Strange how Lada's been around at the time of three different murders. It's almost as if... It'd be crazy if Lada... <laughs> it turns out Lada was the real murderer all along in all of these cases. <laughs> but I've heard lately that my on god has been taking the wind out of his sail. I'm telling you, pal, as far as, who the, as who's popular, those two are hogging all the limelight. Guess there's no space for Mr. Powers at all, huh? Poor guy. Mr. On Guard? Um, that's the Nickel Samurai, right? Yep. I mean, no, you've got to say it with more oomph. The Nickel Samurai. Anyway, so now that Juan Carita's gone, that means Mr. On Guard has the whole stage to himself, what did you say? It'd actually be so cool if she was an accomplice of sorts to all three murders and it's a part of some great cons big conspiracy. <laughs> I want to bet on it, pal. We can't have that happen, you know? Can't have that happen? What's that supposed to mean, I wonder? Ooh. Okay. Bye. Hmm. All right, let's read about everyone. We got Will Powers, age 24, was the Steel Samurai. His face is a bit intimidating, so he's got hard luck in the showbiz. Security lady, yeah, pretty sure, a member of Hotel Security. I'm pretty sure her real name is Wendy Oldbag. Lotta Hart, claims to be an investigative photographer. Latest field, the seedy world of tabloids. Uh, Dick Gumshoe, age 31, detective at the local precinct in charge of the initial investigation. Juan Carita, age 21, the victim. A young star who played the Jammin' Ninja was on bad terms was on guard. Matt on guard, age 21. Popular young actor who plays the Nickel Samurai is rivals with the Jammin' Ninja. Interesting, interesting. Uh, tell me more about Juan. I'm not a real fan of action shows or anything. But I know who Juan Carita and Matt on guard are. You can talk about one without talking about the other. I, you can't talk about one without talking about the other one, I guess. They even debuted around the same time. So they, they have this real fiery rivalry with each other. Kind of like you and me, pal. Never knew he thought of me as a rival. Yeah, what about Matt? 
Nickel Samurai. He really took the Grand Prix tonight. Maya's a big fan of his. Really? Oh, I'm sorry then. Why are you sorry? Mad on God was just arrested, pal. On suspicion of murder in Juan Corita. What? Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? Gumshoe's idea of having a rival is incredibly flawed. Sorry, pal, but that's not something I can tell you. We just started the investigation, so we don't want any leaks. Looks like yet another Steel Samurai hero is in hot water. Um, Mr. Nick, if Mystic Maya knew about this... Yeah, I know. She'd make me take this case, I know. <laughs> Hmm. Hey, so what's going on, Mr. Wright? Looks like Juan Carita has been killed. W w what? Juan is- he's- They should just cancel this TV show completely at this point. <laughs> just stop with all the samurai stuff. Nothing turns out well for these poor actors. It looks like he was murdered and a suspect was arrested. That suspect is Mr. Matt on guard. You're joking, right? Nope, they arrested the Nickel Samurai on suspicion of murdering the Gemma Ninja. Oh, not again. <laughs> I feel sick. Again? About a year ago, something just like this happened, Pearls. Still can't believe. No way. No may way Matt would... What's Mr. Powers got in his hand? Oh, uh, before I forget, this, this is for you, Mr. Wright. I got this from the bellboy that came by earlier. Originally from the bellboy, it can transmit and receive signals over great distance. For me? But why? I don't know. All he said was it was for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney. Ugh. Matt is the most energetic and active actor out there right now. The Nickel Samurai really sealed his place as a pop idol, but... Kept adding fuel to the fire of his rivalry with Juan anyway. Mr. Juan, he's the jamming ninja, right? Those two would butt heads over everything they could think of. But I'd say that Matt was the one who almost always came out on top. Guess some people only know how to relate to others by butting heads like a ram. Juan said he'd take Matt on this time too, so he joined a rival TV show. And that was the jamming ninja? The stylish nickel samurai and the burnt and jammin' ninja. Well, things turn messy real fast with those two using their shows for their war. And the final tally? Look around. It's pretty obvious how things ended up. Matt even won the Grand Prix this year. Final win over his rival, I guess. Mm. Mr. Ongard was gonna hold a press conference, wasn't he? That's what I heard. Even if you wanted to get technical about it, it was the nickel... Though, if you wanted to get technical about it, it was the Nickel Samurai's conference. The Nickel Samurai's? Yeah, he was supposed to wear his costume and give the press conference that way. He's gonna be in costume? But why? I'm not sure. They don't keep me in the loop anymore. Um, I was just wondering. Where's Mystic Maya? She's been gone a long time. Now that she mentions it, Maya's only going to answer a phone call. Maybe she got lost? I'll take a quick look around for her. Oh. Ugh! What is it, Mr. Nick? Huh? I I'm not sure. It's coming from this transceiver. Yes? Hello? Right here. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright? The attorney? And you are? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with, such as... Uh-oh! What? Help! Nick! Mystic Maya! Maya? So, Mr. Wright, wouldn't you agree that the more important issue is the fate of this girl? What? Her fate? Does he mean what I think he means? Maya, where are you? Are you hurt? Come now. Don't fall apart on me yet. This... No, this can't be. Now that I have your attention, Mr. Attorney. 
I have a modest proposal for you. If you do what I require, then I will return to you your valuable item unharmed. What is this called again in your fancy lawyer terms? Kidnapping for ransom. Oh my god. He just turned colorblind. Yes, that's it. This is a kidnapping. <gasps> Mystic Maya! Mystic Maya! What? My sight. Everything's fading away. Maya. Maya. Maya's been kidnapped. Are you there? Mr. Attorney, are you there? How much? How much do you want? Very good, Mr. Attorney. I'm glad you have such a good grasp of the situation. Hurry up and state your condition, and then return Maya. Money is not what I seek. I gotta go have a nice dream. Thanks for showing up. Bye. Thank you very much for being here. Bye. What? What I want is a certain verdict. I would like a complete acquittal. Complete acquittal? What in the world have you done to me? I am not the person you will be representing. What? You are currently at the Gatewater Hotel, are you not? And I know that a murder has just taken place there. Juan Carita was killed and a suspect is met on guard. You are, as expected, quite on top of things, Mr. Attorney. Now then, what I want is very simple. I want you to obtain a complete acquittal for Matt on guard. M Matt on guard? But why? He did not kill anyone. I can attest to that. However... However? However what? However, someone is framing him for the murder. A very smart someone who is setting him up to take the fall. I agree and do what he wants. Can I believe he'll keep his end of the bargain? You are, of course, at liberty to take me at my word or not. However, there's one thing you can take as fact. Right now, your very precious item is with me in my possession. <laughs> Help! Nick! Maya! You have two days. Of course, tonight, he'll be in questioning with the police. But the trial is in two days. At that trial, you will win a not guilty verdict. Remember, you only have one chance. One chance, Mr. Attorney. One? You expect me to get a not guilty in one trial day? Yes, exactly. I don't believe I was wrong in choosing you, so don't let me down. Ugh! Oh, yes, that's right. Now that I am playing the role of the kidnapper, I can't pass up this chance to say, and don't even think about calling the cops. Hmm, not great, but you get the idea. D damn it! Who, who the hell are you? Very well, I'll tell you that much. My name is... The Killer. <gasps> Gasp. <sighs> uh. Mr. Nick, where is Miss Maya? She's been kidnapped. No, it's all my fault. Only I had gone with Miss Maya. It's not your fault, Pearls. But it is, it is. Miss Maya. <laughs> Mr. Wright, I, I think we I think we should tell the police what's going on. No, we can't do that. If we do, who knows what'll happen to Maya. Mr. Nick, what about the detective we saw earlier? Detective Gumshoe. Yeah, that's it. Wait here and I'll be right back. Alright, I'll take care of Pearl while you're away. What? Ransom? Shh. That's so loud. The ransom is complete acquittal for Matt on guard. Wait, the deal is complete acquittal in exchange for Maya, you mean. Then this means Matt on guard is obviously the killer, pal, no doubt about it. But the guy said that Mr. on guard is innocent, and we always trust what kidnappers on phones say. You really believe what a kidnapper tells you, pal? I guess he has a point. If on guard really is innocent, then why are they kidnapping? And on top of everything else, there's all this evidence we keep finding. Huh? The forensic team's having a field day back there. Um, but it's strange. There's so much evidence that it feels like something's wrong. 
there's too much evidence. Is that possible? Actually, didn't the kidnapper say something about on guard being set up? Anyway, looks like you won't be leaving here tonight, pal. Just sit tight and cooperate with the investigation. Tomorrow you can start yours. Alright. Isn't there another way? You've also got to be careful about pushing the kidnapper the wrong way. You're right. Ooh, date, question mark, question mark, question mark, time, question mark, question mark, question mark, location, question mark, question mark, question mark. Ugh, ow, my head. Oh, she's in a wine cellar. Where am I? Where am I? I wonder if I'm still in that hotel? What happened to me? Nick, Pearly. Come on, you guys, this isn't funny anymore. Uh-oh. I see you have awoken. Oh, this guy. Oh, he's so scary. Ah! Who, who are you? Me? I am known as the killer. D -d the killer? You mean like an assassin? I'm too young to die. Don't worry. You are not my target. For now, anyway. Oh, I don't like this guy. Ah! Nick! Nick, where are you? Help me! Yes, that's right. Only one person can save you now, and that is Mr. Phoenix Wright. Huh? What? what? Nick? Nick's gonna save me? Calm down and be a good girl. Think of this as a business transaction. Ah. Uh. A business transaction? Wow, Maya, look at all this stuff you have on you. I am going to contact him now. I hope you cooperate and play your assigned role well. Nick, what's gonna happen to me? Nick, Pearly, sis. Ooh. Is this Mr. Phoenix Wright, the attorney? You don't need to know who I am. I think you have other things to be concerning yourself with, such as... Oh. Ugh. Good morning. Uh, morning, Pearls. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, come on. Let's hurry and go see Mr. On Guard. We have to wait a bit, Pearls. Visiting hours don't start until 9 a.m., so... I see. Ah, uh, Mystic Maya, if only, if only I had gone with you. Poor Pearls. She's been like this since last night. We managed to get home somehow yesterday evening. Thanks to Detective Gumshoe gently holding her by the hand and leading her here. Aww. By the looks of it, I don't think Pearls got any sleep at all last night. Mr. Nick? Mystic Maya, she's alright, right? Yeah, she's alright. Either way, I'm gonna save her. You could trust me on that. Please, please help her. I'm only about I'm only able to stay this calm and collected because Pearls is doing the crying for the both of us. Oh. Um, I have a thought. Huh? You're gonna represent Mr. On Guard, aren't you? Yeah, I don't really seem to have a choice. Um, but what if what if he what if he is the real murderer? What would you do then, Mr. Nick? Would you fight to get a not guilty for a murderer to save Mystic Maya? Pearls. Let's talk to Mr. On Guard first, okay? We can think all the we can think all the bad things we want, but it doesn't change a thing. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I I can't stop thinking about it. Pearls, you're really worried about Maya, aren't you? I I don't have anyone else left in this world. What do you mean? My family's all gone. Her family? My father. He left my mother in the village behind and went away. I'm sorry. And my mother, she did that thing all for me. Mystic Maya, she's like a sister to me. Hi, Matt. Hey. <laughs> Yo. She's all I have left in this world. Oof. Alright, let's go see. 
I'll leave the whimsicality for later. <laughs> wait, what's up? We couldn't wait for visiting hours to start, so Pearls and I came down here early. Did Maya get arrested again? No! She got kidnapped! <laughs> by the killer! <laughs> to visit one nickel samurai charged with the murder of the jammin' ninja. <laughs> wait, not good. Good morning. How are you today? I know this situation might be a little tough for you. Um, we're... Oh, sorry, dude. I already signed up. Excuse me? I already have life insurance. I signed up a long time ago because my job is, you know... Oh, no, 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 no. We're not insurance salespeople. Really? Dude, I really don't need that right now either. Fire extinguishers, I mean. This building isn't my house, so... Oh, that guy's cool. Yeah. He's pretty. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> I don't think he's pretty. No, no, no. We're not here to sell you fire extinguishers either. I'm a lawyer. My name is Phoenix Wright. A lawyer? No, <laughs> fair enough. <laughs> Yo! Look at this little wrist phone thing. That's awesome. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna call my manager, okay? Yo, that's so cool. I want one. <laughs> the Nickel Samurai sure is a strange person, isn't he? That's the future right there. <laughs> I think strange is an understatement. Sorry about that. You're just in time. Huh? You're a lawyer, dude, right? My manager's looking for a good one right now, so how about it? Mr. Nick? This is our chance. I have to make him let me take his case. I have to. Um, I'm a lawyer. Mr. On Guard, this is an attorney's badge. Dude, I'm sorry, but I don't have the free time to be looking at things like that. Huh? I'm much too busy with Nickel Samurai stuff right now. I don't have the time to take a lawyer's correspondence course. Why does he believe I'm a salesman? Insurance and extinguishers? Now this? I need to take your case, sir. Mr. Nick, what are you gonna do with that? Another samurai. <laughs> yeah. You should- Oh, Matt, you should see all the people involved in this case. <laughs> we got Will Powers, we got Wendy Oldbag, we got a lot of hearts, we got everyone. They're all coming in for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't- I don't know yet, but I figured I could at least show it to him. <laughs> Is that a transceiver? Hey, it looks like a real nice one, too. I got it as a present from someone. Hmm? Interesting. I've also been instructed to take your case. Is that what you heard from the transceiver? Yes. Dude, that's terrible. Don't let some disembodied voice boss you around. <laughs> Do you gonna come back from the dead? This coming from a man with a cell phone on his wrist. The craziest thing. I mean, who- I'm like, that's ridiculous. No one would ever have a cell phone on their wrist. Sorry to intrude, but I would like to ask you a few personal questions. Um, that's okay, but dude, my autobiography's coming out soon, so... If I say stuff without the publisher's approval, then I'm gonna be in real hot water. Hold on a sec, I'm gonna ask my publisher, okay? Mr. Ongard's so lucky. He has so many people he can talk to. Um, I don't know if he can actually, if he actually has anyone he can really talk to. Sorry about that. Like I thought, the publisher said it'd be real bad if I said anything, dude. Does he have a mind of his own? Um, what's that? It's a ticket for the press conference. You're gonna give one after winning the Grand Prix, right? Huh? Me? Yes, while you were in costume, no less. Um, I never heard anything like that, dude. I only heard about the stage show. I always leave that kind of stuff to my manager. He didn't know? That's odd. Weird. Mr. On Guard, I would like to ask you about the murder. Oh, are you covering for this tablet as a side job, dude? Um, um, well, if you want my statement on this, you should ask through my staff. 
No, no, no. I'm not asking on behalf of a tabloid. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna ask the president of the studio, okay? You all right, Mr. Nick? We're talking about Mr. Ongard's brain here. I wouldn't put my money on it. Sorry about that. The studio president said, Even Neo Mount Fuji itself knows that I'm not the murderer. Um, Mr. Nick, what's Neo Mount Fuji? It's a mountain in the city of Neo Old Tokyo, the city that Nickel Samurai protects. Well, dude, I think it's about time for me to get going. Please wait. I really need to take your case. There's always other people in need of a lawyer, right? Want me to introduce you to a few? Please, please let Mr. Nick represent you. Man, oh man. Lawyer these, lawyers these days. Now you dudes use kids to pull in clients too? If you don't take me as your lawyer, then the killer is gonna... Wait, what did you just say? The killer? The killer? What's he doing? He looks like he's mulling something over. Alright, dude. I accept your terms. Huh? I'll let you represent me in court. We did it! We did it, Mr. Nick. Uh, yeah. I don't feel any better for it, and he doesn't look too happy to help either. I mean, too happy either. Go ahead. Ask me anything. I'll help you out as much as I can. Great. Man. I thank my lucky stars that people know my name. Well, you're quite the hero, and you're in the national spotlight. I didn't know who he is. Does that mean I'm not a good citizen? <laughs> it's really great to be the Nickel Samurai. Dude, lately I just keep on getting more and more popular. Sure enough, the Nickel Samurai is very popular among high schoolers and secretaries right now. I guess Mr. On Guard has a way of catching the eyes of women. Yeah, he does. I mean, what? <laughs> Do you know my motto? Refreshing like a spring breeze. That's what I am. A spring breeze? That's why this kind of scandal is disastrous, dude. I mean, even if I get out of here tomorrow, it's still gonna look bad. But everyone loves a good scandal. <laughs> Can you tell me about your activities last night? After I got the award, I took a break and went back to my room. I had that post-ceremony stage show to do. So I was in my Nickel Samurai costume. And you were alone the entire time? My manager was running around being busy, so... Yeah. Because of the press conference you were supposed to hold after the show? I told you, dude. I have no idea about any press conference, alright? Strange. I thought the Nickel Samurai was gonna confess something. Is hating Pearl a thing in the community or is it just here? It's 100% just here. <laughs> just you guys. Just you guys. I love Pearl. <laughs> anyway, that was when when I was leaving my room. That's when I noticed it was kind of nosy. We must spread the word. <laughs> nosy. <laughs> Mr. Karina was already dead at that time. Yeah, that's what I gathered anyway from my manager. I'm beginning to gather that this guy can't do a thing on his own. And that's when the detective in the green coat showed up. He searched me and then, out of the blue, the dude arrested me. Mm. About you and the victim, Mr. Juan Carrito, what sort of... That's got nothing to do with anything, dude. Man, with that face of his, you can't even tell he's the same age as me. <laughs> Pearl is literally the main villain of this franchise. Everyone knows she's a serial killer prodigy. You leave my Pearl alone. And he wanted to try to make a Jammin' Ninja movie, even though we'd all know it'd fail. The Nickel Samurai, Samurai still won in the end, right? Yeah, I took the Grand Prix by storm. So why would I, the winner, have any reason to kill the guy anyway? I love kids, bro. They're adorable. <laughs> Pearl, though. <laughs> Dude, you think it'd be the other way around, you know? Um, do you know why you were arrested? I guess maybe my full body search went badly? Did they find something on you? They found a button from the Jamma Ninja's costume. A button? I don't get it either. It was caught in my ple in, in the pleats of my samurai pants or hakama. Ah! Dude, I really think someone planted it here th there though. I'm serious. I wonder if that's what really happened. I guess this is about all I'm gonna get out of him. Mr. Nick? Yeah? Let's ask one last thing. Let's test Mr. On Guard to see if he really is innocent or not. We can do that? 
Yeah. If you use this... Maya's Magatama. He won't be able to hide any secrets from you, Mr. Nick. I'm sure of it. I get it. Mr. On Guard, I'd like to ask you one more question. Please answer me honestly. What is it, dude? Did you kill Mr. Juan Carita? <laughs> Did I kill Mr. Juan Carita? Please put the phone away and answer this question yourself. Alright, just so we're clear, dude. Ooh, I didn't kill anyone, and that includes Juan Carita, okay? No locks. Wait, Juan Carita, yes. Well, Mr. Nick? Nothing. Not a chain or lock in sight. He's telling the truth. Wasn't he in the previous chapter? Mm, nope. Nah. This is him. He's new. Which means, it's alright to trust him. Yeah, it does appear that way. Well, at least I can breathe a sigh of relief, knowing my client is innocent. I swear I've seen him before. Mm. Must be going insane. Maybe just in your dreams. Um, the trial's tomorrow, right? I'm counting on you, dude. <coughs> <coughs> Let's do this. Well, at least we were able to get Mr. Matt on guard as our client. And we know he didn't do it, which is very important. So, so now what should we do? Well, the trial's tomorrow and we only get this one chance. There's only one way to prove Mr. On Guard's innocence. We have to find the real killer. Okay, then let's start looking. Okay. Oh god. Hey, what do you think you're doing? You can't come in without- Good morning. Hold on, it's you. What is going on around here? Um, I heard poor Juan was killed. Is that true? Is that a... It's a bad rerun is what this is. Another stale samurai doing the most evil of deeds. Um, you know, that's not entirely... I'll have you know that I was a huge fan of Juan's. Why, oh why do all these stars I'm interested in drop one by one like flies? It's always been that way ever since I was a little girl in elementary. The class hammer was fine until I turned back and then the clean star... Whoever in your name in the evil Uh, uh Why is she in costume? It's her security guard outfit. Um, actually, I wanted to ask you about the murder and what happened. <laughs> Don't push me, boy. Um, Mr. Nick? I, um, I couldn't hear everything she said because she was talking too fast. Uh, Miss Oldbag, could you please speak a little slower? Don't boss me around, you spiky-haired smarty pants. Why is she in costume? <laughs> I have no idea what you mean. That's her security guard outfit. <laughs> My dear Hammer died a year ago in that dreadful murder, and only recently did I finally find a star that makes this heart go bottom again. I don't know what to say. I ask you, why does every star I cheer for always end up kicking the bucket? Um... Alright, watch your words. No one's gonna get away with saying anything bad about my Juan. That is not a security guard outfit, and <laughs> she is not cosplaying. <laughs> but I haven't said anything. Well, I don't believe a word that woman says anyway. Huh? What woman? That irritating backwater girl with the afro and the horrible country accent. I mean, what is that manner of speaking supposed to be, and why does she never stop? Honestly, women these days, they don't know the meaning of the word modesty. When I was a young maiden, I was so beautiful, even the flowers of the fields blush. But besides the press flowers of red stars, I love poems, or... <sighs> Lada, yay! Pearls, are you thirsty? Um, a little. Okay, I'll go get you some juice or something. Thank you very much. Hey, are you paying attention, youngins, today? I'm guessing this old bag heard everything from Lada. I want to ask you about what happened around the time of the murder. I don't know anything about that. I was here getting ready. Getting ready for what? The show, of course. Well, and the press conference afterwards. It is her uniform. <laughs> Kill mysterious music for the magical press conference. Anyway, I don't know anything about the murder. I see. But 
But if you're talking about what I saw, that's different. I saw it very clearly. <gasps> what? I saw the most important moment of the night. What? The most important moment? You don't mean... Oh, so now you treat me with respect, you disrespectful child. When you speak to your elders, you really should be polite. Really kids these days. Please tell me, what did you see? Uh-oh. Oh my god. Oh my god. The murder last night was gruesome, wasn't it? But then, what murder isn't? Oh my god. Please don't stray onto another tangent, please. If you want to hear more, then show your respect and bring this lady a present. Okay. She's capable of secrets. <laughs> Apparently very heavy secrets that are locked very tightly. Looks like the investigation's still in full swing. The hotel staff and the police are running around like a bunch of headless chickens. I wonder if we can do any investigating of our own in this kind of atmosphere. Well, we gotta roll up the sleeves and try, I guess. Hey, you're here! Been waiting for you, Mr. Lawyer. Lotta. <laughs> Watch it be like I'm actually 90. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I have a bad feeling who the killer is. Who do you think the killer is? Hey, Mr. Cockfellow, that thief sh the thief showed his face. W what? Arrest him, put him on trial, find him guilty, give him the death penalty. What's wrong, Lotta? Are you feeling alright? Looked here and there and up and down the mountain, but it ain't here. So why don't you just hurry up and give it back to me, you creep? Um, what are you looking for? My camera. Camera. It's my lifeblood. I'm gonna die without my $700 camera. Your camera? Look, don't lots of people say the criminal always goes back to the scene of the crime? And looky looky, here you are. Yep, here I am, faced with a lot of trouble. Huh? So you lost your camera. Ooh, baby, don't you know what's where Kevin is a place on her. <laughs> So you lost your camera. It ain't no ordinary camera. You buy it in a store and it's $1,600 brand new. Oh, but didn't you just say you bought it for $700? I had a nice long talk with the guy at the store. About five hours, I reckon. The original Steel Samurai might be far-fetched, sure, but considering this is a major story with returning characters, imagine the shock if it turns out he did it. Also, he's obsessed, upset that they recasted him. He says it isn't important, but at the same time, he did confess it's important to show me the story. God, imagine if we get Will Powers off in that last game just for him to come back as a murderer. Yeah. That's crazy. I made this itty bit of scratch on it and the manager got all huffed up in the face. He gave me his talking to and was a real mean about it too. He done made me cry at that. My goat would never. So Matt, so far who do you think is the most attractive person here? Because obviously they're the killer. It always happens. The person you find most attractive is the killer. <laughs> My goat would never. He may have eaten that acrobat last time, but still. When did you lose your camera? Last night, after the murder happened. Must have been when I was busy running around looking into things. On guard and also... <laughs> That's when I lost sight of my dear darling expensive sweetie. <laughs> also his name. His first name is Matt. Oh my god, his name is Matt. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lotta, what did you capture with that expensive camera of yours? <laughs> I don't rightly know. I snapped a shot of anything that caught my eye. <laughs> so I don't remember. And besides, I couldn't get anything from my big scoop. I wonder if Lotta's missing camera is even connected to the murder. Lotta's camera, I did the court record. What happened? By, by the way, if it's Lotta, me go boom. <laughs> Lotta, please tell me what you know about what happened at the time of the murder. Well, from before the ceremony last night, I was hanging around here in this area. Yeah, actually, I was here until around the time Mr. On Guard was arrested. What were you doing here? You sure you went to school, city boy? Wherever a lot of heart goes, there's a story to be found. A big scoop to be had. A big scoop? 
I told you before, I'm going to be the best fat tabloid photographer the world's ever seen. Reckon course that means I'm always looking for that perfect shot. I wonder what scoop she was after this time. Although I was also on the lookout for the other stars that were here. So maybe I wasn't here the entire time. Lot, are you sure you, were, you weren't here the entire time? I don't think it'd be Lotta, but at the moment I'm struggling to think who it could be. I'm sure there's more people we haven't even met yet. So you could take a picture for your big scoop? Well, maybe I was, but that's what real journalists do. I'm hoping I'm safe because the defendant is the most attractive, so like... <laughs> I got some juicy inside info, so I thought to myself, why not get a picture for proof? What kind of story was it that you would hang around here? Uh oh. Oh, everyone's got secret. Actually, with my track record of falling in love, I'm not too sure. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, Mr. Lawyer. Can't be telling you that. Trade secret, you know? Not again. Why does everyone have to hide something to hide? We've been stopped, haven't we? Haha, <laughs> yeah. Take that, Mr. Lawyer. Glad someone around here is happy, Miss Lotta, and your eye rule smile. <laughs> Um, where are we? We're in Mr. Matt on guard's dressing room. This is our client's room. May I help you with something? Oh. <laughs> I reckon she's gonna be a recurring character throughout them all and make sense character-wise. Yeah. Um, uh, we're... You're Mr. On guard's lawyers, correct? I gathered as much. I also look for lawyers on my end, but to no avail. <laughs> Guys, guys, guys. <laughs> um, how did you know I'm his lawyer? You were just saying that he is your client. In a situation like this, the only person who would use such a word would be his lawyer. Wow. It's a simple deduction, really. The trial is tomorrow, and Miss last chapter was a scam. <laughs> The trial is tomorrow, and Mr. On Guard's situation is looking rather grim. So you came here, one stop in your mad dash, to find clues to build his case, correct? Well, you're not totally right, but you're not totally off either. It's really not the time to be showing off, Mr. Nick. By the way, who did it last time? It was Acro, the acrobat. I am Adrian Andrews. I hate to waste time, so let's get down to business. All right. She may be of small stature, but appearances can be deceiving. I assume the first thing you need to know is what everyone is doing that night, correct? Yes, that's correct. Then I will tell you. Before the awards ceremony, I had dinner with Mr. On Guard. In this very room, I might add. Dinner? What did you eat? I told you, I hate to waste time with tri trifling details. Check your age! She's not there yet. She, she doesn't exist right now. If you take a look at the table yourself, you wouldn't need to ask me. No way, she's under 36. But she was a lot of fun at parties. When the awards show was starting, she is a manager, so. When the awards show was starting, I headed for Viola Hall. And after the show ended, you came back to this room? No, I had some small errands to run. I helped with the preparations in the lobby. Too logical character not to not be old. <laughs> uh oh, preparations for the post ceremony show, I guess. When it was time for the post ceremony show, I came back to call for Mr. On Guard. After that, I went to visit Mr. Karita. And that's when you found his body, isn't it? I respect the caution. You really held strong through everything. Yeah, she does seem to be mentally tough as males. Um, so, about you and- Stop right there. You aren't seriously about to ask how Mr. On Guy- Mr. On Guard and I are related, are you? Sorry. I have no idea how he could choose you as his lawyer. Why does she have to go and do something like- say something like that? Mr. Nick, calm down and hang in there. I'll give you a shoulder rub to relieve your stress later, alright? I already gave you my name earlier, but I'll add that I'm Mr. On Guard's manager. His manager? Speaking of managers, did the victim, Mr. Karita, have one? No, he did not. He didn't? 
Global Studios has a very different policy from Worldwide Studios in that Worldwide Studios does not assign individual managers to their stars. I see. This industry is very ruthless and unforgiving. Actually, you look quite ruthless and unforgiving yourself to your poor partner. Dragging a little girl like her to places like this, honestly. You're wrong! I, I'm doing this to help Mystic Maya! Pearls, calm down and hang in there. I'll buy you a juice later, alright? Why is he trying to buy your juice? Ugh. There we go. Adrian Andrews, age 23. On guards manager, an intelligent woman who seems to have it all together. Looks like dishes left over from dinner, a dinner for two at least. I'm sure they're Mr. On Guards and Miss Andrews plates. Looks like they had T-bone steaks. What's with Global Studios and T-bone steaks? There's some samurai looking clothes on the sofa here. Um, I think that jacket looking thing is called a ha happy. Happy, happy? I don't know. Whatever it is, I'm sure something like that would make a great souvenir. I would be absolutely thrilled. That's the bedroom over there. That's a bed? Imagine. <laughs> wow, they have really big beds here. Okay, Pearl. It's probably Mr. On Guard's suitcase. <laughs> for someone who was only going to be here for the award show, this is a lot of stuff. Looks like he has about three days <coughs> worth of clothes in here. These guys really are different from us, aren't they? Alright, uh, see you later, later Miss Andrews. Alright, let's go to Karita's room. Oh my gosh! <laughs> There's so many bears! What the heck? Mr. Nick, where are we? We're in Mr. Juan Karita's room, Pearl. Mr. Karita? What a very cool room. <laughs> The victim, which makes this the crime scene, too. Oh, it's you. So, what happened? The kidnapper. Has he contacted you again? Not yet. He probably won't until you win Mr. On Guard's acquittal. I read about the last chapter, by the way. That ending is heartbreaking. It is, it is. It's very, it was very sad. Um, you doing okay, pal? Hanging in there? Just want Maya to be alright. We don't have a lot of time left, but I'm gonna help you as much as I can, pal. Can you do that? Even if we want to look around the crime scene? Just this once. Special circumstances, right, pal? I'll even tell you everything I know, but you gotta keep quiet. It's my neck on the line here. Thank you. Oh, that's right. I got you guys a map of the hotel, pal. Here you go, little missy. Wow, you're giving it to me? Thank you. <laughs> Wouldn't want you to get lost in a hotel too big for its own good. Mr. Nick, I got a map. That's great, Pearls. Um, but Mr. Nick, I can't read what it says. Don't call me cringe. Being nice is the bear. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gumshoe. How you doing? Do you know what the cause of what what was what was the cause of death? Well, technically, the final autopsy report isn't out yet, but one look at the victim should tell you, pal. It should? Yeah, here's a picture. When being a comedian, sticking to the theme is one of the bare necessities. <laughs> oh my god. There's a knife in his chest. Yeah, pal, that's the murder weapon. So he was stabbed to death. And looking at the fingerprints down at the lab right now. There were fingerprints on the knife? Yup. And it looks like they're pretty sure they're Mr. On God's prints, pal. That's bad. Real bad. Court photo added to the court record. Why was Mr. On Guard arrested? <laughs> I'm about to become a murderer. Don't do it. I'm not sure you can bear the kill. <laughs> because we had evidence on him. Because we had evidence on him. Evidence? Looks like the victim, Juan Corita, really put up a big fight. Yeah, one look at the crime scene and you can tell. There's signs of a struggle everywhere. Well, yeah, during the fight his button came off. 
Mr. Ongard said something about a button. Something like, one of the Jammin' Ninja's buttons got caught in his Akama. But that's not all. What? It was a witness, pal. A witness? Who was it? That lady, Miss Oldbag. Please, anyone but her. The prosecution has plenty of evidence to make a solid case. Not to mention there's something around where the Vic was that's a little off. Something that's a little off? As in, as in that's for you to figure out, pal. Alright, let's try to figure it out, Mr. Nick. Alright. Wow, there are a lot of beers. Alarm clock ones, collector's edition, stuffed teddies, plastic models. It's pretty overwhelming. Is there a kind of bear he doesn't have? There's even a few in the trash can. Yeah, I get the feeling maybe the guy didn't really like bears. <laughs> Poor teddies. Oh god, it's hard to bear with all these problems. Growl. <laughs> no, not this guy. <laughs> We're over this case. We're over this case. <laughs> I don't think I want to bear with the trauma the last case caused me. Oh my god. <laughs> What's wrong, Mr. Nick? That's my goat. <laughs> oh, jeez. Hmm, it's so messy here. Pearls really likes things neat and tidy, I take it. There are a lot of electronic things in here that I've never seen before. Hey, Mr. Nick, tell me what they are, pretty please. Okay, that over there is a watch. You wear it on your wrist. I know what a watch is. <laughs> <laughs> Should I say that's my bear? Oh my god. Oops, for a second there, I forgot I was talking with Pearls, not Maya. <laughs> okay. It's a beautiful wine glass, and there's tomato juice in it? Ew, tomato juice. Tomato juice? I don't really like it that much. You guys talk about tomato soup. <laughs> There's a bottle of it on the table over there. It's probably where this came from. But doesn't it seem weird? What seems weird? I mean, everything else is scattered all over the floor. She's right. The flower vase was broken and the makeup is strewn everywhere. Why is this glass the only thing that's still alright? Found next to the victim is filled with tomato tomato juice. No sign has been drank. Bottles of cosmo cosmetics are scattered all over the floor. This is probably where Mr. Karita fought his assailant. What are these bits of glass from? A flower vase, maybe? There are flowers on the floor, but I don't know what they are. You don't know much about flowers, do you, Mr. Nick? <laughs> Stupid idiot. And this is a guitar case, I guess. A little beat up, but still usable. That's strange. The, the, the guitar is not here. Maybe he forgot to bring it to the show? A Mystic Maya. She said the bright red guitar was the Jammin' Ninja's signature item. That's true. Huh? This guitar case is wet, but it's only wet on the top of the lid. Yeah, there's no water inside the case. This is water, isn't it? It's pee. Interesting. Um, 
So about this wine glass. Ah, so you noticed it, pal. The whole crime scene was a mess, but this glass was the only thing that was untouched. You noticed that too, Detective Gumshoe? No, actually, Miss Von Karma noticed it first. Yeah, Pearls noticed it before me too. Hey, wait a minute. So does that mean Miss Von, Miss, Miss, Miss Von Karma is here at the hotel? Yeah, she's around. Man, you're gonna be in so much trouble, pal. Especially if she catches you in here. Well, you can bet the instant I see her, I'll be running the 1,000 meter dash. Uh-oh. What's that beeping noise, Mr. Nick? Mm, I've heard this sound somewhere before. <laughs> yeah, it's Miss Von Karma. She's a robot. Huh? For some reason, whenever I hear that sound, she pops up out of nowhere and whips me. Come to think of it, that's exactly what happened the last time. So sorry, I gotta make myself scarce. Later, pal. Ow! <laughs> At last, you reveal your true nature, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Ugh, would it be too much to, to ask you? Would it be too much to ask for you to be nice to me for a change? So you're the type to steal information from pitifully hopeless detectives. That's very dishonorable of you. Ow. Hey, don't you dare run away, scruffy McTrenchcoat. Ah. Oh. I didn't think the detectives of this country could be this pitiful. Ah! Detective, come over here for a second. Oh my god! Yeah! Oh my god, I think she killed him. <laughs> I feel better knowing at least you were mad enough to face your punishment. He was so scared he just froze up on the spot. Thank you for the hydrate. Mr. Phoenix Wright, you, you have soiled my perfect prosecution record. I'll never forget that. This time, victory is mine. That smirk. Victory is yours? Is that all this means to you? What? <laughs> Come, Scruffy. This inv the investigation briefing is about to begin. Yes, sir. This isn't over yet. I swear on my family's honor. Ow, what's she throw at me now? What is this? Well, I guess this means I gotta get back to the precinct now, pal. If you ever need me, come down to the criminal affairs department, alright? And if you can, try not to let Miss Von Karma see you. Hmm. Mr. Nick, what's this piece of paper? Called an autograph. Autograph? The paper's got Mr. Karita's name written on it, so it's his autograph. I can't read it at all. To be honest, I've never seen writing that looks like this. Uh, it's a special way of writing called cursive. Look here, see how it says to my dearest Wendy in more normal letters here? This sloppy, unreadable writing? It's crazy and cruel to give this to someone. Hold on. Wendy, I've heard that name somewhere before. Oh boy. I have two. Um, I wanted to ask, um, her about, uh, oops, not that. About these people. <laughs> Miss Van Karma. Uh, about Matt and Juan. I asked to become Mr. Ongard's manager. He's a pleasure to manage with his nice disposition. Hmm, Mr. Ongard does seem like a rather weak-willed man, always doing what he's told. That looks like my handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> he's always saying my manager, right, Mr. Nick? Did you know the victim, Mr. Karita? Yes, I knew him. The world is such a small place, after all. Do you know about his rivalry with the Nickel Samurai? Honestly, they were like children when it came to that. Time and time again, those two competed with each other over the most trivial things. If either one of them wasn't so stubborn, then maybe no one would have needed to die. Ooh. She looks like someone, but I can't remember who. Mm -hmm. I've got a hunch that this woman knows more than she's letting on. 
She must know why Juan Corita was killed. Oops. Hmm. Oh, uh, Mr. Wright, how are you? Ah, Mr. Powers, have you been here the entire time? Yeah, people connected to the murder aren't allowed to go home, let alone leave. So you're saying you're the murderer? Can you tell me a little more about the Nickel Samurai TV show? Okay. <laughs> Alright. The Nickel Samurai is an action hero program aimed towards kids. It's the sequel to the Steel Samurai. I see. This time there are three samurai brothers. Aluminum Samurai, Tin Samurai, and of course, the Nickel Samurai. It's a love why in Neo Old Tokyo. I see. W wait. A love what? A love why? This girl, Sayo, works at the tea shop and all three guys fall for her at the same time. Uh, I guess that's the- I guess the Y shape is like the three brothers colliding over this one girl? Anyway, Sayo is actually the daughter of the evil Strawberry Clan's leader. Sounds like an unusual situation. Like Romeo and Juliet times three. Yeah. Strange thing is, this sort of forbidden love story is really big with the office ladies. Um... Yes, Pearl? What happens next? I want to know. That sounds so super cheated. Miss Sayo, does Miss Sayo fall in love? She does, doesn't she? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I'm gonna stop watching Kids Masterpiece Theater starting this week. Can't believe she's really considering it. Okay. So what's the Jam and Ninja TV show like? It started from a remake of an old movie, to tell you the truth. The Jam and Ninja, like the samurai shows, is geared towards kids. It's the story of a ninja who can't scale a wall, but became a big pop star anyway. Uh, what? He was a really lousy ninja, absolutely couldn't do any ninja things right at all. But boy, could he sing. With his trusty bright red guitar in hand, he took the ancient world by storm. A ninja with a bright red guitar? That sounds amazing. <laughs> it really does. And then, the final fight in front of his beloved Princess Misola. Jammin versus the ver Jammin versus the Miramachi Five. Suddenly, our brave hero catches a not so jammin cold the night before Battle Three. Oh, that's too bad for him. Yeah, but this kind of pop music based love story is something is something high school girls really like. Um, yes, Pearl. What happens next? I want to know. Jammin, the Jammin Ninja. Will he be able to sing? What about Princess Misola? Every Sunday at 8 a.m. I guess I'm a high school girl. Um, what show should I watch? Uh, I can't believe she's really considering it. Hmm. Um. He debuted around the same time as Matt and everything, you know. Really? It started out small. First it was singing contests and swimming competitions. Then it was bowling tournaments, and then it was who could throw the best New Year's party. Juan was always always trying to one-up Matt. But lately, those two were escalating to more and more dangerous things. I thought that no good would come of it at all, so I began to worry. Too bad Juan's story ended so soon. Matt's younger than me, but you can, pretend, you can practically see his star potential. His star potential? I got his autograph the other day. Feels kind of wrong now, doesn't it? I don't care what people say. Matt didn't kill Juan. I know he didn't. Hmm. Oh. Hey, that's Miss Andrews. She's Matt's manager. Actually, I was interested in her for a little bit. Just a little. Hmm, so Mr. Powers likes this type of woman. <laughs> Why are you taking note of that, Phoenix? What do you know about Miss Andrews? Well, see, uh, here's the thing. I don't really know her, know her, you know? There's sort of a small rumor going around about her right now. A rumor? Oh, if you're interested, I'd be glad to share what I know. He's so happy, he looks like a lion that's just found his next meal. Oh my god! <laughs> it's him! It's the lion! Would you mind telling me about this gossip? Unless you are interested in it, I figured you would be. Yeah, I have such a weakness for celebrity gossip too. 
Oh, really? You too, huh? Yeah, so take a look at this. Because he is this one. <laughs> Looks like a tabloid Miss Old Bag would read. Alright, let's see here. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars? Miss A.A. Y you see now, don't you? What? You can stop pretending to be in the dark, Mr. Wright. Juan Karina didn't have a manager of his own. Which means, if we're talking about a certain manager with the initials A.A. Adrian Andrews? Yes, exactly. This is big news. But it seems kind of odd, that woman, Miss Andrews. Together with the biggest rival of her client? Oh, it's that wonderful thing that can only happen between two people. Mr. Powers looks so happy. Pearls is just following along, not having any idea as to why he's smiling. Well, like the saying goes, one man's garbage is another man's treasure. Uh-oh, competition. Ace Attorney. <laughs> hmm, an article from the tabloid Gothic Land. Interesting. I wonder if we can uh, break Lotta's thing with that. Bow. She said she wanted to get a big scoop. Yeah. Lada, will you please answer my questions? On the night of the murder, why were you loitering, ar loitering around the victim's room? I told you, didn't I, for my scoop. What I want to know is the details of this scoop. That's not something I can tell you. I mean, that there, that there's my bread and butter. All right then, an unpleasant tabloid photographer looking for a scoop. I'm gonna say that you were looking into a scandal. <sighs> Could it be that you, Lotta Hart, were looking for a break with a huge story? Perhaps an unfolding scandal between Juan Carita and this person? Boom! Adrian Andrews. This woman. She's Adrian Andrews, Matt Ongard's manager. Oomph. The Nickel Samurai's manager caught secretly meeting with his rival, the Jammin' Ninja. It would be the hottest story of the season, wouldn't it? Got her. You're pretty good at this guessing thing, Mr. Lawyer. But you can't just make up any old thing and think it'll make the papers. You gotta have backup. Backup? Yeah, yeah, you gotta have that, that, what is it, news source? Um, you mean news source? That's it. Show me something that shows that one guy had something with Miss Andrews. Well, I just so happened to get this. This is the article from a certain weekly tabloid. Jammin' Midnight Rendezvous? To the mysterious yet beautiful manager to the stars, Miss A.A. Oh! Mr. Karita didn't have a manager of his own. What's more, his rival, Mr. Ongard's manager, Adrian Andrews, she has the initials A.A. You saw this article and then thought to take some pictures of them as proof. That's why you were looking around Mr. Karita's door last night. And then you murdered him. <laughs> Got her. Boom. You were looking into Mr. Karita and Miss Andrew's affair, weren't you? You got it. I was gonna get myself a scoop by catching him in a secret meeting. But there's already an article about it in one of the weekly tabloid magazines. It's no longer breaking news. What'd you just say? Her initials are AA? What kind of vague thing is that? That ain't no proof of nothing. People are gonna wanna see real proof. Well, at least I do, so that's what I was doing. Getting photos. Oh. I'm gonna whip up the reader's interest with some gossip and a little misleading. Then spice it up a little and have myself an exclusive story. Well, uh, nice journalistic integrity you got there. I already finished writing up my spicy article, you know. But, the paper I wrote it on. My note to myself, it's gone. Your note to yourself? It was inside the case of my $1,600 camera. They done run off together. I came here for my big story. Didn't come here to have my treasure disappear on me. Yeah, I understand. It's enough to make a gal go bonkers, I tell ya. What's with people now, anyway? I never thought I'd see the day when someone done steal something from me. You really want that note back, huh? Got no idea why, though. The story on that note is probably a bold-faced lie. Oh, let's go, uh, bring that thing in this old bag. Um... 
She said she wanted a present, right? <laughs> oh my god, I forgot that she had four things. <laughs> Oops. Oh uh, well, let's see how far we can get. Alright, I'll be honest with you for now. Then please, tell us what you saw. Oh, but ah, uh, what a waste. And here I have a perfectly good chance to have a little fun at you youngin's expense. I am a little devil after all. Um, doesn't that imply you aren't a good person? Alright, I'll give you what you want. Boom! This got your name on it and everything. Th th that's that Swan's autograph! Yes, it is. And, and it even says, To my dearest Wendy on it. Th th that's me, right? Right? Um... My name's Wendy Oldbag, so that Wendy has to be me, right? Well, it may say Wendy, but somehow I don't think Juan had this Wendy in mind when he signed it. Oh, please give it to me. Let me have it, please. Um, I can't let you have it just like that. Yes, yes, I know. And how about an exchange? Oh. Wow, she must really want this autograph. My offer isn't good enough for you? Fine, Mr. Wright, you win. Wendy Oldbag, ready to open up her heart all for my dearest Juan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a bit easier than I anticipated. Autograph given to Wendy, dearest. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what did you witness? I feel bad for you now. Huh? I tell you, I saw him that night. I saw him coming out of Juan's room. You're kidding. Oh no! It was about ten minutes before Juan's body was discovered. It was just a coincidence. I was on my way to the toilet, minding my own business. And did you tell that to the police? Well, of course. I thought I could get a gift certificate. Or two, maybe, out of it. Gift certificate? I've been recruited again for that part of the trial. You know the trial tomorrow. This time you're gonna get it. I'm gonna work hard to get your client pronounced guilty. But Mr. On Guard hasn't done anything bad. I don't care about details like that. I know he did my dear poor Juan and I just do that yellow bellied chicken. A yellow bellied chicken? I wonder that what that would look like. I trust my senses. I know when someone did something bad, and I say he did it. What did Mr. On Guard ever do to her to deserve this? What did Mr. On Guard do to you to make you so... You don't know? That guy, he framed my Juan. He created that scandal that plagued poor Juan. Mr. Nick. What is it? What's a scandal? Oh, um, I'll tell you about that after we get home, okay? <laughs> Poor Juan, led astray by the wiles of that vile temptress. Mr. Nick, what do vials and wild temptress mean? Ugh. Um, how about we just listen to what Miss Oldbag has to say for now, okay, bros? So, Miss Oldbag, who is this woman you're talking about? Adrian Andrews, of course. Who else? That guy, he shoved that girl onto Juan on purpose. His own manager? But why? I thought the lawyers were smart. It was the greatest scandal to make Juan lose face. That girl drove Juan into a scandal that dragged his reputation through the mud. Sounds like a pretty standard definition of a scandal to me. Why do you know about that anyway, Miss Holbag? I'm one of Juan's uh, biggest fans. I'm always out there gathering information. There's nothing I don't know. And do you have proof that Mr. On Guard did what you say he did? Next week's issue of a certain magazine says so. Ugh, of course, a tabloid. Next week? Doesn't that mean it's something people don't know about yet? Why would Miss Oldbag have information like that, and where did she get it? <laughs> interesting, interesting. Let's go to the Criminal Affairs Department. Let's go see Gumshoe. Protective Gumshoe said they had an investigation briefing. Yeah. Oh, he's back. Hey, so you came, pal. Why the blunt greeting? Um, because there's nothing to be friendly or happy about? What do you mean by that? Well, things look perfect this time around. The evidence and testimony are airtight. But, but we can't just roll over and die. We have to stay positive. Stay positive. 
So what do you mean the evidence is airtight? I can't give you all the details, pal, but there's two big pieces. Two? And both of them are in this photo. Mm -hmm. The first is the button that's missing from the victim's chest. Mm -hmm. That's the button that you found during your body search of Mr. On Guard. Yep. Found it in the folds of the Nickel Samurai Special Pants. <laughs> um, uh, and the second one is... The knife in his chest, pal. The fingerprints on the knife in his chest, to be exact. Fingerprints? Um, whose are they? You didn't even have to ask, little missy. It's obvious. They're mad on guards. Tomorrow's trial. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place. Oobly. So what about this airtight testimony? It's that old security lady, Miss Oldbag. I thought so. What do you mean you thought so? Did she tell you something, pal? Um, well, I even told her not to open that mouth of hers to blab to anyone. Her blab knob is stuck on ten and there's no turning it down, trust me. Yeah, well, Miss Oldbag saw it all, pal. She saw Mr. On Guard come out of the victim's room around the estimated time of death. No way. Easily. Um. We're pretty interested in this bit of gossip ourselves. The scandal with Mr. Karita, but why? Well, two years ago, a woman, oh Jesus, committed suicide. Oh. Suicide? Her name was Celeste Impax. And she was Juan Carita's manager. The victim's manager? But, um, Miss Andrews said he didn't have any manager. That's not all, pal. Miss Impax was Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. She taught Miss Andrews everything she knew about the business from square one. Her mentor? A woman who was both Mr. Carita's manager and Miss Andrews' mentor? Could her suicide have something to do with this case? You want to know more about her, pal? Yes, please. Please do tell. She was the victim's manager and was also Miss Adrian Andrews' mentor. Yeah, I think we established that. It's been two years since her suicide, and now these two are linked again by another death. Or maybe it's just a coincidence, but... What? Oh. <laughs> I'm getting sick of dealing with one foolish idiot after another. Miss Von Karma. You can't seem to stop allying yourself with the enemy, can you? You don't need a tra- I don't need a traitor in my midst. You don't- You don't mean- I do, Scruffy. You have 30 minutes to get out of here. You are no longer needed. Goodbye. But that's- what? wait please, wait, sir. I don't get this month's pay, I'll stop- Quiet. If it went for traitors like you- Oh. I would've won. Is that what you want to say? Who's that? Who's this? Who's this? Who? That voice. Oh, snap! Look who's here! <laughs> Edgeworth! Yo, he's back! He's back from the dead! Oh my god! He's a zombie! It's been a long time, right? Did this person... This is Mr. Edgeworth? What am I gonna do with you? Still blaming others when things go wrong. You haven't changed a bit, Francisca. Ooh. You. You. How dare you show your face to me without a shred of shame upon it. You soiled the Von Karma name, dragged it through the mud. You even ran away with your tail between your legs like the ill-bred dog you are. Are you talking about the Von Karma family creed? To be perfect in every way? Then let's hear it, Francisca. How are things going? I hear you are having a rough time maintaining perfection in this country. You! You seem to be getting quashed, quest, quest, crushed under the weight of it all. That's why I came back. Keep your assumptions to yourself. I, I haven't given yet in yet. I won't lose. This case is mine. I'll never hand it over to you. Never. Mr. Phoenix Wright, I will see you tomorrow. In court. It will be a clinical lesson of the meaning of total victory. Ugh. It's 
Still the same wild mare she always was. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> it's been a while, been a while. I thought you, the prosecutor Miles Edgeworth, had gone and died. Mr. Nick. I, I never wanted to see you again. I think that's enough of a warm welcome for someone you haven't seen in a year. Oh my god, these two. Are you gonna run tomorrow's trial? You heard her, right? That wild mare hasn't given it in yet, it seems. So, no, I don't think I'll be making an appearance. Your hatred for me is quite unhealthy. Not to mention one-sided. Oh my god, these two. <laughs> but I will say one thing. You can't win on your own at the trial tomorrow. What is that supposed to mean? I have something definitive that you lack. And working together is the definition of teamwork. It's the power to find the truth. The truth? In order to understand this case, you have to understand a certain truth. Well, if you ever feel the need for my assistance, it is available to you. I'm not in charge of this case, so I can be a bit more generous with information. Oh, they're so in love! <laughs> Just what is going on inside his head? <laughs> a lot of things may have happened, however, Manfred von Karma was still my mentor. And a perfect win record is proof of a Von Karma. One year ago, you could not establish guilt in a few cases. Are those losses the reason you suddenly disappeared from the prosecutor's office? Did you leave because you lost your perfect win record? To think your motivation for prosecuting trials was so selfish. It'd been better for everyone if you never came back from the dead, Edgeworth. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I see. Then let me ask you something. Why do you stand in the courtroom? What is your reason? Ooh. Well, with Franziska, she almost always says, I will defeat you this time, the instant she sees me. But the courtroom is not a personal battlefield for prosecutors and lawyers. I stand in the courtroom to defend my clients. To save their lives. To save your client, you say? Those who think only of their own ego-driven goals. Those kind of prosecutors are reprehensible to me. Even if you're a prodigy. Or someone like you, Edgeworth. Oh my god! <laughs> Looks like there is still a lot you have yet to learn. A lot I have yet to learn? Me? <laughs> well, that's enough for now. The time when you will see is coming soon enough. Okay. Um, let's ask you about some... Oh. Miles Edgeworth, age 25, a gifted prosecutor. He disappeared suddenly a year, one year ago. Let's ask about some people. Uh, okay, yeah. Adrian Andrews. She holds a large secret within herself. A secret? I can't help but feel this whole case revolves around her. Ooh. While I was abroad, those... The, these deplorable types of actors became popular, I take it. Well, refreshing like a spring breeze is his motto. Refreshing? But what is so refreshing about a spring breeze? Sounds like the pollen is not treating him well this year. <laughs> there is an interesting rumor about this man. You mean the one about Miss Andrews getting too close to him? But that's pretty common tabloid fare, isn't it? I don't take things at face value when there's more to be found. <laughs> this woman is involved is another key to solving this case D do you really think so she was adrian andrew's mentor a long time ago but she was suddenly called away by a different show and became juan carita's manager and then a few months later celeste impex died but, but her death was ruled a suicide right yes but there is still one riddle we've yet to solve. We've yet to solved. <laughs> a riddle? Her suicide note. It went missing. No one could find it. A suicide note that just vanished, huh? Weird. Miss Impax's death was most certainly a suicide. Of that there is no mistake. However, we could not find her suicide note. That's when the police began to suspect that someone had hidden it. The suicide note? 
but how do you know Miss Impax had even written such a note? There was no solid evidence. However, we did find traces of ink on her right index finger, which makes her the like which makes the likelihood of a suicide note very high. But who would hide such a thing? The police think it was Mr. Juan Carita himself. The the victim? Hmm. Oh, don't show this. That's sad. He was the one who found her body, which makes him the only person who had a chance to hide her suicide note. Mr. Carita hid his own manager's suicide note, but why? As long as her note is missing, any speculation beyond this is meaningless. For now, I think you should look this over. This is the suicide report, part one anyway. Part one? Deceased Celeste Impacts found by Juan Carita was her suicide note hidden. Came and look it over. Is there, is there, oh, is there a part two? I don't like looking to look through reports. I like suicide reports even less. Worst of all, are the reports that have multiple parts like that one. That has two. Two parts? What you just handed me is the first part of the report. Here is the second part. The second part of the report is about an attempted suicide. The attempter's name is Adrian Andrews. Ugh. Miss Andrews? Um, what did she do? She... she tried to kill herself? Yikes, this is dark. She doesn't even seem like the... No, oh, okay, don't say that, Phoenix. <laughs> you, you think she's a strong career woman. That's just what she wants you to think. Adrian Andrews, she has a certain secret she's always trying to hide. A secret? Her dependent nature. That's what she's really like on the inside. Miss Andrews dependent? Talk about the exact opposite of what that woman is. Mm. What's this about Miss Andrews having a dependent nature? Adrian Andrews' attempt at suicide was a few days after the death of Celeste and Pax. And... And why did Adrian Andrews think about committing suicide? Because she had apparently lost her will to live. Aww. Lost her will? But why would she... Aww. Her pillar of strength, her mentor, Celeste Impax, was gone forever. That's why. Why would that... Is that what they call following someone to the grave? After her attempted suicide, Adrian Andrews started attending counseling sessions. Oh. She is someone who needs a person needs a person in whom she can trust absolutely. And when she finds that person, she'll do anything to keep them near. Without such an anchor in her life, her crippling anxiety stifles her ability to live. And that's that's the nature of her dependency on others. When Celeste Impact suddenly committed suicide, the world before her turned pitch dark. That's according to Adrienne Andrews herself. Then, that means her super competent attitude. It's all a facade. It's all a facade. She's only copying her mentor's behavior to hold herself together. Terrible. No. That was sad. Andrews is here, but it looks like she's talking with someone. That's Franziska von Karma. Miss von Karma? What are you doing here? Um, well, you see, I'm his lawyer, so... You've got some nerve following me around. Following you? That's you, Miss von Karma. You're the one doing the following. Pearls. You're always following after that Mr. Detective with the little beard. Me? Following after Scruffy? Don't make me laugh. Let me show you something interesting, little girl. Oh. I knew it. She's a robot. What is that? An electromagnetic receiver. I planted a tracking device on that detective. <laughs> okay. And was this? I know that fools every move. So that noise we heard was this receiver. I feel really sorry for poor Detective Gumshoe now. Oh my god. 
Now then, let's stop wasting time. Adrian Andrews? Yes? Think hard about what we just discussed. Understood? Uh, all right. What were those two talking about? Miss Andrews, she seems a little dazed, doesn't she? Yeah. Do you have any ideas? As to? As to why Mr. Karita was murdered? Why would you ask me about such a thing? I'm just doing my job, so do you have any ideas? Ooh. Oh, jeez. Miss Andrews? Sorry, but there's nothing more I have to add to this conversation. Is it a psyche lock, Mr. Nick? It always is, Pearl. Yeah, that's getting to be more and more of these lately. Alright, alright. Let's break her. Why was Juan Carita murdered? If you ask me, I think you know the reason she he was killed. Hmm? Why are you hiding things? Don't you realize you're putting Mr. On Guard's life in danger by your actions? Why do you ask questions for which I have no answers? The truth is, I was not that close to Mr. Karita. That's a lie. <laughs> you were not that close? That's right. I've never been good at being intimate with another person. You're not good at being intimate with another person? Somehow, I highly doubt that. Mm. Boom. <sighs> liar, liar. You and Mr. Karita had an intimate relationship, did you not? A silly third-rate tabloid article. If you even had half your wits about you, you wouldn't believe such rubbish. Well, it seems quite a few people have already bought into this story. Oof. Must be expected in a world filled with crooks and liars. Note to self, stay on her good side. In any case, I despise interpersonal relationships like that. I see. However... What if there was a need for you to get close to someone? Me? Me to get close to Mr. Karita? As if there was ever such a need. Didn't you get close to Mr. Karita for this person's sake? Gotta be Celeste, right? Celeste Impax, your mentor. How do you know about Celeste? Ooh. Miss Impax, she committed suicide, didn't she? But it looks like no one knows why. Right before her death, she was Juan Carita's manager. So I believe you got close to Mr. Carita so you could find out more about her suicide. You have a great imagination. You may have a future yet as a slimy muckraker for a putrid third-rate tabloid. Miss Andrews? There was no mystery surrounding her death. None. It would be pointless for me to force myself into a relationship for nothing. Is that really true? Is there really no mystery at all? I don't believe you're completely at ease with the way her suicide was resolved. Yeah, I don't think so either. Take that! This impacts the suicide note was never found, was it? <laughs> Looks like the police were under the suspicion that someone had hidden it. Like maybe the person who discovered her body, Mr. Carita. Juan? And Miss Andrews, I believe you thought the same thing. That is why you became intimate with Mr. Corita. I've sat by quietly here, listened to your insulting ramblings long enough. It's true that Celeste was my mentor. However, allow me to say this again. It had nothing to do with me. I didn't even know that her suicide note was never found. I'm a person who doesn't care about what goes on in the lives of others. That's the impression you like to give, however. I don't think that's who you really are. What? I have evidence that says otherwise. This is proof that Celeste Impacts was someone very special to you. Miss Andrews, you you nearly went through it with it too, didn't you? Went through with what? Ending your life. Ooh. Miss Andrews, you look and act like a very strong woman who has it all together. You don't ask for anyone's help, relying only on yourself. Yes, I've been very independent ever since I can remember. However, that is all just a lie, a facade. You've always searched out people on whom you can depend on. The facts. You were dependent on Miss Impacts, weren't you? Which is why, when she passed away, you lost everything you had. 
<laughs> oh. And Celeste passed away so suddenly like that. Hello, I'm back. I died a death of my own, but no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop thinking about what had become of her note. You must have heard about the police report. The one that said the police suspected Mr. Carita of hiding Miss Impax's note. You heard about it and thought to recover it from him by getting close to him, am I right? If that's the case, then everything changes. What do you mean? What topic did we start this conversation on again? It was why was the victim killed. Exactly. Somehow, Miss Andrews, seems you have become the one with a reason to want Mr. Carita dead. Me? Miss Impax was everything to you. And then she died. And you would do anything to find out why she killed herself. Even commit murder. Murder? Yeah. Uh -oh. Got her? Question mark? It's true. I'm a woman who can only live in insecurity. I'm physically small, and I don't really have a lot of self-confidence. I pushed against all that, though. Tried to live strongly. I never wanted anyone to find out the truth. Miss Andrews. This one thing. It's the one thing I wanted to take with me to the grave. It was my secret. Mine and mine alone. I'm sorry. You probably think I'm a worthless human being right now, don't you? Please, Miss Andrews, all I want to know is the truth. After Celeste passed away, I heard that someone had hidden her suicide note. And that someone was Juan Perito. Celeste, without her, L plus a ratio <laughs> equals cat. Oh, hi, Keeper. Without her, I became scared. Everything, everyone seemed like they were out to get me. <laughs> So, you got close to Mr. Karita to recover her suicide note, correct? Looks like that tabloid reported the truth after all. Ironic, isn't it? Well, like they say, where there's smoke, there's fire. And if they purposely add fuel to the fire, they keep the celebrity world burning. But, as for the suicide note, I didn't and wouldn't kill anyone for it. It just doesn't suit me, that's all. Well, that's enough for now. I still have work to do, so I understand. Oh, I have one small favor to ask. My attempted suicide. I'd like for you to keep it a secret. Miss Andrews. If, if people found out about my weakness, I, I would sooner... Oh, jeez. Uh, all right, I understand. We'll keep it a secret. It gives her a motive, but it feels oddly too easy to have been her. Well, we only get one trial day, so... <laughs> She probably never says anything without carefully thinking it through first. Thank you for your discretion. Mr. Nick, can I ask you something? 
What is it? Miss Andrews has been playing with that card in her hand since a little while back. That card? Yeah, I guess she has. Miss Andrews, what is that card you're holding? Huh? Oh, oh this? I don't quite know. It just suddenly appeared in my handbag. Hmm. What is it? Looks like a seashell? That's what it looks like, doesn't it? I honestly don't remember owning this card. I wonder where I picked it up from. Her not remembering something clearly sounds like it would be a rare occurrence. Well, I must be off. I leave Mr. Ongard in your capable hands. Ugh. I just can't help but think it's someone we've already got to know from a previous story. That's crazy. Well, I think we've gathered about all we can. It's Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> What about Mystic Maya? Is she alright? Oh, Pearls. She looks so worn out by all this. She hasn't slept at all and she's been walking all over the place with me today. What's wrong, Mr. Nick? Let's go back to the office for a little while. You're really tired, right? Oh, no. I'm okay, really. I'm fine. I really am. You don't look fine to me. Alright, let's go to the office then. Hey, how's it going, Will? Hey, how's it going, old bag? Just don't mind me. Passing through. So, what now? Well, we did find out one thing for sure. Miss Andrews has a motive. You mean Miss Impax's suicide note? That's right. She was also the one to discover the victim's body. Clever. Oh. Ah, Mr. Nick, the transceiver! Hello? Right in Cole offices. Mr. Attorney. You're not answering a phone. M Maya, where's Maya? As I promised, I have not gone within a few feet of her this whole time. You. Which is why, I suppose, she is absolutely famished. W what? So I suggest you win a quick acquittal, my friend. At any cost. Wouldn't you agree? Wait, Maya! Let me hear her. Very well. Ask my... Maya, is that you? Sis. Ask my sis. Ugh. Maya. Maya. Damn it, you cut me off. Mystic Maya said, ask my sis, didn't she? Sis? What does she mean by that? Come on, Phoenix. You're a hopeless one. Um, so sorry. Ugh. Oh. <laughs> hey, Mia. You got here quick. <laughs> Mia. I have a message from Maya, so come, ask me anything you want about her. Where is she? <laughs> How's Maya? She's safe. For now. A kidnapper is one to keep his word, it seems. I'm glad to hear she's safe, but Mia, how did you know? As soon as she was locked up, Maya called for me. I read the note she left. Then I gathered as much information about her surroundings as I could. I didn't know you could use spirit channeling like that. Pretty smart of her. The kidnapper. The kidnapper! What's he like? I don't know. Apparently, Maya went to answer a phone call at the hotel and was drugged there. And? She didn't see the face of her attacker. Ugh. Maya's locked up in a very dark place right now. I'll tell you everything I heard when I was with her. When you were with her? Oh. Ugh, I'm starving. I could really go for some apple pie. I mean, at a time like this, sweets are the only way to go. I have to stay positive. He promised he wasn't gonna kill me. I'm not gonna die. Sis, I wonder if you're with Nick right now. Alright, Maya. So we have a guitar case and we got- <laughs> We got newspaper clippings. What's- what's this? It feels like there are a lot of glass bottles here. And these, they feel like barrels. I'll pass. Too bad I'm really hungry and not really thirsty. Hmm. Drag, it's locked. Hmm, but this door's lock seems easy enough to open. On TV, the hero always uses a plastic card or a stiff piece of cardboard. Then click, they magically open the door. I wonder if there's a card like that around here I could use. Oh, like this one on the floor? Huh? 
someone dropped a card here. Hmm. Looks like the card Miss Andrews has, doesn't it? Kind of looks like a business card, but there's no name on it. Hmm. It's a picture of a sheet of a of a sea cell, I think. What a strange card. Ah, that's it. The shell card. If I use this, maybe I can get the door open. This might be my key out of here. I had a feeling this card might be useful. I'm such a genius. <laughs> All right. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Kidnapper. I did it. Okay, now I'm getting the heck out of here. I shouldn't keep Nick waiting or worried. Hey, she's out. She did it. She's been freed. March 22nd, 9.47 a.m. District Court de Lobby, Defendant Lobby, number three. Adrian did it? That's what it looks like. Dude, no way. That woman couldn't do anything like that. In court today, there will be a mountain of evidence that will impl uh, implicate you. A mountain of evidence? I'm certain there's someone out there trying very hard to pin this whole thing on you. Please, Mr. Lawyer? Dude, like I said yesterday, I'm refreshing like a spring breeze, alright? I can't let any sort of scandal ruin that. I understand. Well, it's almost time. Oh, Mia. Hiya. Mia. We must get a complete acquittal today. I know, but I can't focus on Maya's situation. I can't focus on Maya's situation right now. Or Pearl's either. No matter what, I have to focus on winning this case by the end of the day. Indeed, well, let's get going. Oh, it's him. This is right. Good morning. This is it, Mr. Turney. The day of the trial. Maya, she's unharmed, right? Well, when I checked on her earlier this morning, she seemed a bit... How shall we say, tired? Oh, don't worry. People don't die that easily. Besides, what you really should be concentrating on is winning today's trial. <sighs> For my sake, as well as yours, you must win today's trial. Which is why I sent you a little present this morning. A present? What in the world would you want to give me? You'll figure it out once the trial starts. And even if you don't like my gift, I expect you to graciously accept it and win the day's contest, if you please. Uh-oh. Wait! Oh god, what kind of present did he send? The kidnapper sent me a present? Mr. Lawyer Dude? Who was that? Um, no one. It's nothing to do with you, so forget you heard anything. Dude, did your nose just get longer? Ew. Um, wh where's the prosecution? <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Ms. Madhon Guard. Are the prosecution and defense ready? The defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> uh, where is she? I say, Mr. Wright, what happened to Miss Von Karma? I don't know, Your Honor. Why are you getting mad at me? Your Honor, please, be quiet, Bailiff. Court is in session. If you must tell me something, please keep it brief. Now then, what is it? Prosecutor... Prosecutor Von Karma has... Uh, this morning, Miss Von Karma was shot by an unknown gunman. Oh my god. <laughs> no! <laughs> what? Sh shot Oh no Somehow 
I think that it was the present that man was talking about. His present? This fun karma is one of the top prosecutors in the country at the moment, despite she's lost twice, but whatever. If she were to disappear, it would be to your advantage. Oh my god. This, this, this is totally insane. Uh, Miss Von Karma, is she alright? Uh, I don't have that answer. <laughs> She's alive and in stable condition. That's good. Phew. You're... I thought he'd show up. <laughs> Your Honor, due to the circumstances, Miss Franziska Von Karma cannot appear in court today. I, Miles Edgeworth, will be taking her place. The prosecution is ready. Naturally. Oh, snap. Oh, he's here. Miss Von Karma was shot in her right soldier, shoulder and is currently undergoing surgery. Luckily, I have looked this case over and am familiar with the details. The prosecution seeks to prove the guilt of Mr. Matt on guard. Ooh, wow. That's crazy. And that's... Can't wait to find out he did what. <laughs> no, it's gonna end here, but I actually kind of want to play a little longer because I'm kind of that's kind of insane. <laughs> I was gonna end, but I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep going a little bit because I can't just end there. That's crazy. He did what? <laughs> the, the court acknowledges the prosecution. Right. I finally found the answer I was struggling for on my long on my long journey this past year. By the time this case comes to an end, you too will know the answer. Now then, the prosecution call like would like to call its first witness. Please bring Detective Gumshoe to the witness stand. Oh, he's so sad. Witness, your name and occupation. My name's Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm a detective down at the precinct. For now. For now? After this trial's over, I'm supposed to turn in my badge, sir. Detective Gumshoe. The prosecution has no need for a depressed witness. <laughs> <laughs> Lift your head up and face forward like a proud officer, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Yes, sir. Now, let's have your testimony. If we want to explore the various facets of this case, we must start with that. You're ready, Phoenix. This is gonna be one very rough fight. Yeah, would have to be with Edgeworth as my opponent. The answer he was struggling for. Interesting. Show me this answer you finally found, Edgeworth. <laughs> Bare facts of the case. This murder happened after the Hero of Heroes award ceremony, sir. The victim, Juan Corita, was found dead in his hotel room. After looking into the cause of death, we believe he was definitely murdered, sir. At first, we thought there was something suspicious about the empty guitar case. Uh, hold on. <laughs> However, we later found out that the that the... Uh, the that the guitar case had nothing to do with the murder. Thank you for the hydrate. Alright. Hmm. After the awards ceremony ended, the victim was alone in his room? Yes, sir. Both the victim and the defendant went alone to their room, sir. I see. Mr. Wright, begin, be, you may begin your cross-examination. Okay. And we'll do that. Next time. Oh jeez, oh jeez, what a case, what a case. Ooh, boy, I'm sure, I'm sure just like last game, this case will have a, will have a whole lot to it. Oh jeez, oh my god, oh shoot. Oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez, oh jeez. It's getting very spicy. And I can't wait. And I'll probably continue it tomorrow because that's what we've been doing daily streams. We love daily streams. So, everyone, join the raid. Join the raid. Join the raid. 
Um, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to continue this. It's getting very spicy. Watch it happen and watch it happen. Spicy then. Yes, spicy. See you guys tomorrow. Wow, we continue this case and solve all the problems. Back I go, waiting for <laughs> Kendrick Trump. <laughs> Alrighty. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, everyone. See you guys later. See you tomorrow. I, pro I would have continued, but uh, everything I'm using to read chat is on 2% and 4%. So, <laughs> I gotta go. Bye-bye.